I'm tempted to ignore the phone, but my best friend's name is flashing on it. I answer it, glancing apologetically at the now pissed off naked chick. What the fuck? You realize it's midnight and my cock is buried. Stop. He quickly interrupts me, and I chuckle, one hand resting on the chick's hip. She stopped moving now. This had better be good. I know Jace, though, and he wouldn't call this late for nothing. His wife is pregnant. Shit, what if something happened with the baby? I lift the woman off my lap and sit up on the edge of the bed, ignoring her pissed-off gaze. What's wrong? Maya's friend Charity is in the hospital. She needs someone to pick her up. Is he fucking serious? He called me for this? Are you fucking kidding me? Do I sound like I'm kidding? I'm sorry I interrupted, but I need you to pull out and go help her. Asshole. We both know I'm going to help him. Fuck. Fine. What hospital? I hear him asking Maya about the location as the redhead starts putting her clothes back on her fantastically curvy body. God damn it. I should have finished and then called him back. Jace's deep voice continues. She wouldn't say what hospital, but it's in Kansas City. Really? Fucking Kansas City? I'm in St. Louis. I stand up, tugging on a pair of gray joggers and a t-shirt and grab my keys. You're saying you want me to drive three fucking hours to Kansas City and go to what? Twenty fucking hospitals and ask for Maya's friend? Charity, he supplies and I groan. This is unbelievable. Fuck. Amber is fully dressed now. Finn, I need your help. Maya is too pregnant. And by the time I can get a flight there or drive, Charity will probably be gone. I can't let him down. I've known him forever, and I'll never let him down. I'm going, asshole. But fuck. I look at Amber and motion toward the door. She scowls at me, flipping me off as she stomps through my place, and I follow, watching her walk out the front door, slamming it. Good thing she drove her car and followed me. I'm betting I won't see her again. I tug on my tennis shoes and head out to the garage, climbing into my car. He's going, I hear him tell his wife, and as irritated as I am, that makes me smile. He loves Maya so damn much. Poor motherfucker. Now, I hear her sultry voice over the phone. Finn? Yes, princess. I swear I can hear her rolling her eyes. I start my car, open the garage door, and back out before heading toward the interstate. Listen to me. She's in trouble. She wouldn't give me many details, but she said they won't let her leave unless someone signs her out. I don't know why she wouldn't call her brother Christian, but she's been gone so long. Damn it. Just what I need. More trouble and chaos. I thought this part of my life was over. Calm down. Don't start fucking crying on me. That kid will come out all emotional and shit. <laughs> Asshole. She laughs and I grin. Maya grew on me too. Thank you for this. Please keep her safe. Fuck me. Maya must have handed the phone back to Jace. Hey. Hey, look. I kicked the chick out and I'm in my car. Don't let her get her hopes up, man. This sounds like a fucking long shot. I know. He pauses, and I hear his worry as he says. Try, please. I'll owe you one. You'll owe me a shit ton. He chuckles because he knows he doesn't owe me anything. Jace and I might as well be brothers. We hang up, and I drive three fucking hours to Kansas City, striking out at five hospitals before I finally find a nurse who has a charity waiting for someone to sign her out. I'm tired and pissed off, but relieved. And you are? I haven't been in a hospital for a while, but I'm pretty sure I need to be family. Thanks to Maya, I know Charity's brother's name and play that card. Christian, her brother. I'm here to take her home. She's tight-lipped as she looks at the computer and then stands. Your sister has been through hell, but that hasn't stopped her from giving the staff hell back. Great so she's a pain in the ass. Sounds like her. 
She smiles at me and stands up, walking me through double doors and down a long hallway. We tried to get her to stay for a couple of days and heal, but she refused. I grit my teeth. We reach a door and my eyes zone in on a blonde sitting on the edge of the bed, her wrist in a cast, her face beat to hell. Her hair is matted with blood, and she's dressed in what looks like hospital-issued sweats and an oversized sweatshirt. Hey, sis, I say, trying to convey to her that she needs to go along with this. She glares at me but says nothing. Her lips are full but split open with dried blood. And I can't tell if they're naturally that full or swollen. Probably both. One of her eyes is nearly swollen shut, but the other is crystal blue and untrusting. The nurse hands her some paperwork. You need to sign this form which states you left against medical advice. Charity quickly signs the paper, grabs a bag from the bed, and brushes past the nurse and me, already heading toward the exit. I thank the nurse and follow quickly after her, catching up at the end of the hall as she pushes through the doors. We don't say anything until we reach the exit, and the automatic doors whoosh open into the early morning chill. So, who are you really? Her voice is harsh, distant, and cold as she looks up at the dark sky. I'm Finn, Jace's friend. Jace? She doesn't know Jace? I sigh and pull my keys out of my pocket. Maya's husband. I watch her slender, delicate throat move as she swallows tightly, and her eyes glisten in the moonlight. You shouldn't have come. I didn't know she was married and having a baby. I never would. It doesn't matter now. I cut her off and start walking toward my car. Come on. She doesn't move, and I turn to face her, confused. I'm not going anywhere. I walk toward the petite blonde. No fucks left after the long drive and blue balls suffered earlier. Yes, you are. Jason Maya asked me to come get you, so that's what I'm doing. Now come on. She jerks her head from side to side. I'm not putting her in danger, no. Thank you for getting me out, but I'm fine. I step closer to her, only a mere foot between us. You're coming home with me if I have to drag your ass to my car. I won't do it. She's clearly been through hell. But I'm not leaving her here either. You don't need this, trust me. Walk away. I lean down to look into her eyes. I guarantee you, I've seen and dealt with worse. Now come on. You have to be dying for a shower and a bed. I have both. She wants to fight me, I can tell. But I also recognize when someone has no fight left, at least for the moment, and her small shoulders slump forward. She gives a slight nod, and that's all I need, gesturing for her to follow me. When we reach my car, she climbs in, looking out the window but staring at nothing. A broken soul. Damn it, Jace. What the hell did you get me into? Chapter 2 Charity What the hell was I thinking? I can't believe I called Maya. We hadn't talked in so long. We were in high school the last time we talked. Four years have gone by. Since I ran. And still, like no time had passed, Maya was willing to save me. Like I didn't abandon her and everyone I've ever cared about and run away. She's pregnant, and married, and I'm a train wreck. And did she have to send the world's most gorgeous guy to come and get me? Finn. He doesn't seem happy to be here, and I don't blame him. But his pissed-off scowl doesn't make him any less attractive. In fact, in my fucked-up mind, it probably makes him hotter. He's tall. Really tall. He dwarfed my small frame in the hospital, and his face is way too handsome. The kind of good-looking a girl like me should never trust. His sandy brown hair is tussled on top and short on the sides, and he has a trimmed beard that only adds to his sex appeal. <laughs> Not to mention his tattoos. 
beautiful ink swirling over his muscular arms. I need to get far away from him. But unfortunately, I'm trapped in his car and have been for the last three hours. I have no idea where we're going, and I don't have the energy to ask. I just sat numbly and stared out the window while he drove. Now we're parked in a garage and he turns off the car. I guess I should have asked if you need anything for tonight. My throat is parched, and all I want to do is curl up into a ball and never lift my head again. I'm fine. He grabs the back of his neck. The big guy looking nervous is almost comical. I, um, I don't live with any chicks, so there's nothing for women here. Are you asking if I need tampons? I stare at him and cock my head to the side. He looks horrified now, his eyes widening. What? Fuck, uh, no. I just mean like clothes and shit. I look away from him. I'll be fine. All right. He huffs and climbs out of the shiny black sporty car, and I reluctantly follow. It's past six in the morning, and we're both exhausted. I follow him inside through a door leading into a kitchen that's surprisingly clean for a bachelor. He leads me into the living room and then up some stairs pointing to a room on the left. That's mine. He walks into the room and I stay out in the hall. If he thinks I'm repaying him for the ride with time in his bed, he has another thing coming. He walks back out with a tank top and boxers. They're clean. That's all I have that might come close to fitting you. He holds them out to me, and I reluctantly take them. He leads me to the next room, walking in. I follow, looking around and seeing a queen bed, dresser, and television. This is the guest room. You can stay here until we get shit figured out. I'm tired as fuck, and I'm sure you are too. He nods to the corner of the room. That's the bathroom. I think there are towels in there. I nod my head, unable and unwilling to use words. He takes one last look at me, and I take a moment to scan over him again. Jesus, he's every woman's wet dream. Tall, beautiful, bearded, and tattooed. Get some sleep. I nod again and he leaves the room pulling the door closed behind him. I should run now while he's tired, but I wouldn't get far. Instead, I walk into the bathroom and cringe immediately when I see my reflection. They really did a number on me. I look at the cast on my wrist, my eyes fluttering closed. I remember the feeling of the bone cracking when they slammed it against the table. I open my eyes and look at myself. There's dried blood in my blonde hair from the hour I laid on the floor, bleeding and broken, long after Pete's men left. One of my eyes is swollen from a fist. My cheek is bruised and cut from another fist. My lips are cracked and split open with dried blood from several palms. I lift my sweatshirt off staring at the bruises covering my ribs from their heavy boots and handprints on my biceps from where they held me. I push the sweats down and flinch, seeing more bruises. They didn't rape me. Not yet. But they made it known that they could have. And there are bruises on my thighs to remind me. I turn the water on and climb under the hot spray willing away the memories of feeling so goddamn helpless. How many times have I repeated this action, praying the water could wash away the pain, the guilt, the shame? But it can't. Nothing can. I look at the dirty water at my feet, from the grime and blood coming off my body and once again feel empty. I'm never going to get out of this. I climb out and dry off, using the towel I found in the cabinet. I pull on the tank top and boxers that are way too big, 
rolling the boxers at the waist. Then I collapse on the bed. I should have let them kill me. Chapter 3 Finn After I sent a message to Jace to let him know Charity and I made it back, I passed the fuck out. Six hours in the car was way too much. I groan as I sit up and look at my phone, seeing several texts from Jace, probably sent by Maya, or at least prompted by her, and see that it's three in the afternoon. I groan again and climb out of bed and walk into the kitchen in my boxers to make some coffee. I hear Charity walking, and even though I saw her last night, I'm still not prepared for how beat up she looks. My black tank top swallows her and dips way too low on the sides. I try not to notice she isn't wearing a bra, and there's way too much side boob. My boxers go to her knees, but it's disturbing how covered in bruises this girl is. Hey. I wish I could say I've never seen a person look so haunted, but that wouldn't be true. Still, this girl is a close second. Coffee. She nods and takes his seat on a bar stool by the counter on the outer rim of my kitchen. I pour her a hot mug of coffee and place it in front of her. Staying on my side, I pour my own cup and then turn to face her. Are you going to tell me what happened? She takes a tentative sip, hissing from the heat, and then places the mug back on the counter. Nothing. I pick up my mug, motioning toward her battered face. Yeah. Looks like nothing. She flinches. I need to get back to Kansas City. I stare at her, trying to decide if she's insane and then take a drink of coffee before asking, Are you serious? Deadly. Her eyes remain on my face. Well, her good eye. The other one is still swollen shut. You aren't going back to Kansas City. I need to get to work. My shift starts at ten. I quirk an eyebrow and take another drink, leaning against the counter. Surely they can do without you tonight. You were attacked. She takes another drink, swallowing slowly as if the motion hurts. I saw the bruises on her ribs before she sat down when I was trying not to look at her tits. I need the money, and I can't miss my shift. Are you going to give me a ride or not? Jesus, she's stubborn. Tell me what kind of trouble you're in. No. She didn't hesitate. Yes. No. I glare at her, and she stares right back at me, bruised and broken and not giving a fuck. Yes. She huffs, folding her arms over her chest, and I notice her cast is looking pretty worse for wear. Did you get that wet? She rolls her eyes. It's fine. Anyone ever tell you you're a pain in the ass? All the time. My nod to her cast. We should take you somewhere to get that fixed. It's fine. I need it removed anyway. I'm guessing they didn't put it on you for fun. Finn, I need a ride to Kansas City. Please? I put the coffee mug down and lean over the counter to look her in the eyes. Tell me what kind of trouble you're in. The kind where you'll end up dead if you keep trying to help me. So do yourself a favor and take me back. Drop me off and never think about me again. I stand up straighter, and this time I notice her eyes tracing over the tattoos on my arms and then over my bare chest. Normally, I'd have some sort of flirty remark, but I'm not in the mood. And that is a true testament to the situation, because I'm always in the mood. Believe me, I would, but Maya is pregnant, like really pregnant, and could pop that kid out any day. If I drop you off knowing you're in trouble, her pregnant ass will force Jace to hop in the car and drive her here so she can find you herself, and I'm not letting that happen. Now she looks guilty. I didn't know she was pregnant when I called. That's fine, but she is, and I care about that kid in her belly already, and I'm pretty fond of its mother and father too, so I don't want them in whatever mess you're in. She shifts on the stool and then winces holding her side with her good hand. I don't want them involved, and I don't like you, but I don't want you involved either, so take me back and drop me off. Like I said, 
I do that, and Maya and Jace are on their way. If they think I'm handling it, they'll stay put. Then why? She bites out through clenched teeth, and I know she's in pain. I don't lie. And didn't they give you pain pills or something? I don't need them. And everyone lies. I don't. I despise liars. And you're clearly in pain. She stands up. Life is pain, don't you know? I do. But I've started feeling relatively happy lately. I suppose this shitstorm makes sense. Tell me what kind of trouble you're in. Abusive boyfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend. And you don't need to worry about it. I need to get back to work. I have to. She's desperate. And if it's not a boyfriend, I'd say the amount of trouble she's in is definitely the worst kind. Not until I talk to Maya and Jace and form some kind of plan. You can miss one night. I can't. Yep, there's that desperation. I walk to where she's standing, gazing down at her battered face. Are you a junkie? Fuck you. That's not an answer. I'm careful when I use a finger to lift her chin, forcing her to look at me. Are you? Is that what this is? You owe money for drugs? She flinches, but then steals herself. Fuck off. Again, not an answer. I feel bile rising in my throat. My mother is an addict. I've dealt with dealers coming to collect more times than I can count. Tell me. No, I'm not a junkie. I'm not hooked on anything. Then why are you so desperate to get back to whatever hell you came from? She shoves my hand away and looks out the window. I need to work tonight. I can't lose my job. Where do you work? She scoffs. <laughs> At a strip club? Her gaze meets mine. And no, I'm not a waitress. I take my clothes off for money. And it's money I need. I swallow hard and try not to let my mind wander to her taking off her clothes. Although at the moment, with her bruised up and wearing a cast to mend her broken bones, it's hard to imagine being pleasurable. Still, there's no denying she's beautiful. A little skinny, but from what I got a glimpse of earlier, I'd say she's got a decent pair of tits. Not as big as I like, but again, the girl is skin and bones. They're going to let you strip looking like this? I gesture to her full body that's beat to hell and earn an angry glare from her. Fuck you. My tits and ass are fine. That's all they care about. Well, they're going to have to miss out tonight, sweetheart. Because you aren't going anywhere. She lets out a frustrated scream before stomping off toward the bedroom. Well, hell. Maybe Jace does owe me for this one. Chapter 4 Finn Hey, how bad is it? I take a drink of my coffee and take a seat in the living room. I don't lie to people, but I don't want Maya freaking the fuck out right now. She'll live. Not that. I mean, what happened? Is she in trouble? I scrub a hand over my face. I don't know. She won't talk. She just wants to go back to KC. You can't let her leave. I inwardly groan. Jace, she's a grown woman. I can't keep her here against her will. You have to, Finn. Or Maya will be up there. I know. I lean my head back against the chair. His wife is stubborn as fuck. I don't know what to do, though. I can't lock her in. Just remind her that she has people she can lean on. I try not to gag on the sweetness. Jace is a tough motherfucker, don't get me wrong. But he has more compassion than me. I wouldn't mind kicking this girl to the curb and getting back to my life. The signs of her being an addict are right there. She's skinny. She's been beaten. She's angry and emotionless. This all screams junky to me. But I can't tell him that. I'll do my best. I'm not kidding, man. We had to go into the doctor today because Maya felt some cramps. They've ordered her to take it easy, but I'm worried. I swallow, hearing the uneasiness in his voice. 
If something happens to Maya or the baby, I'll never get my best friend back. He'll go right over the edge, no doubt. Don't worry. You know I've got this. I can hear his smile. Yeah, yeah, cocky motherfucker. You know it. Call Quinn and have her come over. Maybe if Charity sees someone she knows, she'll calm down. Why not? Okay. We hang up and I immediately call Quinn, who happens to be part owner of the tattoo parlor where I work. Her husband, Logan, is another part owner along with their friend, Reese. Logan and Quinn used to own a tattoo place in Tennessee where we worked, but a tornado blew that fucker to hell. And now we all live in St. Louis. They joined up with Reese to run the shop here, and I tagged along. Quinn answers immediately, and I have a feeling Maya has already called her. Is she okay? Yep. Women. She's fine. A little beat up and could probably use some clothes. I'll be over in ten. I hang up and decide I better get dressed. I don't need a Quinn lecture for walking around in my boxers, regardless that it's in my own goddamn house. Still, even as naggy as she is, I love Quinn and Logan. I don't bother checking in on Charity again. She wants nothing to do with me, and that's just fine with me. When Quinn arrives, I let her in, and her eyes immediately dart around the room, looking for Charity. She's carrying a large duffel bag, and then her worried gaze lands on me. Where is she? In the guest room. She's dead set on going back to Kansas City. Fuck that. I nod in agreement and fold my arms over my chest. You tell her. You fucking Kansas City girls are stubborn as fuck. She laughs at that, tossing her middle finger up. But then her face turns serious. She had it rough, Finn. Who the hell didn't? She shakes her head, trying to convey how serious she is. Really bad. I don't know all the details, but she lived in the same house Reese did. The one that really fucked him up. I don't know Reese well. He's quiet and never jokes around. But I know enough about their past to know they were all in foster care and all had shitty parents. Something I know a lot about. Reese lived in an abusive home that no one talks about. Christian, Charity's little brother, works with us, and he lived there too. But he seems totally fine, always joking around and happy. I tried to help Quinn. She doesn't want it. Well, she's going to have to take it. She walks back toward the guest room and I leave, heading out to the back patio to sketch some custom pieces I've been working on and to give them space. Good luck, Quinn. She's going to need it. Chapter 5. Charity I'm beyond irritated. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get out of here, but then I look up and see a familiar face in the doorway of the guest room. I stand from the bed and walk to Quinn, whose head is cocked to the side, studying me with concern and pity on her pretty face. Charity? Her voice is almost a whisper. Quinn? Her eyes slide over my face, and then over my bare arms and down to my cast. What happened? It doesn't matter. Her eyes are glassy with unshed tears as she walks past me, sitting on the edge of the bed. It does matter. Someone hurt you. I turn to face her, trying not to scoff. Someone hurt me. I've been hurt my entire life. I'm okay. Did you file a report? The police tried like hell to get me to. But there was no way I'd do it. I'm not an idiot. They can't help me. No. She shakes her head sadly. Her big blue eyes meet mine with desperation. I'm so sorry. That I didn't expect. I moved to the bed slowly, sitting down beside her. Why would you be sorry? I was busy dealing with my own shit, and... She swallows back tears, and her eyes meet mine. We left you guys behind. 
I know she's talking about Sean, Reese, and her leaving Maya, Christian, Trey, and me. But we weren't their responsibility just because we all grew up in the same place. They tried to protect us as much as they could. But even though they were a few years older, they were still just kids. You don't owe me anything, Quinn. If you're in trouble, I want to help. Good, I smile, thankful she's here and willing to help. I need a ride to Kansas City. Your big-ass friend refuses. She shakes her head at me and then looks out the doorway that's empty. I'm not doing that. My big-ass friend is right. Right? I stand up furiously looking down at her. Holding me hostage? You think that's right? I think it's right to protect you, keep you away from whoever hurt you. I have to get back, Quinn. You guys aren't saving me, you're damning me. She stands and places a tentative hand on my shoulder. We can help. I'll do anything I can. You can come and stay with me and Logan. Logan? I thought he left town for good. She nods. Yeah, we're married. We have a kid. She smiles. A beautiful kid. Holy shit. Life really does just go on. I shake my head. No. Thanks, but no. I'll never put you guys in danger. So you admit you're in danger, obviously. No use fighting it. But the only way I can fix it is to go back to Kansas City and my job. She removes the strap of the duffel she's carrying and places the bag on the bed. There are clothes and some toiletries. I'm going to go. She starts toward the door and I grab her arm, turning her back toward me. Quinn? You're leaving me here? I said you can come with me. You refused. I said I need a ride. She shakes her head. No. No? This is unbelievable. No. She pulls me into a careful hug. If you need me, call me. Finn's a good guy. I'd never leave you in hands that would hurt you. He's basically holding me hostage and you're leaving me here. I'd say that's hurting me. And I'd say that's saving you from your stubborn self. And sometimes we all need that. I won't take you back to that place. I flop down on the bed, even more hopeless than before. I'm sorry, she whispers before leaving. I look through the bag, the numb feeling slowly taking over because I know if I can't get to Kansas City tonight, my hopes will dwindle further. I grab a pair of shorts and a tank top I assume are Quinn's because they look like they'll actually fit and go take a shower. Still, nothing can wash away the hopeless feeling. Chapter 6 Finn Quinn didn't seem to have any luck with Charity, but I wasn't surprised. It's almost six in the evening, and I ordered some pizza, hoping maybe food will make her talk. I paid the delivery man. Charity must be hungry and was beckoned by the smell because she walks into the living room. She's changed into some of Quinn's clothes, short shorts and a tank top that doesn't dip quite so low on the sides. Still, I'm pretty sure she isn't wearing a bra and try not to ogle her. I should have jerked off last night before I fell asleep. The cock block from Jace left me frustrated and horny. I need to focus and figure out what the hell kind of trouble she's in, and then get her the hell out of here so I can go back to my life. Hungry? She places her good hand on her hip. I need to get to Kansas City. If we leave now, I'll be on time for my shift. I get it. You're dying to take your clothes off for strangers, but it isn't happening. She glares at me. You can't do this to me. You can't hold me hostage like this. She's pissed, but her voice sounds cracked and broken. Tired. I toss a piece of pepperoni pizza on a plate and hold it out for her. Eat, and we'll talk. She doesn't take the plate. I need to go. 
I shove the plate in her direction again, and this time she drops her hand from her hip and grabs the plate. I grab a couple of slices for myself and take a bite, chewing as I wait for her to eat. She doesn't. Tell me what kind of trouble you're in. I need to know. It doesn't matter. It does, because I'm in this now. And probably Quinn, Maya, and Jace are too. She looks pained. I don't want to drag anyone into this. Too late. So, if you aren't a junkie, she quickly interrupts me. I'm not. I'm still not sold on that. A lot of things about her screams addict. And I haven't seen anything to prove she isn't, other than refusing the pain medication. Fine, but clearly someone is trying to collect. She looks out the window and then slowly back to me. Yes, okay. I owe some really bad guys some money. Four. It has to be drugs. Or a loan. I don't really see her being a gambler. She sighs. <sighs> it doesn't matter. I owe money and I have to get to work. How much money? She swallows tightly and then lifts her chin to meet my eyes head on. Fifty grand? What the fuck? How is that possible? Fifty fucking grand? How the hell did you rack up that kind of debt? For what? It can't be drugs, can it? What the hell kind of shit is this girl into? It doesn't matter. I swear if she says that again. It does. How did you end up owing that much? Is it for drugs? You must have a really serious habit. She looks at me like I'm stupid. Do you really think any dealer would let a debt get that high for one single habit? Then what? Were you selling for them? No. She looks away from me, hidden pain in those beautiful eyes. I owe fifty grand. That's all you need to know. At least she didn't say it doesn't matter again. Her eyes meet mine. They gave me six months. Jesus. Fuck. I can't even do the math for monthly payments. The first 8300 is due in three weeks. And I currently have a hundred dollars to my name. You're going to make over 8000 a month stripping. I have to try. Some of my loyal customers are decent tippers. I have a seat on the couch, scrubbing my hand over my face, suddenly not hungry. Eight grand? She looks hopeless as she flops herself down in the chair next to the couch. I have to try. There's no way in hell. They're going to kill me if I don't. I look at her, really seeing her. She's a scared young twenty-something who's beat to hell and probably had to fend for herself her whole life. She's pretty, but they did a number on her, so I speak the obvious. No offense. But even at your best, I doubt you can make that much in a month. Who the fuck is going to get hard looking at your battered body and face? She rolls her eyes. The other one is less swollen today. And I can actually see the blue iris. There's makeup for my face. The lighting is low. And no one will be looking at my arms or my face. She says it very matter-of-factly, and honestly, it just makes me sad. Jesus. I'm never going to a strip club again for a good time. That shit is just depressing as fuck. What kind of men get off on a woman's pain? She scoffs, her eyes lifting to meet mine. <laughs> Everyone I've ever known. Well, hell. I sigh. Uh, fine, we'll go. She looks suspicious. You'll take me back to Kansas City? I'll drive your ass to the club you work at, stay until the end of your shift, and then drive you right back here. Still, there's no way she can make that kind of money. And I know there's a shitload more to this story than what she's telling me. She looks stunned as she sits forward on the chair. What? No, you aren't staying. Trust me, I don't have any desire to see you naked, but I'm not letting you out of my sight. She looks horrified bringing her to that strip club is the last thing I want to do. And Jace would kill me if he found out. But I'd be damned if I'm leaving her there. I don't want or need your protection. I didn't ask. It's this or nothing. She stands up, 
fury in those pretty eyes. You can't do this to me. This is holding me hostage. I stand up too, and gesture toward the front door. You can walk out the door any time. She's breathing heavy from the fury coursing through her tiny body. It's the same thing. You know I don't have a car or any money. You're making me depend on you or starve. I'm trying my best to keep you safe. Why? She's angry, and her voice is shrill. Just because your friend asked you to? Because your best friend and Jace did. Because I'm a loyal motherfucker, even when it bites me in the ass. She flinches when I mention Maya, and I wonder what happened between them. Fine, let's go. Only if you promise to eat in the car. She grabs the slice of pizza, heading toward the garage door. Fine. Fucking great. Back to Kansas City. Chapter 7 Charity We arrive at the club. Finn is right on my ass and already driving me insane. I need to ditch him, but I know he'll be watching me like a hawk. The doorman lets us in the back entrance, eyeing Finn with caution. But thankfully, he doesn't give us too much trouble. We run right into Fiona, or Roxy, as she goes by here. Jesus Christ, Charity, where the hell have you been? She looks me up and down, her eyes horrified. Then she looks up, 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 at Finn. Oh my God, did he do this? Finn just rolls his eyes and crosses his heavily muscled arms over his solid chest, allowing me to answer. No, he didn't. Fiona twirls her long brown hair and makes googly eyes up at Finn now. Well then, hello, handsome. Finn can't hide his grin, and I grab his arm, directing him toward the stage. I need to get ready. You go out there. He eyes me, his head tipping down to look at me with suspicion. Don't try to run. I feel Fiona's gaze on me, but I just glare at Finn. I'm not going anywhere. He studies me for a moment, and then turns and heads to the front of the club. I walk toward the dressing room with Fiona following. Where the hell have you been? And what happened? I'm fine. I look in the mirror and sigh. Finn, even though he's a total prick, is right about my beat-up appearance. I dab some foundation over my swollen cheek and the side of my eye, trying to cover some of the bruising. You don't look fine. Thanks, Fee. I apply some eye makeup. Every time I bend toward the mirror, a sharp pain shoots up my side from the cracked ribs. How the hell am I going to pull this off? I mean it. What happened? A customer? I shake my head and strip, finding a clean G-string from my locker and a matching bra. No, I'm okay. Please don't worry. I've known her for the two years I've worked in this shithole, and she's been good to me. I am worried. I smile, pulling on a crisp white man's shirt and buttoning it up, slinging a black tie around my neck, and then I hug her gingerly because my body hurts like a motherfucker. I leave the cuffs of the shirt unbuttoned so my cast fits. Aren't you on? She doesn't want to leave it alone. But thankfully, she nods, kisses my temple, and walks out of the room, leaving me to finish getting ready. I have one show on the stage, and the rest of my shift is lap dances out on the floor. I can do this. I tease my blonde hair, adding lots of mousse to give it volume before pulling on a black fedora over my poofed-up hair. I step into some black stilettos and add red lipstick. I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I look into the mirror at the woman staring back at me. The makeup hides the bruises. Well enough for one dance. I walk out of the room and then right into a hard body. I'm almost certain it's Finn, but then gasp when I see who it actually is. Pete. He glares down at me, towering over me, wearing a three-piece suit. Charity. I shake my head. I have three weeks. 
And you think you're going to get it here? I swallow thickly, knowing how hopeless this whole situation is, as I look up at the man I owe $50,000 to. I'm going to try. His hand drags over my cheek and I grit my teeth at his touch. My entire body revolts and not from pain, but from hatred. Oh, you should have gone through with our arrangement. Seems my men were a little rough. Men you sent, I grit out through clenched teeth. I told them to watch the pretty face. They didn't. He chuckles coldly. Well, you could have taken me up on my other offer. I think it's quite generous. Venom escapes my mouth as I look up into his hateful eyes. I'd rather die. He leans in closely. You just might. He grips my chin painfully and lays a kiss on my lips before releasing me with a shove. I'll be watching you. He walks out to the front, and I try like hell to escape in my mind, to go to another place. But this is my life. There's nothing better for me, and I know it. I hear my name, snapping out of it in the beginning of We Will Rock You, my signature song. It's not Queen's version, though. I had to go with Bishop Briggs. Yeah, girl power, and all that. The lights are pink and purple and there's smoke to add to the show as I walk out on the stage. The club is packed, and I eye the pole in the middle of the stage. I have years of ballet under my belt, and this is what I do with all that training. Normally, I'm fucking fantastic. But tonight... The thought of swinging on that pole makes me sick to my stomach, knowing how bad my body is going to ache. Man, I wish I wasn't terrified to pop pills. I hear whistles as soon as I walk out onto the stage, but wouldn't you know it? My eyes lock automatically with fins. The intense gaze coming from him sends a shiver through my body. But I take a deep breath and immediately go into playing the crowd. I'm good at my job. Really good. I toss my hat out to the crowd, getting more attention. More whistles and howls fill the air as men crowd the stage. I feel the beat as I sway for them, letting them fuck me with their eyes. Using the sight of me for inspiration when they're all alone later, or even with their wives who are past caring about them anymore. I unbutton the top button of the shirt and strut to the pole, grabbing it with my good hand and letting my body slide rhythmically to the other side, tilting my head back and letting my long blonde hair flow down my back. The music is loud, and I try to ignore Finn's gaze as I undo another button, moving my hips and flipping my hair and dancing to the music. I close my eyes as I undo the last button and open the shirt, teasing, tempting, owning every man in here. I open my eyes and slide the shirt down over my shoulders. Turning around, I look back over my shoulder at the crowd as they encourage me to show more. I let the shirt drop to the floor and turn around after giving them a full view of my bare ass. The song is close to the end, and I see a flood of mostly dollar bills hitting the stage. I unclasp my bra with one hand, wincing from the pain but pushing through. We can show our tits, but the G-string stays on in this club. I drop the bra, but cover my breasts with my hands, the cast making the motion awkward. They don't mind. The black tie hangs between my breasts, but I don't remove it. These men don't give a fuck about the state I'm in when I take my clothes off. I was right about that. I drop my arms and go one more round on the pole just as the song ends, followed by cheers and money being tossed onto the stage. 
I bend awkwardly, hissing from the pain, grabbing the shirt and the money as I exit the stage. I pull on a different bra and a pair of short shorts, removing the tie before heading out to the floor. Fiona, who just removed herself from a lap of some suit, walks over to me, concern in her eyes as she looks down at my purple and blue ribs. That has to hurt like hell. I'm fine, I bite out, tired of repeating that. She's waved away, and Finn calls me over. I groan and move to him, plastering a fake-as-fuck smile on my face. How can I help you? Tell me your body isn't close to giving out. It's screaming in agony, and all I want to do is take a seat or curl up in a ball. I'm not telling him that. Did you enjoy the dance? You mean from the girl who looks like she was hit by a truck and winced every time she moved? He purses his lips like he's thinking it over. Not really. I grit my teeth. God, he's infuriating. Well, maybe this club isn't for you. I bend down, ignoring the fiery pain shooting up my side. There's a men's club not too far away from here. His fingers barely graze the skin over my swollen ribs and I flinch, tears forming in my eyes. I'm into women, not just the ones who belong in a hospital. I pull back away from him. I have four hours left. I start to walk away from him, but his hand catches the wrist not in the cast. It's gentle, though. What? They have a VIP room here. This prick. Chapter 8 Finn I have to admit, even beat up and more than likely exhausted, Charity is one hell of a dancer. I couldn't take my eyes off her while she was on stage. I could see the agony in her eyes, and it wasn't only from the physical pain. Still, there's something about her, fierce and determined. I'm not the only one who notices that. The point made painfully clear as every single pair of eyes was glued to her while she swayed her body on that stage. For such a tiny woman, she commands attention and I currently have all hers as she glares daggers at me for asking about the VIP room. I only dance in those rooms. Good. That's not what I asked. I asked if they have one, and I'm assuming they do. Yes? My eyes focus on the gnarly bruise on her side from the cracked ribs. How much for an hour? It's by the half hour. She looks annoyed and I can see a hell of a lot of eyes on her as we talk. Fine. How much for half an hour in the VIP room? Her eyes darken as she studies me, thinks it over, and then huffs. It's a hundred, for thirty minutes. I have no idea if that's the real rate or not. I don't really care right now. I'm just trying to put myself in Jace's shoes and decide what he'd do. I'll take four hours then. Her mouth gapes open, but then she quickly recovers and shakes her head. No way. You're insane. That would be eight hundred dollars. Great. You can do basic math. I stand and look down into her eyes. Do I pay you for this or what? She wants to fight me. I can see it in her eyes. They're full of defiance. And I have to wonder how a girl like this got into the position she's in. I only dance. I lean into her, making damn sure I'm clear. I don't want anything more from you. She glares at me again and then pushes past me toward the bar area. I follow. Eight hundred, prepaid. I reach into my wallet and hand her my credit card. She swipes it and then huffs angrily at me, leading me toward the back, which has even less light than up front. She pushes open a door and I follow her inside an empty room with a chair in the middle and a bench seat on the wall. When we're both inside, she closes the door behind me. What will it be, the bench or the chair? I saunter over to the bench and take a seat. Any requests? She moves to stand before me, her feet spread apart, 
and I look down at the black stilettos she's wearing. They're sexy. Too sexy. She's way too fucking sexy in this setting. Her blonde hair is teased and wavy. Her makeup is smoky, and her bruises are hidden for the most part, except for her ribs that are prominent on her skinny frame and very clearly bruised. And then there's the cast on her wrist. Yeah, sit your ass down. Her eyebrow shoots up, and I notice it's darker than the hair on her head, making her blue eyes pop even more. No touching. I pat the spot next to me. I didn't pay for a dance. I paid for you to sit your ass down and give your body a break. She folds her arms over her bare stomach and flinches from the movement and contact with her bruises. They have cameras in here. I shrug and stretch my legs out. Looks like they're going to be pretty fucking bored. I pat the seat next to me again. Just tell them I'm a fucking weirdo who only wanted to talk. I paid, and I seriously doubt they care what I do to you back here. For once, she doesn't argue, and takes a tentative seat next to me. Eight hundred is a lot to pay for me to just sit next to you. You're right. I scratch the hair of my trimmed beard with my fingers and turn toward her. That's why you're going to talk. She leans her head back against the brick wall behind us. I already told you. Yeah, you told me that you owe fifty grand, but you didn't tell me for what. And I'm not going to. My eyes fall to her chest that's only covered by a lacy bra. Her tits rise and fall with steady breaths. Nothing matters, Finn. I have to pay it. That's the important part and the part I told you. My eyes drag down to her ribs. Why won't you take pills? You know, most people think men are the quieter sex, but since I've worked here, I've found that's just not true. She lifts her head and meets my gaze. What is it about a strip club that makes you assholes so chatty? I was chatty before I saw your tits. And fuck, they were nice. I was really hoping they weren't. But this girl is seriously all big eyes, tits, and generous ass. My mother is a pill popper. I don't want to be, so I'm not even going to flirt with a possible addiction. Well, that was a hell of a lot more honest than I expected. Your mom's a junkie. She lays her head back, closing her eyes. Yep. I hate that we have something in common. So is mine. Her eyes flutter open, but she doesn't look at me. I watch her take a deep breath and again, wince. When I was sixteen, I fractured two ribs. I swear, every time I took a breath, I thought it was going to kill me. Her head pivots in my direction, still resting against the wall. How did you fracture them? I laugh at the memory. My big-ass best friend and I were playing football. He took it pretty seriously, and the fucker tackled me. I landed wrong and hard on a rock on the ground. There was a rock on the football field? I shake my head. We were just screwing around after school at the park. Wow. I laugh again, thinking about Jace and his love for football. I played, but I didn't love it like he did. It was just something to do. He felt really bad, but I didn't mind the pain. I really didn't need you to do this. Right, I get it. Strong, independent woman. But you're in pain, and too damn stubborn to take a break. I don't have the luxury of a break, she snaps, shattered. I hate how much I want to help her. Hate that I don't want her to just disappear into the night and to have to never worry about her again. Despise that I want to know about what happened to her. Not only because of her current predicament, my curiosity runs deeper than getting out of this situation. Because whether I like it or not, I'm in this now. Chapter 9 Charity Four hours is a really, really long time. Especially when Finn refused to shut up. I wish it was pure torture, but really? It was the first time I felt like a human being in a long time. 
I wasn't kidding. The strip club seems to turn men chatty. They always want to talk about me. My ass, my tits, how pretty my face is. They also talk about how they'd love to take me home and treat me the way I deserve when they actually mean they'd love a sex slave to bow to their will. Boy, how disappointed they'd be. But Finn is different. I have no idea if he's treating me differently because of who he is, or because we have a mutual friend. But when he was talking, it was about his friend Jace, Maya's husband. And about football. He asked me if I liked to watch football. I told him I hate sports, and he laughed and then asked what I did like. I didn't have an answer. It was small talk, but it felt very real. And thankfully, he didn't hound me any more about my situation. He kept it light. And when we walked out to his car, I find myself wanting like crazy to go back to his comfortable home and feel safe for one more night. But I can't do that. Finn, I stop before opening the passenger side door, and he halts, looking over the roof of the sporty car. I need to go back to my own place. He opens his door. Okay. Really? I stare at him unmoving. That easy? He nods and climbs in the car. I follow, still studying him. Maybe he's beyond exhaustion and just doesn't want to deal with me anymore. Maybe I bored him to death over the last four hours. I give him directions, and a few minutes later, we're at my rundown apartment, which is exactly what you would expect from a desperate stripper like me. The building is old and tired and has never been kept up. There are sirens blaring in the street, and a crack addict spouting nonsense on the corner, shouting at cars as they drive by. That's Fred. Finn turns to me, one eyebrow arched with an amused look on his handsome face. He's harmless. Finn shakes his head and turns off the car. My nose scrunches up as I look at him. What are you doing? He pushes his door open. Walking you upstairs to get some of your things. What? I climb out of the car and walk around to his side of the car, my hand on my hip. I'm not here to get some things. I'm here to stay. He chuckles and then yawns looking up at the dark early morning sky. No, you aren't. I thought I made that clear. But I'm way too fucking tired to go over this with you again. And I have to work tomorrow afternoon, so let's get up and get your shit and get on the road. He is such an asshole. I'm not going back with you. Yes, you are. His large body crowds mine sending a shiver through my much smaller one. But it's not from fear. My reaction to him is horrifying and brand new. I don't react to men this way. Or anyone, for that matter. I dance nearly naked in front of complete strangers for a living. Not all of them are disgusting or pot-bellied. A lot of them are good-looking. They even smell nice. But not one of them has ever pulled any sort of sexual reaction from me. Not even a tingle, but Finn? His sexy masculine scent floods my senses while his large muscular form crowds mine, making me float into an odd feeling of security and heat. One I don't like. Revulsion I can handle. Attraction could kill me. I'm not afraid of you. I look up into his intense gaze, not backing down. Good. You have no reason to be. But you are going back to my place. Trust me, Charity. No matter how stubborn you are, I'll win. I'm one stubborn motherfucker. I believe him. And my body is practically weeping with the need to rest. Fine. I trudge up the three flights of stairs on the outside of the building that lead to my door. I turn the key in the lock and push it around trying not to let my face heat from embarrassment as Finn walks in and assesses the place I've called home for the last year. 
It's small. An open studio apartment with one bathroom and the kitchen, bedroom, and living room, all together in one room. I have one ratty folding chair in the living room, and a side table I found on the curb. I sleep on the floor in a sleeping bag. I think I might burst into flames as I watch his eyes drift through the small apartment. Do you even have anything to pick up? I glare at him even though I don't think he's trying to be an ass. I think he's actually asking because, yeah, the furnishing is slim. I do. He takes a seat in the small flimsy chair that looks like it might not support his weight. Okay, I'll wait here. My face is crimson, but I take a deep breath and walk to the closet. I pull out a black duffel bag, and my chest clenches from the memories it evokes. Of the night, I ran away. I stole this bag from my foster father's closet and never looked back. It still smells like him, making me gag. But I force myself to tear some clothing from the hangers and stuff them in the bag. I fall to my knees outside the closet and find some shorts and sweats I keep folded on the floor, along with some sandals and a pair of tennis shoes. And, of course, some heels that were gifts from men at the club, hoping they could entice me to come home with them. Maybe I should have gone. I stand and go into the bathroom, grabbing some toiletries and try to ignore my appearance. The makeup is starting to fade, and the purple bruises are hard to ignore. I changed back into Quinn's borrowed clothes before Finn and I left the club, but I didn't remove the makeup. I pull my hair up into a ponytail and wince when I touch my bruised cheek. Wondering how those men whistled at me when I was on that stage like they were aroused. All my life, I've struggled to see the beauty men claim to see in me. I stare at my eyes. Thankful the swelling is going down, but hating my eyes. The crystal blue eyes that stare back at me. They're hers. My lips, full and pink, still cracked and a little swollen. They're hers. My high cheekbones bruised and cut from fists. They're hers. And I hate her. But I love her. I close my fist and press it against the mirror, fighting the tears and the revulsion from my reflection. You okay? I jump at the sound of his voice, which reminds me I'm not alone and take a deep breath, wincing from the pain at my side. I'm fine. I flick the light in the bathroom off and swing the bag over my shoulder, but just as I do that, Finn is taking the bag from me. I want to argue with him, but I'm beyond that at the moment. You ready? I nod solemnly and we walk down to his car. He loads my bag into the back seat and then starts the long drive back to his place. My eyes drift close as he drives, his presence lulling me into a false sense of security I've never had. And I've never been more petrified in my life. Chapter 10 Finn She's been sleeping for a good twelve hours. Part of me thinks I should wake her, see if she wants to eat. But the other part, a feral protective part of me, wants her to sleep away all her pain. After four hours of talking to her, of trying to get her to open up a little bit with no success, all of a sudden, I needed to protect this girl. Or maybe I needed to from the moment I got that call. Or maybe. It was the fact that she isn't a junkie, but her mother is, that we have that in common. I need to get a grip. I finish eating a turkey sandwich and put the plate in the sink just as Charity walks into the kitchen, dressed in short shorts and a tank top that fits her better than mine did, and hugs every single curve. Her blonde hair is still in a ponytail, but it's looser than it was last night. Hey. Hi. 
Her voice is sexy and sultry, just like her. Why I'm noticing that now more than I did in the past two days, I have no idea. Her face is starting to heal, but she's still bruised and swollen. I have to go to work. Will you be okay here? She cocks her head to the side, annoyed as she takes a seat on a bar stool. I'll be fine. I have two days off, but then I really need to get back to Kansas City. She looks wistfully out the window. Maybe I can find random jobs here while I wait. You're not going anywhere. You should give your body two days to rest. Her eyes narrow in my direction. Don't worry about my body. I lean against the counter, facing her as I fold my arms over my chest, trying like hell not to think about her lithe, mostly naked body on that stage. I clear my throat, shaking the memories away. You need to heal. She rolls her eyes. I won't get far, don't worry. I don't have a car and I need all the money I can get, so I won't be hiring a ride service. Good. I push off the counter. There's food in the fridge, and I'll be back tonight. I start for the door, but Charity scrambles off the stool and jumps in front of me. You work with my brother, right? More of the small talk from last night. But she didn't ask much about Christian when I mentioned him working at the shop along with Reese and Logan. It didn't sound like they're close. I nod. Yeah. You want to go with me and see him? No. She answers quickly with almost an all-out shout. But then she softens. No. He can't know anything about this. He can't know I'm here. I raise an eyebrow, wondering how the hell that's going to work. I work with the guy. I'm supposed to keep the fact that his sister is living with me a secret? Yes. She answers with no second thought. He can't know, Finn. Quinn was here. She's his boss, too. You think she'll keep it a secret? I think she will if you ask her to. I scoff. <laughs> For such a tiny person, Quinn has a huge mouth. I'm sure she's already told him. Charity shakes her head, pushing long bangs out of her eyes. No, he'd have already been here if she did. Please, this has to stay between us. I study her, noticing the absolute fear in her eyes. Are you afraid of him? No, not at all. Her big eyes meet mine. But I'm afraid for him. Ah, big sister protecting little brother. I sigh, running my fingers through my hair, frustrated with this entire situation. Ugh, I don't think I can keep this from my boss and co-workers, especially if Quinn already knows. She's definitely told Logan. She holds her head high, her small shoulders shaking as she pleads with me. I agreed to stay here, and I'll keep my word that I will. I won't give you any trouble, but I need you to keep this from Christian, please. Fuck. I reach the door and grab the handle, glancing at her over my shoulder. Fine. She looks relieved as I leave her behind in my house, going to my car and driving to work. For the first time ever, I'm dreading it. When I get there, I'm relieved to see only Logan is at the shop. Hey man, he greets me. How's Charity? I groan as I walk over to my station, prepping for my first appointment. Ugh, a real pain in the ass. I look over at him. Have you told Reese and Christian about her? He shakes his head, going over something on the main computer. Not yet. Reese was off yesterday, and I didn't want to be the one to tell Christian. Good. I take a seat on the stool and spin around to face him. She doesn't want them to know. He quirks an eyebrow, but before he says anything, I add, She'll bolt if we tell them, and that would be bad for everyone. We can't keep this from Christian. This is his sister. I know that, but she was adamant. And Reese. She didn't say, but I'm assuming the less who know, the better at this point. Don't tell him either. She'll leave Logan. She doesn't want him to know. Well, fuck. Yeah, welcome to my world. 
He grins and shakes his head. How much trouble is she in? I don't know. And it's the truth. I know she owes some serious money, but I have no idea how deep this all runs. He looks worried, but doesn't look up at me. Okay, your call. Thanks, man. I just hope I'm not wrong. Chapter 11 Charity Most of my outfits are what most people consider club wear, but I shouldn't care about that. I sit, perched on Finn's comfortable plush sofa, looking at the lavender mini dress I have on. It's strapless and dips down on the front to show cleavage and barely covers my thighs. Maybe I should have just stayed in my sleepwear, or worn more of Quinn's clothes. Maybe I just wanted to feel closer to my normal. The truth is my entire wardrobe was inherited from other girls at the club. When I first got there, I only had a couple of outfits, jeans and t-shirts that were packed in a hurry. The girls there took pity on me and donated clothing from their own closets. I got used to this apparel, and eventually lost or threw away the old clothes that reminded me of my old life. The front door pushes open, and Finn walks through the door, looking worn and tired but oh so devastatingly handsome. And it is devastating. I hate that my body reacts to him that way, with a full tingle and thrilling shiver every time his eyes meet mine. Hey, I stand, and his eyes travel over my barely covered body. I bite my bottom lip, willing my body to chill the hell out. You don't even like to be touched. Stop fantasizing about his large tattooed hands. And oh god, what those hands could do. And his mouth. That pouty, stubborn mouth. Hi. I barely managed to cut through my own ridiculous thoughts to reply. He eyes me with curiosity while I'm drooling over his muscled form, hugged by a tight black t-shirt and ripped jeans. He tosses his keys down on the side table in the living room and takes a slouched seat on the couch kicking his feet up on the coffee table. How was your day? I take a tentative seat next to him, my legs crossed at the ankles. Fine. Did you tell anyone I'm here? The question has been pestering me all day, wondering if he would keep his word. He scrubs a hand over his eyes, and then down over his neatly trimmed beard. No. Logan knew already, of course but they hadn't told Reese or Christian, and I told him not to. Relief washes over me and I take a deep breath, forcing my chest forward and directing his gaze to my cleavage. I swallow, feeling the heat from his eyes. My cheeks heat with a ferocious blush. Is that the most comfortable thing you own? His eyes lift away from my chest into my face. I like it. A smile plays on his mouth and he shrugs. Thank you for not telling Christian. What's with you two? I mean, your siblings, right? I don't want to talk about my brother. Talking about Christian makes my soul weep with so much regret, and I can't handle that. I'm not going into that. He sits forward, his elbows resting on his thighs. Of course not. What's that supposed to mean? I snap without thinking because I already know. He's done nothing but tried to help me, and I've given him nothing. It means you never go into anything. You're closed off, sweetheart. He gazes over at me, and I don't know how the hell to help you. I don't need you to save me. I just need a place to stay and an occasional ride. Again, his hands scrub over his handsome face, revealing the perpetual exhaustion from the bullshit I rain down on everyone I've ever known. I recognize that look. You hungry? I shrug my shoulder. I guess. He pulls his phone out and orders from an app that eventually sends someone to deliver a delicious spread of food, making my stomach growl as soon as the smell hits my nose. We dig in. 
and there's only silence and the sound of us chewing. He grabs a beer from the fridge and offers me one, which I take, enjoying the cold drink and filling my stomach for the first time in a really long time. When we finish, we clean up. And then he gestures for me to follow him to the back patio. I follow him without argument, and we both take seats. The view isn't anything spectacular, but that in itself is beautiful. It's just a suburban, fenced-in backyard, with trimmed grass and a dark night sky sprinkled with a few stars and a sliver of the moon. Why the warning? My attention pulls away from the sky, and I turn to look at Finn, who's looking directly at me. What? You still had three weeks to pay when they beat the hell out of you, right? So why did they do it? I close my eyes, willing away that night and all the nights before it, not wanting to go back there, wanting to stay in my little suburban fantasy no matter how unrealistic it is. But I owe him something. More than I owe someone else money. My eyes flutter open, and I look at him, seeing the confusion and the concern on his handsome face. Pete, the man I owe money to, gave me three options to pay back the debt. Okay. I don't want to believe he actually cares, or that it's possible he's a good man because I don't believe that exists. I think every man wants something some kind of payment, but I push forward. I could be his. I swallow the bile down, thinking about that thought. Not that Pete is ugly on the outside, quite the opposite. But the thought of belonging to him makes my skin crawl. You mean... He's married, but he has one mistress already on the side and wanted me to be the second, a kept woman. My mind goes to the memory of him stroking my cheek and telling me how that would be the best option, that I'd be taken care of, have an apartment, clothes, anything I could ask for. But the price for all of that was far too great. Seems steep for fifty grand. I flash back to Finn as he pulls me away from the memory. I told him I'd rather die. A smirk lurks over his lips. Good. Option two? My skin feels hot. My cheeks flush and I feel sick. But I take a deep breath and answer. I could work for him. Apparently he has very wealthy clients with complex appetites. He raises one eyebrow, scratching his chin. Appetites, with you being the main course. I nod. Yeah, I could agree to be a high-priced call girl. I look up at the sky, hating the tears forming in my eyes. I don't want to think about my pathetic life and the options that were presented to me like a gift, options normal people would be horrified by, but that I barely blinked at. Five thousand for a night with me where I let them do whatever they wanted. His voice sounds strained, and I look back at him as he talks. Option three? I could pay it all in six months or die. So, you took that option? My shoulders droop, but I look him in the eyes I shake my head. I took option two? Horrified. He looks absolutely horrified. Like a man who was raised in a normal world where this was not reality. No matter how strong and tough Finn seems, I suspect he must have been slightly sheltered. What are you talking about? You said you have six months to pay. I nod slowly. I told myself I could shut my eyes and just endure it. Five thousand, ten times, just... Ten men. I could do it. Women have done a lot more for a lot less. He's watching me intently, his eyes never leaving mine. 
I notice I'm breathing rapidly just from his gaze. I agreed to do that, hoping to just get it over with. They could use my body and I could float off to somewhere else while they did. I've done it before. So they set it up, even if Pete was furious that I didn't take option one. He said one way or another, he'd own me. He doesn't look horrified anymore. He looks closer to homicidal, which confuses me. I push that away and keep going. I was told the time and the place of the first meeting, and I showed up a little early. I drowned myself in two martinis at the bar thanks to some prick who thought he was getting lucky. My hands started to shake, thinking about that night, about sitting there telling myself it would just be my body. That I could escape to somewhere else in my mind as I let the alcohol add to the lies in my head. But as I was walking to the elevator, it was like my legs refused to move. They wouldn't take me there, and I turned and ran. His face shows relief. And he reaches one hand out, placing it over both of mine, that are shaking in a pile on my lap. The touch shocks me, but remarkably, I don't pull away. What happened after that? I bite my bottom lip and sniff, chasing away a sob because I don't let myself cry. They caught up to me two hours later. They sent the message that I had six months. Or, I was Pete's. He takes in the information. And I don't think I've ever been more afraid of what another human being could say next. Because for whatever reason, I know it could break me. Chapter 12. Fen. Jesus Christ. I'm not sure what I thought this girl had been through, but it wasn't that. My throat feels dry, and my voice nearly cracks when I ask. You were really going to do that? She pulls her hands away from mine like I burned her. Don't you fucking dare judge me. I wasn't raised like this. She raises her hands, gesturing around my backyard. Like what? Like this, in a quiet, safe neighborhood? I nearly laugh at that, but think better of that. I wasn't raised like this either. I didn't grow up here. No? No. My mom was a junkie, remember? Do you know any addicts who can keep it together long enough to buy a house? To pay bills? She drops her hands to her lap. A lap, might I add, that's barely covered by the short skirt of her mini dress. No. I grew up in a small town where everyone knew me because they knew my mother. Some very, very intimately, because she offered herself to many of them for a fix. She doesn't flinch in surprise, and I feel sick, thinking about the creepy men at the tavern where I often picked her sorry ass up their knowing eyes and not-so-subtle hand gestures as I ushered her out the bar. They'd lick their lips and grab their crotches in a promise of what they'd give when she came back. And she always went back. So she was... She doesn't finish her question, but I know what she's asking. A whore? Sure. I shrug, silently pleading with my stomach not to expel my dinner. In her own way, I guess. She did whatever she thought she had to for a fix. She didn't care about offering her body. My eyes meet charities. But you don't seem like the type. She scoffs, rolling her pretty eyes at me. Eyes I can see clearly now that the swelling has gone down and despite the darkness out here. Her eyes are clear. I'm a stripper, remember? I sell my body five nights a week. You sell a show. It's theater and it's a damn good one. She shakes her head, her hand sliding over the purple fabric of her dress. You know that's not true. So, you don't only dance in the VIP rooms? Her head drops and she sighs. I hate how much I dread the answer. I do. I only dance, but we both know. Her eyes meet mine as she looks my way again. 
that more happens in those rooms if the price is right and the girl is desperate enough. You didn't have those circumstances, though. Not until Pete gave me options. Her head lifts, then she turns toward me slightly. I was desperate then, Fen. I couldn't have him own me. I didn't want to belong to anyone ever again. What the hell does that mean? I don't want him to own you either. It's barely a whisper, and all I can get to come out. I told myself if I took the second option, it would be temporary. That I could just get through it. I shake my head, hating that she ever had to make that kind of decision. It wouldn't have been, though. I lean closer to her, brushing her hair out of her face but leaving my hand on her cheek. Temporary, I mean. It would have stayed with you. Her eyes close, and I don't think she realizes it, but her face nuzzles into my hand. But I wouldn't be his. Who is this guy? Her pretty eyes open slowly, and she huffs. <laughs> he owns casinos, a lot of them. Why do you owe him money? She pulls away from me now, standing up from the chair and closing off again. Don't worry about it. Not this shit again. I stand up. You told me about your options and your fucking debt. Why not just tell me everything and get it over with? Because I don't owe you either. She looks angry and then frustrated as she plops back down in her chair. I mean, I do, but... For whatever reason, I don't want her to feel like she owes me. That thought sickens me more than I can understand. And I sit down next to her, taking her hands in mine and jerking her attention to me. Charity, you don't owe me a goddamn thing. I am trying to help you, though. To do that, I need more information. She shakes her head, but doesn't pull out of my grasp. Please don't. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm tired. I know she is. I think she'll always be tired. Whatever she's been through, it's been hell, and it's written all over her face and inscribed in her eyes. Okay. I am grateful to you, you know? I don't show it well. You show it fine. I cut in and she smiles, a genuine and beautiful smile. But she shakes it away quickly. I don't, and I'm sorry. I don't trust anyone. I get that. And God, I do. I didn't trust anyone for so long. Guys in school, they all knew about my mom. Everyone did. And they loved to joke about it, to relentlessly tease me about my crack whore mother. Until Jace. He always stood up for me. He earned my trust quickly when he gave Bobby Sutton a black eye for joking about giving my mom two dollars for a blowjob when we were kids. We were friends before that, but that day, I knew he had my back. I'm on your side, though, whether you realize it or not. Even if she's a pain in the ass and I thought I wanted her out of my life as fast as possible. I know that's always been true. I just wanted to get her through this, but now? I'm not so sure I'm willing to let her go when I do. Chapter 13 Charity I have to stop telling Finn things. And I really need to stop asking him questions about his life. Getting to know each other isn't going to help matters at all. Honestly? It could only make it worse. After sleeping in way too late and taking a shower, I dress in a sexy red mini dress with a halter top that clings shamelessly to my body. It reaches well above the middle of my thighs, and I almost wish it were cool enough to wear a coat to cover myself up as I walk down the hall to find Finn. I find him in his kitchen, devouring a sandwich and shake my head with a smile. The guy is always eating. He should weigh 500 pounds and have three chins, but sadly, that's not my luck. Hey, his eyes drag over my scantily clad body and then up to my face. You like that one too? I'm feeling a little more confident now that the bruises on my face are starting to fade. 
and flip my long blonde hair over my shoulder. Why, you don't? His grin is playful and confident, like he always appears to be at first. But unfortunately, thanks to our conversation last night, I know he isn't just a pretty face with no cares in the world. He's been through his share of hell. He eyes me again, sending a confusing shiver through my body, his gaze caressing parts of me I never thought I'd want to have touched. No. His eyes meet mine with a flicker of something sinister. I do. I straighten my shoulders and take a deep breath. Good. I need a favor. His eyebrow shoots up and his grin only widens, but I shake my head. Not that kind of favor. I need a ride. He starts to say something I'm sure is flirtatious, but I raise my hand, shaking my head again. In your car. He places the now empty plate in the sink and turns back around to face me. Where? I realize I can't keep asking you to drive me to Kansas City, but I have to keep working as much as I can, so. I called my old boss and told him my situation vaguely. So, minus the whole casino boss hunting you down for payment thing. I nod my head. Yes, that. I just told him I had to move to St. Louis for a while and asked if he knew of any clubs that were hiring. He scratches his chin and looks conflicted. Strip clubs. I narrow my eyes, hoping I'm hiding the shame, I feel. Not that I think my job deserves judgment from anyone, but it's him. I don't want him to judge me. This stranger I just met. Yes, that is what I do for a living. He swallows, and the action captures my eyes to his throat and his strong jaw. I know that. I just think. He runs his hand through his hair. Shit. He drops his hand. Never mind. And did he? I try not to think about the words he didn't say. How he probably thinks I'm disgusting. Taking my clothes off for men and almost becoming a prostitute like his mother. I cringe but try to shake it off. I thought I'd mastered the appearance of not caring what anyone thought. Now? I'm not so sure. Yes. I have an audition in an hour. Audition. Shame nearly swallows me whole. Yes. You really think they hire strippers without seeing them dance naked? I wait for him to tell me how gross that is, or for him to look at me with disgust, but he doesn't. He just grins. I guess not. Yeah, I can take you. Thank you. I spin on one foot to head back to the room he's letting me use, but turn back around at the sound of his voice. Maybe you could do something else, though. I could ask Reese if he wants to hire a receptionist. My heart splinters but I try not to let him see. He wants me to do anything else but strip. No. Christian works there. He nods his head knowingly. Oh, yeah, right. Look, I step closer to him, my heart thundering. This is who I am. I dance for strangers and take my clothes off. It's not glamorous, and I don't expect you to respect it, but it's what I know. Respect. He looks honestly confused. I didn't mean that. I roll my eyes. It's fine. Guys want to go to strip clubs for a good time, but they don't ever think about dating a stripper. It's a fantasy. Date. He looks amused, and I kick myself for saying that. I'm just saying it's not a job people are openly proud of. Hey, I think that people should do what they love. You love stripping, then hold your head up proudly. His hand grasps my chin and tips it up, forcing me to do what he just said. But the way your shoulders sag and your beautiful eyes focus on the floor when you talk about stripping, it makes me think you don't love it. Do not focus on him saying your eyes are beautiful. I gnaw on my bottom lip, meeting his eyes, 
and trying desperately not to stare into them. I do, he chuckles. Oh yeah? What do you love about it? I don't have time for this. I need to do my makeup. He releases my chin but holds me with his eyes. Come on, tell me one thing you love about it. The dancing. The music. The answer comes out breathlessly as he listens to me watching me closely. And then he smiles. Ah, there it is. You do love part of it. I force myself to walk away from him. The power of the draw I feel to him too great. It's a stupid fantasy. I'm a hostage with limited options, and he came along being semi-kind. It's a mindfuck. I go to my room and apply heavy makeup, teasing my hair before I find Finn for the ride to the club. He doesn't say anything in the car on the way, and I'm grateful. I need to keep my head in this. I need this job. I have to make some money. When we arrive, it's apparent that the club is similar in almost every way to the one I worked at in Kansas City. Makes sense. Mark said they started this one together before he branched out to KC. It's still early in the day, so there's only two cars in the parking lot. We walk inside without running into a doorman and find only one woman behind the bar of the empty club. We aren't open yet, she looks up. And her eyes travel over Finn as a flirty smile appears. But I could make an exception. I have no doubt he's used to being treated this way by most females. I speak before he can say anything. I work for Mark Sanders. He told me to ask for Henry. She purses her lips looking in my direction now. I don't think she even noticed my existence before. She points to the back. He's in the office. You can go ahead if your name is Charity. I nod and start walking, feeling Finn on my heels. I spin around to look up at him. You wait here. I'm sure she'll love your company. He doesn't move. I'm not letting you go back there alone. Finn. Charity. He says my name like a command. I sigh. He's just gonna make you leave before I take my clothes off. He can try. God, he's infuriating. I huff and walk to the office, which has the door open and a mid-fifties looking man behind the desk, staring at something on his computer. I knock on the door frame, pulling his attention to us. Henry? He nods. You charity? Yes, I'm here for a job. His eyes drag over my frame and then over to Finn. Jealous boyfriends wait at the front. Finn doesn't bother correcting him. I'm staying for the audition. She's been through a lot. I won't interfere. I give him a furious glare that does nothing to penetrate his cocky, stubborn exterior. Finn? He ignores me. But I hear Henry say, Fine, whatever. Just get in here. I walk into the office, wishing I could hide my cast, but covering myself from head to toe wouldn't exactly get me the job either. I feel Finn's large body behind me. Henry gestures toward the large black leather chair against the wall. You sit. He's talking to Finn. And I wait for him to argue, but am relieved when I hear him complying behind me. Henry's eyes move over me again. You always look this beat up? No, sir. Do I even want to know? His eyes bore into mine. I shake my head. No, it's nothing. I'm fine, and I'll heal soon. I can cover most of it with makeup. His eyes drop to my wrist. In the cast? It'll be off in a few weeks, but they won't be looking at my wrist. I swear I hear Finn growl behind me, but it's so quiet. I'm not sure that's what I heard. Henry just grunts. Okay, then, let's see what you got. C cup and up is a requirement here. His eyes land on my breasts. I'd say you have about the bare minimum. I nod my head, feeling like a piece of meat, but I'm used to it. Yes, sir. Strip, girl. Let's see if you're worth the trouble.
Now I know I hear Finn grumble something and shoot him a warning look over my shoulder. He doesn't look remotely apologetic, and I turn back around to face Henry. Music? He looks annoyed and finds a cheesy-ass song from his phone, one you'd expect to hear in a place like this. I close my eyes, willing myself to find a beat and not throw up, hating that Finn is sitting behind me, witnessing yet another low point in my life. Although, what is a high point? Dinner with him last night? I answer my own question as I sway my hips to the music, letting my hands slide up my sides into my hair. They're all suckers for teased-up blonde hair. I reach the ties around the back of my neck, holding my dress up and unfasten it, sliding it down teasingly and slow. My ribs are still tender, but I ignore the pain, trying like hell to get lost and go numb. I eventually slip out of the dress, leaving me in a G-string and matching bra. His eyes slide over my curves, but I try not to think about it, about how he's probably hard right now, fantasizing about all the things he could do to me, despite my not being remotely interested in him. Your ribs are purple and you could use a sandwich. I play my role and step out of the dress, again letting my hands go to my hair, giving him a sultry look. Again, they won't be looking at my ribs. It's about the whole picture, sweetheart. There isn't one place their eyes won't be. I swallow that thought away. I don't want to think about men's eyes on me. I unhook my bra. Trust me, they won't care. I drop the lacy fabric to the floor, knowing his eyes are on my breasts and hating that Finn is behind me, watching Henry ogle me and probably also staring at my bare ass. Please don't blush. Blushing is not enticing. On stage, I'm supposed to be a confident, sexy vixen. You do have nice tits, I'll give you that. Bile. Yeah, that's bile in my throat. Play the part. I wink at him. See? No worries. I've never had a complaint. He stands, walking closer to me, and I swear I can feel Finn tense behind me, but I silently beg him to stay put. Henry strokes my cheek with the back of his hand, his gaze dropping to my bare chest and I fight the urge to vomit. I hate being touched. You're trouble, I can feel it. I shake my head. I'm not, I swear. I have the exact same setup as Mark, same cut. His hand drags over my bare arm. I shudder with disgust, but don't slap him away. And if you offer extras, I quickly interrupt him and I feel Finn stand from his seated position tall and domineering next to me as I speak. I don't. I only dance. Henry dismisses that briskly. If you do, I get a cut. I have cameras in every VIP room, so you'll never get anything by me, and I have eyes everywhere if you try to arrange something off my property. I won't. He waves me off again. I don't care what you say in front of your little boyfriend here. Just need you to know it. I nod my head, hating how his eyes haven't moved away from my breasts. Okay, you can start tonight. Shift starts at ten. He finally looks away from my naked chest and over at Fen. If you accompany her, you're not allowed to be the jealous boyfriend. You follow the same rules as the other customers, and if you break them, you get bounced. He won't be here, I answer for Fen and cringe when I feel Henry's hand on my hip. Don't push him away. Good. I don't need any trouble. I'm doing this as a favor to Mark, and he said you're the best dancer he's had. Finn is the one to push Henry's hand away, to my horror. We'll be back at ten. I cringe, my eyes meeting Henry's as I try to offer a flirty smile. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. I duck down, 
grabbing my dress and pulling it up, tying it around my neck, skipping the bra but picking it up and holding on to it. That's exactly what this is, a chance. I swallow thickly and nod my head, thanking him again before walking out of the club with a brooding fin. I need this chance. Chapter 14 Finn. No, fuck this motherfucker. She cannot work for him. I saw the way he watched her, like she was prey. Hasn't she had enough of being hunted like this? I almost lost it when he touched her the first time, but when his hand went to her hip, I couldn't sit back anymore. He's lucky he still has his teeth. Still, she has the nerve to act pissed off at me giving me the silent treatment the entire ride back to my house. When we walk inside, she stomps off to her room, but I follow, needing to talk about this. Charity, are you seriously mad at me? She spins on her heels as I walk into her room, fury in her baby blues. No, Finn, I'm not anything at you. I don't know you well enough to be mad at you, and I don't want to. Bullshit. I've pissed people off within the first few seconds of meeting them. I fold my arms over my chest. I'm pretty sure you were one of them. Fine. She walks closer to me, her blonde hair trailing down over her shoulders. Hair that I watched fall down her bare back as she teased that jackass, swaying her naked body for him. What the hell was that back there? I know what she's talking about, and I don't waste time. His hands were all over you. They were not, and he's my new boss. I need that job. He was encouraging you to offer up extras. I mean, what the fuck? She rolls her eyes at me, shaking her head and placing her good hand on the curve of her hip. He was not. He just wanted to make sure I knew he gets a cut if I do. For whatever reason... Her saying the word if in that sentence may as well have been a sharp slap across my face. I drop my folded arms and step closer to her. Promise me you won't do that. She drops her hand down from her hip, turning away from me. I can't promise that. I won't. I move to stand in front of her again, imploring her to meet my eyes, but she refuses. You said you just dance. Her eyes slowly meet mine. Desperation, remember? You aren't that fucking desperate. She looks pained. Stop. You cannot act like this. I'll do what I have to do to survive. And I can't worry about disgusting you right now. Stop with that. I make a mistake and touch her cheek. My hand covering her soft skin. The touch too intimate. But I don't pull away. It's not about disgusting me. I just think sex should always be wanted by both people. If I did decide to have sex for money, it would be wanted. For the money. I shake my head, my hand still on her cheek and her eyes on mine. No, that's not desire for sex. Sex should be enjoyed. She scoffs at that and gently brushes my hand away. <laughs> yeah, well, then I'd never have sex again. What? She winces like she said something she didn't mean to say. I'm struggling to understand what that means. That she's never had sex because she wanted it is all my brain can land on. And that pisses me the fuck off, making my blood pressure rise and my fists clench at my sides. Charity, don't. Just drop it, please. No, I won't. What do you mean? You've never wanted to have sex? She's thinking, and I can see she wants to run away, but I need answers. I find myself wanting to dig so damn deep into who this girl is. No, I hate sex. I think it's awful. And I don't see myself ever enjoying it or having any desire to do it for free. You're way too young to hate sex. Obviously, you're doing it wrong. That was so fucking idiotic, and her eyes sadden. The entire mood in the room shifts darkly as I realize just how bad her life has been. Charity, I'm sorry. That was so stupid. It wasn't. It's fine. 
She lifts her shoulders, and I see her brave mask being put in place. Not everyone is sexual, and I have no doubt you have the sex drive to make up for mine being non-existent. So, the universe is balanced. I don't believe for a second this is just a sex drive thing. Something bad happened to her. I can feel it. Something that again makes me homicidal. I don't believe that, Charity. I take a step closer to her, breathing her in and looking down into her eyes, our shoes touching. I've seen lust in your eyes, when we're close like this. She's breathing heavily at my proximity, and I feel the electric charge in the air between us. I felt it when I touched her. She isn't uninterested in sex, but someone in her past hurt her. Her eyes are pools of sadness as she looks up at me, her voice a quiet, sexy whisper. It's all an act with me, Finn. Like you said, it's a show, and I'm very good at it. My right hand slides through her silky locks, my fingers drifting through the strands as I look at her, wanting to know everything. I don't believe you. Good. You shouldn't about most things. Henry was right. I'm trouble. Bullshit. Her hand covers mine. I am, Finn. Don't fall for this. She gently pushes me away again and walks over to her bed, sitting down carefully, kicking her heels off. I need to rest before my shift. You can't go back there. That place is shady as hell. She shakes her head. I don't have a choice. I'm going. Then I'm going too. No. I told him you weren't going to be there. You lied. She's pissed off again, but I don't give a fuck. For whatever reason, I'm supposed to keep this girl safe. And I'm damn sure going to do it. Chapter 15 Charity Finn is rapidly becoming the bane of my existence. I needed a ride to work and he's the only one I could ask. So he got his way, and he's here during my shift. I'm not on the stage tonight, I'm on the floor, and all I can feel are his eyes. But it's not creepy like he's doing it for his own arousal, it's more... intense. Like he doesn't want to let me out of his sight. We've only known each other for a few days, but he's right. I'm attracted to him. I can't seem to ignore the pull he has over me already. It's confusing. And unwanted. I don't have time for this. I need to focus on earning money to pay off Pete and be done with him. My soul is weighed down by so many burdens, I'm constantly sinking into the earth around me. The man I'm currently dancing for, I can handle. He's looking at me like he wants to fuck me. Finn looks at me like he wants to steal all my secrets and fears, wrap me up and own parts of me I'm never willing to give. Goosebumps form on my skin. My hair prickling from my awareness of him across the room. His eyes are locked on me, worrying and wondering. Several girls have tried to offer him lap dances and lure him back to the back room in the few hours we've been here but he flashes that bright white smile and politely declines, leaving them pouting, wanting messes. It's not often we get men like Finn in places like this. The man wiggles his finger at me, beckoning me closer. I fix my features into the smile I perfected long ago, the one that says I'm easygoing and flirty, free, but it's always fake. I lean into him letting him yell into my ear over the loud music. How much for a private dance? He seems harmless enough. Forties, here with two friends, all three in suits and ties. They probably came straight here after leaving their boring office jobs. A hundred get you thirty, sweetie. I toss my hair and wink at him, but I'm still hoping he'll turn me down. He stands sending my heart down to my stomach. I'll take it. I take his hand and lead him back toward the back, past Finn, whose eyes are locked on me the entire time. He doesn't say anything. 
His eyes speak for him, though. He's disgusted. He's curious about what will happen. He wants to stop me. With a shake of my head, I keep him grounded to his spot and direct the customer to the private room. I have a debt to pay. I meant what I said. I'm desperate. I can't fail. I close the door behind me and the man removes his suit jacket as he takes a seat on the padded bench against the wall. God, you're beautiful. You can do this. How many times have I been in a VIP room? For some reason, though, this seems different. Wrong, somehow. It's hard to shake from my thoughts just how wrong this feels. How the last time I was in a VIP room, it was with Finn. And he didn't want to dance. He just wanted to talk and ask questions about me. You're worth every fucking penny. What's your name? I try to drown out his voice that's a little too high-pitched and nasally when I'm actually craving a deeper, slower, stronger voice. What do you want it to be? I move closer to him as he spreads his legs, signaling that's where he wants my body. I take the cue, standing between his parted thighs, knowing that the closed door means hands will be on my body no matter what the rules are. His hands move over my ass, covered in black spandex shorts. I want to know your real name. Not a chance. Sarah. I'm not one to use a cheesy nickname they know is fake. No, I'm worse than that. I let them believe they know me. I let them have the fantasy that they could have me, whoever they think I am. That's beautiful. I smile, pulling my hair up and moving my body to the music, closing my eyes as his hands grip my ass. My mind drifts back to Fen. Jesus Christ, what the hell is wrong with me? I've known him for days, not even weeks. Fucking days. And I can't get him out of my head. My mind is lost in thinking that maybe I can enjoy a sexual experience, and it's completely reckless and insane. I want to see your tits. I fight the queasy feeling when the stranger's voice pulls me from my thoughts. This is where I should be right now. Working my way into this fucker's wallet. Making him crave more time with me. Wanting to come back and leaving a big tip so I'll be excited to see him next time. You can do this, Charity. You do, huh? I tease, flirting with him, making him think I want to take my clothes off for him. Mmm, and why is that? I bite my bottom lip. Fake. It's all fake. I'm not blind. I know this guy isn't hideous. He even has a nice lean build, but nothing. There's zero attraction here. He pulls me closer to him, and I can feel his erection against the front of my legs. Because you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and I guarantee your tits will only make it better. Let me see him. I'm a thing to him. Someone to command. My hands move to the clasp on the lacy bra I'm wearing. Well, I sure hope I don't disappoint you. This isn't even my real voice. It's sugary sweet and light. I sound like a dumbass bimbo, but that's the part I play. He shakes his head from side to side emphatically, salivating as he stares at my lacy covered tits. No way! I pretend to be nervous and shy. The demure little girl. The angelic virgin. That's what this guy wants. Some guys crave the Madonna. Some guys crave the whore. I can be either with a flip of the switch. I unhook the bra but don't slip out of the straps. Instead, I hold my hands over the cup's locking eyes with him, taking my time. God, I want to see them. The desperation in his voice is almost laughable. They're only breasts, 
but he sounds like he's about to come in his pants before I even strip. Ooh, I hope you like them. I hate this. I slowly slide one strap down my arm, then the other, and let the fabric fall, dropping my hands to my sides, as if it's difficult for me not to cover up. Wow. Idiot. His eyes haven't left my chest. Surely he's seen tits before. His hands slide over the curves of my hips, and the sick feeling comes back. I hate being touched. Hate it. His touch makes me wince and start to collapse into myself. I don't want his hands on me. You can do this, Charity. I wink at him, leaning my chest forward and pushing my ass back, pulling out of his grasp. Not bad. Fucking perfect, he swallows. How much for more? More? I know what he's asking, but I play dumb. His eyes look glassed over as they move from my breasts to my face. More? How much to touch you? For you to touch me? I need the money. I need it badly. I have less than three weeks to pay $8,000. I shake my head, keeping the smile plastered to my face. Sorry, sweetie. I'm a no-touchy kind of girl. Come on, I can pay. Name your price. My price. My value has always been my apparent beauty. Always. I'm sorry. I can dance for you as long as you want. Until my shift is over and I can go wash you off me. But I don't do extras. For now. I have the cash, you sure? No. Yes. He looks annoyed now and disappointed as he pouts like a child, then pulls me closer to him. Okay, then, I'll just have to commit every second to memory so I can close my eyes really tight later and take you in my dreams. How many dreams have I starred in? The thought is sickening to me. I would give anything to be invisible, to never have existed. I don't want to be in anyone's thoughts or fantasies, and yet, here I am. No doubt you're a tiger in the sack. Don't roll your eyes. That's not sexy. I lean in closer to him, swaying to the music. I know you know how to fuck a woman right. I'd fuck you so hard you'd scream. Probably. But not for the same reason he's thinking. Yes. I lower my voice using a sexy, raspy tone as I slide my fingers through my hair, giving him a premium view of my breasts. I know you would, baby. I'm going crazy. I want to touch you so badly. He sounds too desperate. My palms start to sweat as I wait for the time to be up. There's a fine line between making them want to come back and driving them to desperation. I move back away from him, to dance before him at a safe distance. My body is still beyond sore, and I need my shift to be over. But I know how to push through the pain. Finally, the music cuts off and the time is up. I move to him, brushing my hands over his cheek. That was fun. He grabs my wrists just as I'm about to pull away. I need more time. I don't have a good feeling about him. He's too... worked up. I place my hand that's still in a cast on his chest. I'm sorry, my shift is over and I have to get home. But you know where to find me. His eyes glimmer with something sinister I don't like. I didn't peg him for a creeper at first. But that's definitely the vibe I'm getting now. Yes, I do. Shit. I pull away from him and carefully push back away with my other hand. I'll see you around then. Please go. He takes in every inch of my body, making my skin scream with the need to be cleaned. You'll definitely see me again. He leaves, and a relieved breath escapes my lungs. Great. Let's just keep tacking on the danger, Charity.
That's all you need. Chapter 16 Finn I watched that fucker who was with Charity walk out with a smug smile on his face to pay for his time with her, but I don't see her. My heart is thundering in my chest as I wait for her to come out. Is she hurt? Is she upset? What the hell happened for the half hour they were back there? I run my fingers through my hair, trying like hell to get a grip. What the hell is wrong with me? I've had girlfriends I didn't worry this much about. Probably not something to be proud of, but it's true. I just keep telling myself it's for Jace, and that's why I'm so hell-bent on keeping her safe. But when I see her walk out from the shadows of the hallway, her eyes vacant and her skin pale, I know that's not true. I rush to her, itching to touch her, but I don't. I just stand in front of her, scanning over every inch of her, trying to decide if that asshole hurt her. Charity? She looks at me, her delicate throat bobbing as she swallows. What? Are you okay? You look sick. Her eyes drift to the bar where the customer is paying a red-headed stripper who seems to be the queen bee around here. I'm fine, Finn. She steals herself now, straightening her shoulders, but she still seems off. You're white as a ghost. She narrows her eyes. You've seen ghosts? I try not to smile and instead be annoyed. Casper. She rolls her eyes, but I can tell she's also trying not to smile. I'm fine. I have twenty minutes left in my shift. I'm fine. I think she's trying to convince herself of that, and I don't fucking like it. Before I can say anything else, the redhead comes over with a snarky smirk for Charity. Wow, someone liked you. Charity's blue eyes look sickeningly vacant. Why do you say that? The chick shrugs one shoulder. He tipped you an extra two hundred for that dance. Of course, Henry will take half, but not bad. I don't like the way she emphasized dance. Charity's arms wrap around her stomach, and then her lips morph into a smile I know isn't real. Well, what can I say? I'm good at what I do. This is not her. She looks disgusted under that smile. The redhead just rolls her eyes, but I ignore her presence like I have all night and look right at Charity. I want the last twenty minutes. You'll have to pay for the full thirty, handsome. The redhead hooks her arm around mine, and her mouth dives for my ear. But I'd be happy to take her place. I'm sure she's tired. That's exactly why I'm paying for the last thirty minutes. I slide out of her hold. Nah, I'll stick with her. I've already dodged my fair share of herpes over the years. I'm good. She's breathing fire now, ready to tell me off but I don't care. I'm already leading Charity to the back room. You have to pay first, asshole. Charity turns around to address her. The last customer didn't pay first. I don't really care. I pull a hundred out of my wallet and hand it to the redhead. She's still sneering at me, but then looks at Charity. Mr. White is a VIP. Her pissed off glare moves back to me. He's no one. Sure seemed like she was ready to ride me a moment ago. But instead of wasting more time pointing that out, I ignore her, urging Charity to come back with me and catch a break. Thankfully, she doesn't make it difficult and leads me to an empty room, closing the door behind us. Finn, I'm new here. She clearly hates me. I can't just sit and talk to you this time. Well, fuck. I wanted you to be able to rest, not dance for me. I'll tell your new boss if he asks. She shakes her head, her hand reaching out and pressing gently against my chest. Her touch is feather light as she guides me to take a seat. I follow her instruction and sit back on the padded bench, hoping it's not covered in jizz. Thank God there's no blacklight in here. I'd rather not know, I think. Jesus, my mind is all over the place. Maybe it's trying to distract me from Charity's live body swaying in front of me while I sit here like an idiot. 
Charity, I say in what's meant to be a warning, to tell her to stop dancing for me. But instead, it comes out as more of a plea. She's way too gorgeous. Her makeup is heavy, even if she doesn't need it. Her eyes have smoky black covering the lids and lashes. Her cheeks are red and so are her lips. Her hair is teased up, but the way she moves her body, it's almost indescribable. It's supposed to be sexy, and it is. But there's also a vulnerability there. It's like she's telling a story with every sway of her hips. She's letting me into her soul with every dip and swivel. Every single movement is telling. What happened? She snorts as her hands move up over her sides and into her hair that looks so goddamn silky. <laughs> when? You know when. With that fucking guy back here. Her hips move from side to side, highlighting her intoxicating curves, but my eyes lock on her bruises. Pain. This girl has been through so much pain. Nothing happened. No. Then why did he pay an extra two hundred? I ask through clenched teeth. And I know it's not fair. I know I don't have any right to question her. She moves closer, her hands resting on my knees as she leans forward, looking into my eyes. Because he wanted more. She licks her lips seductively. She's acting now. This isn't the real her. The real charity is putting this mask on, pretending that none of this bothers her. But you didn't give it to him? Oh. She draws, tilting her head from side to side, dragging her hand through her cleavage. Are you jealous, Finn? Not her. I wrap my hand gently around her wrist, making her fingers halt over her left breast. No. I'm trying to figure out if that motherfucker hurt you or made you do something you didn't want to do for that extra money. She doesn't pull away from me. We stay frozen as she looks in my eyes, the mask slowly chipping away. You have to stop this. I was fine, Finn. A few days ago, a guy propositioning me and touching me wouldn't have felt so damn dirty. You make my job so much dirtier. I don't really believe that. I don't think she's ever liked her job. But there's no time to argue that because my mind has already locked on something more troubling. He put his hands on you. Her chin drops and she shakes her head. That's so not the point. What is then, Charity? She pulls her wrist out of my hold and I let her. She pushes my chest backward with her other hand, but she does it gently, since I'm sure it still hurts. I have to be able to still do my job. You aren't a whore. She stands up, reaching back to release the clasp of her bra and letting it drop as she raises her arms in the air and then slides them along her ribs. Says who? I wish I was a better man. I really wish my eyes weren't drawn to her bare tits, but they are. And fuck me, they're too perfect. Perky and full with rose-colored nipples. Right in front of me. I force my eyes up and away from her chest to her face. Me, I say. We're strangers. I don't know you and you don't know me. I know more than you think. She looks frightened by that. And I don't miss the shiver it sends through her barely covered body. Just shut up and let me dance for you. Because I can't get fired and I'm already on thin ice. I swallow. Nodding my head slightly as my gaze shamelessly roams over her bruised and battered body, hating that my body reacts to hers, hating that she's still the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. I am a sick motherfucker. Chapter 17 Finn I can't get charity out of my head. My nights are spent watching her at the strip club and my days are spent here at the tattoo shop. I feel like a fucking creeper watching her in the club. But there's just something that pulls me to this girl. Something unlike anything I've ever felt. She's been living with me for two weeks now. I've seen her nearly naked countless times, and barely even touched her. 
but my mind doesn't leave her. Maybe I need to get laid. That's probably it. I've seen her and tons of other women naked over the last couple of days, but not once have I been balls deep in any of them. Yeah, that's what I need. I wonder how Charity will feel about a guest tonight. I try to shake off that troubling thought and concentrate on the tattoo I'm working on before I fuck up this guy's back tattoo. But seriously, what the fuck? It's my house. I can have a casual fuck over any time I want. Are you almost finished? If this fucking guy complains one more time. Perfection takes time, man. Logan grins from his station, and Reese grumbles but doesn't give me shit. I'm not taking any longer than I need to. I notice Christian is shadowing Reese, and the kid seems to be paying attention far more than I would expect anyone his age to do. I've been around a lot of trainees learning the craft, and it's easy to tell the ones who will be decent. The kid has laser focus, even if he seems carefree. How he's Charity's brother, I have no idea. They seem like polar opposites. His hair is dark where hers is light. Her skin is pale while his is dark tan. He seems free and fairly happy. She has a lost look that goes so fucking deep. I don't know why she doesn't want him to know she's here. They're family. If any of my sisters were in trouble, I sure as fuck would want to know. Reese finishes with his client, and Christian moves to sit next to me, observing quietly. He pays attention to my every move. I've grown to respect the kid in the short time I've known him, and still, I don't ever bring up charity to him. His sister is living under my roof, and he has no idea if he asks questions about ink and designs. I finish and direct the guy to the front desk to pay as I receive a call from Jace and answer it. Better be good, I'm at work, I say with a smile on my face, always happy to hear from my best friend. Oh shit, I know how seriously you take work. I wish I could flip him off. Fuck off, what's up? They're inducing Maya next week. Her blood pressure is a little high, and they think it's best to take the baby now. Oh shit, that's two weeks ahead of schedule, right? Is that okay? He chuckles. <laughs> yeah, they said it should be totally fine. Good. Yeah, but Maya is worried about Charity. She's tried to call her several times, but Charity's been dodging every call. She really wants to talk to her. Look, man, I'll try, but this chick is a pain in the ass. He laughs again. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. But Maya's going crazy with worry, and I'd really like to help her with that. I don't want Maya worried about anything other than their kid right now either. I'll do my best, but she's okay. I wouldn't lie to you guys. At least not huge lies. I still haven't told them the whole truth. I know you wouldn't. I think she'd feel better if she just got to hear her voice again. Got it. I'll try. We hang up, and later that night I head home still thinking about how to execute my plan to get laid and stop thinking so much about my temporary roommate. But when I get home, it all goes out the window when I see Charity perched on the kitchen stool, staring at a large bouquet of roses in front of her. Charity? She doesn't look away from the dark red roses, her pretty face as white as a sheet of paper. One week. What? I moved to stand next to her. I have one week left. That's what the card said, like I didn't already know. Christ. I take the seat next to her, resisting the urge to place my hand on her small shoulder. She's dressed for work, a tiny pink mini dress and hot pink high heels. How much money have you saved? She doesn't look at me, her eyes staring at the bouquet ominously. Five thousand? That's a hell of a lot more than I thought she'd be able to scrape together in two weeks. I know she's taken as many hours as they've allowed, but I still didn't think she'd saved half that much. Three thousand more in a week, huh? She slowly nods her head, her face an unreadable shell. Yeah. 
I'm dying to know what thoughts are swirling around in her head. If she's swimming in desperation. If she's scared of what they'll do to her. Charity, I can... Now she looks at me, but her head is already moving from side to side to halt my words. No. Why not? I have some money saved. Not as much as I'd like at this point in my life, but we all have our own crosses to bear. Because I'm not your responsibility. You're living in my house. Her gaze moves back to the flowers, and it takes every bit of self-control I have not to throw the vase out the window. We're strangers, Finn. I'm no one to you. Don't worry about it. That's not entirely true. We've known each other for a couple of weeks, and we had a tie before we ever met. Jace is like a brother to me. He's married to Maya, which makes her my sister. I see her eyelids flutter as she sucks in a sharp breath. Maya should think of me as an enemy, not a friend. So our tie is through loss and bad choices. I have no idea why she ran away without telling Maya where she was going when they were 18. But I imagine she had her reasons. Maya doesn't think of you as an enemy. She loves you. She wants to talk to you and hear you're okay. She laughs coldly at that, turning to face me again. She hasn't put her makeup on yet. Her face is clean and clear, and the bruises on the outside are healed now. She looks younger this way. No makeup and no way to hide from me. That's exactly why I don't want to talk to her. Because you're not okay. My supply already knowing. Nothing about my life is okay. She's happy, Finn. A ghost of a smile appears on her face before disappearing quickly. She's having a baby, and she's married to a man she loves and who seems to love her back. He does. Her eyes lock on mine. I can't let my life poison any part of that. She deserves that more than anyone. We haven't talked much about Maya since we've known each other but I can tell she misses her. Maybe her happiness could spread to you. She laughs at that, but there's no happiness in it. <laughs> Trust me, happiness and misery don't work that way. Misery is the alpha. I stand. Not always. She stands too, brave and strong, with her head tilted up and then turns back to the flowers. I hate roses. They're so fucking cliche and commercial. That's code for. I can't keep talking about this stuff anymore. And I let her off the hook like I always do. You hate all flowers or just roses? I always liked wildflowers. Her gaze moves back to mine, and I see a glimmer of joy in her eyes. I've noticed the small tattoo on her collarbone she has of wildflowers, but never thought anything of it. I used to dream about them of being in a large field where all you could see were flowers growing in all different colors. I'd wake up feeling oddly safe. I brush my hand over her cheek, and instead of pulling away, she closes her eyes, allowing me to look at her porcelain features etched with past pain and fear of the future. You deserve to feel safe. I watch as she swallows her throat flexing with the movement as her small hand moves to cover mine, holding it there. Damn it. I'm in way too deep with this girl. Chapter 18 Charity I have five days left to pay the entire 8300 I still need $2,200 in five days. How the hell am I going to pull this off? I've made it known to Henry that I'll take any hours he has available, and that I'll work on the side at bachelor parties and other events. But it feels like it'll never be enough. The flowers I received a couple of days ago were a chilling reminder that I'm dead if I don't pay. Or something much worse than being dead will happen to me. I'm dancing for Mr. White. He's been here a lot since the first night I went back to the VIP room with him. He leaves a generous tip every single time. But I haven't crossed a line with him yet. Sarah, I want you so badly. 
he breathes into my ear. And I feel his hands ghost over my ass, because the no-touching rule is enforced out on the floor. Finn is sitting at the next table over. He doesn't trust Mr. White in the slightest. And he makes it known, but I'm suffocated by his stare. Why can't he just drop me off at work and leave? It's been so long since I've worried about what anyone thought about me. I straighten my back, running my fingers through my hair and offering a sultry look. I'm happy to dance privately for you. He reaches up, his hand capturing my good wrist. The other one is still trapped in a cast for another week. That's not what I mean and you know it. I feel Finn's rage spilling over from the next table. But I plead with him not to move. I gently jerk my hand away and smile. I told you that's not for sale. I drag my hand over my cleavage as I dance, wanting to be away from him, but he stands up, his eyes locking intently on mine. I'll pay a thousand. A thousand. Almost half of what I need. But Henry will take half. Mr. White. I don't dare look at Finn, but I know he's hanging on every word. Two. I swallow hard, looking into his intense eyes. Could I do it? Shut my eyes and go to a different place. My field of wildflowers where I'm alone and safe. Breathing in the intoxicating floral scents and fresh air. I, um... Don't you fucking dare. God damn it, Finn. Mr. White and I both turn to face Finn, who's standing tall and imposing beside us. Finn, I glare at him. This is none of your business. No. What the fuck is he expecting for that two grand? Think about what he'd be taking from you. Mr. White sneers at Finn. I'm not sure what you're implying, but I just wanted a private dance. I fight the rise of bile and the cool, clammy feeling all over my skin. Everything is spoken in code, obviously, with it being an illegal action. All three of us know what I'd have to do for that $2,000. Fuck off, Finn growls. I'm not a cop, and I don't really give a damn what you do with your cash, but you're not doing it with her. I'd say that's really up to her, not you. Mr. White straightens his suit jacket and glares at Finn. Finn ignores him, locking eyes with me. You don't have to do this. I don't want this. I don't want any man pretending he cares. I don't want the hope of a decent man being in my presence. It's far easier dealing with men like Pete and Mr. White, knowing they don't have good intentions, knowing they see me as a thing to use. That makes more sense to me. I don't do anything I don't want to do. Lies. Total lies. All I've ever done are things I don't want to do. Bullshit. I hate the way he looks at me. I hate his searing gaze permeating through every wall I've built to protect myself. Every lie I've told myself and others. He smashes through them with those green orbs with no remorse. I grab Mr. White's hand in mine. I think we can arrange something, sweetheart. His grin is wide and sickening, leering at me like he wants to destroy me. That's what I'm used to. I knew you'd eventually give in to me, my dear. Don't look at Finn. Of course. He makes my self-command impossible by putting his large body between me and the hallway. Don't do this. Move. I told you that you can't get in the way of me doing my job. This isn't part of your job. Just stop, I plead with him. Please don't make me feel. I've been numb for so long. Please, he reaches out. His big hand pushing my hair behind my ear and offering comfort I can't accept. It's not real. It's a cruel mirage. You're better than this. I'm not. I'm really not. Stop, I command and push past him, taking Mr. White with me. I hear Finn's growl of warning toward my customer, but I push through.
pulling Mr. White with me to a private room and closing the door, making sure to lock it. No reprieves. I will not let my mind drift to a fantasy of Finn busting in and rescuing me. That's fake, and this is reality. Mr. White strips out of his suit jacket, his gaze trailing over me. I've lost hours fantasizing about what it would be like to finally have you. He should have left it to fantasy. Reality is never as good. My hands are shaking. And I feel hot and cold all at the same time, but none of this is lust or craving to be touched. It's the exact opposite. My fight or flight response is starting to kick in. My body, brain, and heart are all screaming at me to run, but I can't. They say everyone has a choice. But I say only people who have been blessed with choices say that. I didn't have a choice to be born to a crack whore who would sell me out for a hit. I didn't have a choice when I was placed in a home of a monster. And when I did make the decision to escape, I left everyone I ever cared about behind, only to run right into another horror. I want to see every single inch of you. And for two grand, I want to touch every single inch of you, too. You can do this, Charity. You can. Just go to that field of flowers where nothing can touch you. I remove the shorts I was wearing, stepping out of them before removing my bra and letting it float to the floor. The pretty soft pink color reminds me of the wildflowers in my head. I can do this. I let Finn touch me. His hand on my cheek the day I received the flowers full of warning hadn't scared me in the slightest. For the first time since I can remember, instead of retreating from his touch, I pulled him into the fantasy with me, closing my eyes and allowing him into that world. But after tonight, all he'll see is a whore. Mr. White starts to strip out of his shirt, and my fingers slide to the sides of my G-string, the last piece of clothing on my body. God, you're beautiful. Your body is perfect. No, I don't want you looking at me. I'm starting to panic. I can feel it. Just like that night at the hotel when I should have just gone in the elevator and gotten it over with, paid my debt with my body. I'm glad you like it. He moves closer to me, too close. My eyes don't float over his body the way they do when Finn isn't wearing a shirt. I don't care what he looks like naked. His hands move to my hips. I'll help you. Don't touch me. I'm screaming the words on the inside, but nothing comes out. I can't do this. No, don't. What? He looks at me annoyed. I can't do this. His hand moves to the side of my face, but it isn't comforting. It makes me cringe and try to get away from his touch. Yes, you can. I'll take care of you. I shake my head. No, I can't. I don't want to. Do you need more money? Name your price. His eyes slide down over my naked breasts, and I shake my head again. No. Is this some sort of sick game you're playing? His hand moves down to my throat, clenching lightly but with enough force to convey his message. No. It's not, I just... He squeezes tighter. You what? I thought I could do this, but I can't now let go of me. I barely squeak the words out but I do my best with him squeezing my throat. I will have you, Sarah. I wince. Not tonight. He releases me and moves back to his clothes, pulling his shirt on and carrying his jacket. I'm not paying for this. I'll be reprimanded, but I don't care. All I can think about is going back to Finn, but I can't move. Chapter 19. Finn. That motherfucker is walking out from the back with a smug grin on his face, carrying his jacket with his shirt still undone, and I fight the urge to kill him. 
Homicide isn't something I should be contemplating right now. But here we are. However, Charity doesn't follow him out. Not even after he's closed out his tab with the bitchy redhead and left. I don't care how pissed off she'll be at me. I stand and walk to the back to find her, not able to take another minute. Why did I let her go? I should have tried harder to convince her she didn't have to do this, that she isn't a prostitute, that she has other options. Instead, I just watched her go back with him and stayed out front, willing myself to stay put. To stay the hell out of it. I walk toward a room with the door slightly ajar and peek inside, my eyes finding Charity, sitting in the middle of the room on the floor, nearly naked and staring down at the ground. Ah, fuck. I'm in this. I'm totally fucking in this. Charity. I close the door and kneel down next to her. Are you hurt? Did he hurt you? I barely recognize my own voice and the desperation in it, trying to make sure she's okay. She doesn't speak. Charity. I plead with her to look at me. Christ, what the hell happened to her? My eyes roam over her skin, not finding any new marks until they find their way to her neck. It's red. Fuck. Her eyes lift and she shakes her head at me, but I'm furious. Did he fucking choke you? She shakes her head. No, he just wrapped his hand around my throat. Okay, that's choking. She shakes her head and grabs my bicep with her hand. I just want to leave. I nod my head and grasp her waist gently to help her stand. When she gets to her feet, I see that vacant look in her eyes that makes me sick. Charity, talk to me. I brush my hand over her cheek, and her hand comes up to hold it there like she did the other day. I just want to leave. Wear your clothes. She points toward where I know the dressing room is. I nod and grasp her small shoulders, looking into her eyes. I'll be right back. She doesn't move or acknowledge me, and even if I'm dying to know what the hell he did to her, I force myself to leave. I go to the dressing room that, thankfully, is empty. I find Charity's dress and purse, grabbing them and bringing them back to her. She's in some sort of trance as I help her dress and guide her out of the room. Just as we're almost out the front door, the redhead just has to chime in. Hey, you still have twenty minutes left of your shift. Can't she see something isn't right? She's not feeling well. I'm taking her home. Henry won't be happy about that. I glare at her. Henry can fuck off. Charity doesn't blink and definitely doesn't lecture me for jeopardizing her job. I'm not worried about her losing the job, though. Henry isn't going to fire her. I've spent way too much time here lately, and I know without a doubt she's the best he has. I drive Charity to my house and walk her inside, waiting for her to say something needing her words. But she doesn't supply them. Instead, she just strips out of her clothes. All of them. I try not to watch her naked ass or notice her sexy-as-fuck curves as she disappears down the hall. She's beautiful, no doubt. But I need to know what the hell is going on inside her head. I follow her and hear the shower before I walk into her bathroom. I've seen her naked. She apparently doesn't mind, so there's no way I'm leaving her alone right now. I stand there and watch as she lets the water fall over her face, the steam rising through the entire bathroom. I don't move from my spot outside the shower. I watch as she washes away whatever demons are attacking her, scrubbing her skin with bubbles and watching them go down the drain at her feet. Finally, after I don't know how long, she steps from the shower, wrapping a white towel around her and tying it. She looks straight at me and straight through me at the same time. Talk to me. I breathe the words through the humid air of the bathroom. I couldn't do it. Relief washes over me briefly, but I still see the agony in her eyes, and my hackles rise yet again. Did he force you? No. Another wave of relief. Okay, 
So nothing happened with him? She shakes her head. No, I was going to. Her watery eyes lock on mine. Two thousand dollars, Finn. She's worth a hell of a lot more than that. So, you aren't a whore. That's not exactly a bad thing. Why can't I be, though? Her chin lowers, and I want to move closer to her, but I stay put. I've had so many things taken from me. Why can't I take control and at least get something back for it? I swallow hard, hating the word she isn't speaking, but I know we're still there, hanging in the air. Taken. Your value isn't wrapped up in sex. I walk toward her and wait for her to flinch or pull away, but she doesn't. Isn't it, though? No. I answer definitively, needing her to know that without a doubt. You don't know me, Finn. I'm not a good person. I've done terrible things, and I'm constantly paying for them. But it's never enough. Who hasn't done terrible things? You can't be bought. That's not a bad thing. It is when I owe so much money. We aren't strangers anymore, Charity. I brush my hand over her bare arm, and again she doesn't pull away. You live with me. I've seen you naked. I know you have a tattoo on your inner thigh. We aren't strangers. She doesn't seem disgusted about me mentioning her being naked. Instead, a slight smile forms on her pretty lips, but it's still sad. Anyone with singles in their pocket can know that. My eyes move to the tattoo over her collarbone, and I smile. Okay, but I know why this tattoo is of a bouquet of wildflowers. My fingers trace over the small, wispy tattoo, and I meet her eyes. They're your safe space. She slowly nods her head once and sniffles, holding back tears. They are, she breathes. Talk to me. Trust me. I'm not going to hurt you. Everyone hurts me. I hate the resignation in her voice and wrap my arms around her waist, pulling her small body to me and looking down at her face. I won't. She buries her face in my chest and sobs, soaking my t-shirt through, bathing me in her tears. I hold her, wishing I could wrap her up and keep her here in my arms forever, locked in this moment, where I know she's safe. And I won't let anyone ever hurt her. Finally, when her tears dry, she looks up at me, her eyes puffy and red. I'm sorry. Don't be. Just talk to me. Tell me why you owe so damn much money. How is that possible? I see the moment the burden leaves her as her mouth opens. My mother? I stare at her listening. She stole her money, and then she ran. It's not your debt. Of course it isn't. How fucking blind can I be? As far as they are concerned, it is. They could kill you. Why are you taking on her debt? I didn't have a choice. She ran and they knew where to find me. And it's not me that I'm worried about. Everything clicks into place. And I feel like I could puke. Your brother. You're worried about Christian. She nods. They'll kill him to make me do what they want. I failed him so badly in the past, I can't do it again. If they found me, they can find him. I have to pay. Let me help you. She shakes her head adamantly. No. Enough people have been added to my mess. This isn't your mess. I've been paying for her sins my whole life. What's one more thing? Charity. Don't, Finn. Her small hand brushes over the hair covering my jaw, and she offers me a small smile, trying to replace the cracked and broken mask. I'm okay. I can do this. I have to do this. You aren't alone. It's really the only thing I know. Don't get entangled with me, Finn. You won't make it out. Maybe I don't want out. She nibbles on her bottom lip, and I watch intently fixated on her mouth and wanting so badly to kiss her. Run. You should have run that first night. I've never been one to run. You'll regret it. I lean toward her and she doesn't pull away. But I don't kiss her. 
I don't want her to think I only want one thing from her. Instead, my forehead rests against hers as I breathe in her clean, soapy scent. We stand like that for a long time, frozen in the moment as I try my best to take away all the bad, to let her know I'm not going anywhere. Everything is said in breaths and no words. Words can lie. Actions never can. And I intend to act. Chapter 20 Charity I can't believe I told him about my mother. And I really can't believe I'm about to tell him more because it feels so nice not to feel completely alone for once. It's selfish. I shouldn't. But I let him lead me to my room and sit next to him on my bed. His t-shirt is still wet with my tears. He let me cry. I let him hold me. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. How did this happen? He pushes my wet hair behind my ear, and I don't flinch away from him. I hadn't seen my mother in years, but then one night, she showed up at the first strip club I was working at. I have no idea how she found me, but she just kept telling me about this great guy she was working for. I cringe thinking about how excited she was, telling me about the rich men who paid for an hour with her body. She was working for Pete at his casino as an escort. She tried like crazy to talk me into working with her. I feel sick, thinking about it and clutch my stomach. Finn just listens quietly. She said we could make so much money working as a mother and daughter team. Jesus. He scrubs his hand over his face. But he doesn't look repulsed, at least not by me. I told her no and that I wanted her to leave. My hand brushes over my tattoo on my collarbone and I breathe deeply. She brought Pete with her the next time. He made me an offer without my mother being involved. He said I could have the nicest penthouse and make a lot of money. You turned him down too. I nod. I did, but he kept coming back and eventually, the offer wasn't to work for him anymore, it was to be his. I still turned him down, wanting nothing to do with him. I realize I'm still clinging to my waist with my casted wrist and dropped to my side. After several months, I thought he'd gotten the point, but then he and his men showed up looking for my mother. Finn swallows tightly and I try not to think about the fear I felt that night. They told me my mother stole money from them, that somehow she learned the combination to the safe in Pete's office and took everything in there, and ran. Maybe they lied. His hand scrubs over the scruff on his chin. I mean, it sounds like this Pete guy was pretty obsessed with you. How do you know this isn't all a lie just to get you to do what he wants? I've definitely thought about that. Nothing's for certain, but they have a video of her stealing the money. She looked high as hell, but it was her. So now, the debt is apparently mine. He lays back on the bed, looking up at the ceiling. And I can't help but notice the small sliver of skin peeking out from where his t-shirt is riding up. His body is almost too perfect. I lay next to him on my back only in a towel. With anyone else, I wouldn't feel safe like this. Not even close. I'd never even contemplate laying here, nearly naked, with a man. But with Finn, it somehow feels different. This is all fucked up, Charity. I snort a small laugh and look up. I know. He rolls to his side, and I feel his eyes on me but I don't have the strength to look at him. You're incredibly strong. You know that, right? I try not to laugh. But as I'm doing that, a stupid tear rolls down my cheek because I feel anything but strong. I'm not strong, Finn. I'm just trying to survive and have been for so long. That's strong. I feel him moving closer to me. 
as masculine cologne invading my senses and wrapping me up in security. Look at me. I force myself to roll to my side and look at him, into those beautiful eyes and strong features that scream he'll never hurt me, and it's terrifying. He brushes his big hand over my cheek. You are strong. What are we doing? I can't look away from him knowing I should, knowing we're getting lost in each other. And that's not a good thing. Not for him. Whatever we want. I shake my head slightly. I don't even know what that's like. A small grin plays on his full lips. I do. I can guide you. Why are you being so good to me? He rests his hand on the side of my head, letting his fingers slide through my damp hair. Maybe I can tell you've never had that. I want to be that good. He laughs quietly to himself. I'm not sure I've ever wanted to be good before. You are good, Finn. I smile as he shakes his head. I've been a dick most of my life. To everyone. I've never really trusted anyone other than Jace. But then slowly other friends crept in. Any women? I shouldn't ask him that. I have no right to ask him about his past relationships. He chuckles and rolls to his back again, his large body a lot closer to me now. Lots of women. I wince. A ping of jealousy hitting me out of nowhere, but then he looks at me again, his head turning to the side. But none I trusted. None I wanted to really help or cared about. He shakes his head as he looks at me as if he can't believe it. You're so different. Different from what? Everything I've ever known. My reaction to you is confusing to me. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but I'm too chicken to ask. I'm sorry, I breathe. He laughs. I'm okay with it, but I do wish you'd let me help you. How can you help me more than you have? I'm in a big mess, but you've given me a place to live and taken me to work. You've helped me in every possible way, and I'm grateful. He tucks his arm under me and pulls my body to him, and I let him. I don't seem to want to run away from Finn. I breathe him in and lay in his arms, letting the exhausting day drift away as I close my eyes. How can I trust him more than people I've known my entire life? How am I not bolting right now or pushing him away from me? Why does he seem to care so damn much? I know his type. Or I thought I did. Good-looking, cocky, promiscuous. Never wanting to take life or anything seriously. But I'm starting to see there's so much more to him. He confuses me too. Chapter 21 Finn I wake up in Charity's bed, subconsciously reaching for her. But I open my eyes when I don't feel her. She fell asleep in my arms last night. And I can't remember the last time I let that happen with a chick. Instead of tucking her in and going to my own bed like I should have done, I just close my eyes too. I look out the window and see the sun is starting to rise. I sit up, stretching my arms above my head before I make myself stand to go look for her. I don't have to go far though. I find her, moments later, standing in my room in front of my dresser. She's put on a tank top and shorts and turns to look at me, her fingers gripping a picture frame. I walk into the room and see her holding a picture taken at Jason Maya's wedding. All of us lined up with big, goofy smiles on our faces. I'm sorry. It caught my eye when I was walking to the kitchen. I shrug, because I can't imagine anything being off limits to her. It's okay. Her attention goes back to the photo. They look so happy. I nod and look at the picture. Yeah. 
They are. It was a good day. She nods, dragging her finger across the image of Reese. The big motherfucker even put a half grin on his face for that moment. He doesn't usually smile. Reese. She looks bewildered. And who's this? She's pointing to Blair. That's Reese's wife, Blair. My point to the cute kid wearing a sundress and tennis shoes next to her. That's their kid, Bree. And they adopted the two boys next to her, Rhett and Fletcher. They're all at the shop a lot, hanging out. She looks over at me, her eyes widened with shock. Reese is married with kids? I nod my head, understanding how that could seem strange to her. He isn't the most open guy in the world, but he loves those four with everything he has. She moves to another picture. This one is just of Tommy and James, both dressed in tuxedos. James has his arm around Tommy, leaning in, and both are holding champagne for the toast. They're a good-looking couple. Why not? Yeah, that was their wedding in Nashville. They just adopted their first kid. I gesture to the picture of Tuck. Tucker. She grins as she picks up that picture. God, he's cute. I laugh. I know. He gets away with a lot, too. She smiles and places the photo back down, moving to Quinn and Logan's wedding picture. I can't believe they're married. When he left, she seemed nearly hopeless. He came back. She nods absently, her gaze moving back to Jason and Maya's wedding picture. They all look so happy. So different from the way I remember them. I know. They all had to claw their way out of the abyss to get there. Do you miss them? My chest feels like it might cave in, thinking about not all that long ago when we all lived in the same city, working together, doing everything together. Yeah, I do. But I'm glad I'm here. She's studying the picture, and then I notice her brow furrow. Where's Trey? She turns and a sense of dread washes over me. Maya's little brother. He isn't in the picture. Oh, fuck. You don't know. Know what? Her worry has amped up now. Did he go back in the system? Could Maya not get him out? If only. I shake my head and brace her shoulders with my hands as I shake my head. Trey died, I say with a cracking voice. A look of despair and confusion crosses over her pretty features. No. She shakes her head. Trey. She enunciates his name slowly. Cute kid. Big playful smirk on his face all the time. And dimples. The cutest little dimples. I swallow hard, holding onto her shoulders and take a deep breath. He died, Charity. She shakes her head frantically. No, he was a kid. He's what, 13? No, how? When he was 11, he was shot when he was playing outside. She just keeps shaking her head. No, 11? No, I'd have seen it on the news. She clutches her throat with her good hand. But I don't watch the news. Tears fill her big eyes, and again, all I want to do is protect her. But there's nothing that can make that situation better. Why? Why would someone kill him? He was a kid. Oh, God. She covers her mouth. Maya? He was her world. I nod my head sadly and guide her over to my bed. We both sit, and I wrap an arm around her lower back, pulling her to my side. He was. She was pretty destroyed by it. It's why she left here and went to Nashville. Why the hell did this happen? Her eyes meet mine as she turns her head to face me. Let me guess, they have no idea who did it. No. Of course not. She screams and throws her arms in the air. God, why? Why us? Why the hell were we born to these mothers who don't fucking care about us? Who never did? We weren't wanted and we never had a damn chance. I feel that deep in my soul, and all I can do is grip her face in my hands and let her feel it too.
because it's not fucking fair. Mothers and fathers are supposed to protect their kids, but almost everyone I've ever known didn't have that. Not Maya, not Charity, not Reese, not Christian, and not me. Jace did, but then he lost his father and it all went to hell. I'm sorry. She cries and rests her forehead against mine, her body racked with quiet sobs. I hate the fucking city. I hate this world. I lift her face with my hands so her eyes are on me. Don't say that. I do. It's not fair, and I'm so fucking tired, Finn. I nod my head. And then, because there are no words to take it all away, I lean forward, capturing her luscious lips with mine. I expect her to push me away, but I silently plead with her not to. She feels too good nestled against me, her lips against mine. And instead of pulling away, she accepts the kiss, her hands moving to my face as mine slide down her sides. Our mouths move together before hers opens, allowing my tongue to sweep inside to taste, causing me to groan from the experience of finally kissing her like I've wanted to do from the start. Even with her bruised and in pain, all I wanted to do was take that away. Her fingers brush over my beard as I kiss her, my tongue exploring hers, getting lost in one another. I don't want to leave this moment. Her lips are soft, and I hear a small whimper from her as she kisses me deeper. I want to take every second of pleasure. But more than anything, I want to give it back to her. With every lash of my tongue, I hope she feels the good that life can offer. With every nibble of her teeth on my bottom lip, I hope she's giving me her pain. All too soon, her hand rests over my thundering heart and I realize she's pushing me back, needing space. And even if it kills me, I pull back breathless. Charity, I can't do this. I nod my head and move away further. Okay. She's panting, and I know she enjoyed it despite the tortured look on her face. It's not you, it's all me. She looks devastated as she places her hand over her heart now. We don't have to rush things. Who the hell am I? She offers a small smile now. You should really run, Finn. I'm not going anywhere. She keeps telling me to run and that we're strangers, but she doesn't know me well enough yet. She isn't a stranger to me. My mind has already decided I care about her. She'll learn. I may have never been in a serious relationship in my life, but when it comes to the people I care about, I never give up. Chapter 22 Charity I kissed him. Or he kissed me. I have no idea what the hell happened or how I allowed it to happen. But I do know how dangerous it was. I can feel myself falling deep into something with Finn. What that is, I'm not really sure. And for whatever reason, I feel him falling too, which is really not good. He may have walked around, acting like he wasn't a good guy for a while, and I might have even thought that at the beginning. But I know now he's as close to a good guy as they come, and I can't let him get mixed up with me, no matter how good that kiss felt. His full masculine lips pressed against mine, and the feeling of the heat rolling off him. I almost got lost in him. Hey. I look up from the couch where I'd been reading a book, but trailed off into thoughts of that kiss this morning. I see Finn's crooked grin as he holds the phone out for me. It's Maya. I shake my head from side to side, closing my book. He shakes his head right back and holds the phone out for me again. She wants to talk to you. She's going to the hospital today to be induced. Ah, uh, shit. I don't want worry in her heart before she has her baby. I plead with him not to make me do this, but he's not giving up this time. 
I sigh and take the phone, putting it to my ear. Hi, Maya. Jesus, it's really you. She sounds like she might burst into tears, and I hate that I did that to her. I despise the pain I seem to cause everyone. I take a deep breath. Yeah, it's me. I'm so sorry. For everything. Don't be sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. The timing. I interrupt her. It sounds like you're doing amazing. Don't let me weigh you down. You aren't weighing me down, but no one will tell me anything, Charity. I'm worried sick, and everyone is treating me like I'm a child instead of carrying one. I smile, because she still sounds like Maya. Strong and fierce. And then my heart squeezes tightly in my chest, thinking about Trey. I can't believe he's gone, and I didn't even know it. She should have been able to come to me for comfort, but I wasn't there. I try to shake that away. Because it's the last thing she needs to think about at the moment. I'm okay. Really. My eyes slowly drift to Finn, who's standing against the wall, his muscular arms folded over his chest while he watches me. Finn has been taking care of me. I roll my eyes when he grins. My laughs. He's a good guy. Kind of an asshole, but still a good guy. I laugh and look right at Finn. Definitely right about the asshole part. Finn chuckles and drops his arms, signaling to me he'll be in the kitchen. I nod and focus on Maya's voice. I miss you. I've missed you for so long. A sob threatens to bubble up my throat, but I force it away. I miss you too, but I'm here now. I'm sorry I can't be there. Maybe after the baby's born, you can come stay with us. There is no way in hell I'm putting her in danger. But I will my voice to sound strong. I think you're going to have your hands full for a while. But maybe someday I can come visit. For now, I'm okay. Are you sure? Jace is quiet about it. I'm not sure what Finn has told him. I'm fine. There's really nothing to tell. You were in the hospital. I'm out now. I try to joke, but she doesn't laugh. So I add, I'm okay. Finn won't let me out of his sight. That part is mostly true. You just worry about bringing that beautiful baby into the world. She sounds truly happy as she sighs into the phone. I'm excited. There's a small pause, and her voice lowers. This baby is going to have all the love we should have had. I smile because I know it will. Yes, for sure. One lucky kid. I love you, okay? Don't worry about me. I love you too. She doesn't grill me about where I've been or why I left. I don't ask her about Trey. We just say our goodbyes and I promise to call more often before we hang up. Finn must hear our goodbyes or have really good timing because he walks in and sits next to me on the couch. You okay? I nod. I wanted to ask her about Trey. I want so many answers, but I knew it wasn't the right time. He nods sadly. I'm not sure she has any answers anyway. I pull my feet up to the couch and wrap my arms around my legs pulling them tightly to me. I can't believe he's gone. It's not fair. Not much is, though. I lay my head on my knees and nod, my head studying him. He looks tense, and I'm sure I caused that. Fen? He's staring directly at me as I sit up and look at him head on. Yeah. About this morning, I swallow trying to gain courage to talk about it and watching his eyebrow lift in curiosity. That kiss, it was... I take a deep breath, maybe hoping he'll bail me out and say something, but he just waits. Nice. He scoffs, amused. Okay. Yeah. That's not the best way to describe a kiss, especially with a guy like Finn.
There's a reason I keep telling you to run. And why is that? He moves a little closer, and I wait for the panic to set in at his nearness. My body is aware of him, but it doesn't seem to feel like fright. I'm not normal. I look away from his handsome face and look down at my bare feet. I wasn't kidding when I said I hate sex. I do. My eyes lift, and he doesn't show any emotion. I can't tell if he thinks I'm crazy or if he's amused. I don't know what's going on in his head. I know it's weird, a stripper who's afraid of sex. He reaches out tentatively, placing his large hand over my knee as his eyes meet mine. Maybe you wouldn't hate it with me. I'd never hurt you. I swear my heart just fluttered from his words, but I don't think my body knows that. I can't fall into his trap. I can't let him. I just don't like it, Finn. You deserve a girl who not only likes it, but loves it. He shakes his head, and I see that look that says he sees right through me. Something bad happened to you. Do not cry. I'm tired of crying. Lots of things happen to me. I won't hurt you. He gently squeezes my knee with his hand, and I delight in the feeling. We can work through it. I can't look away. I'm lost in his eyes and the beautiful words coming from his mouth. But then I shake it off, pushing it far away from my heart. No, the kiss was nice, but my body... This is too hard to explain. But I feel like I owe him this. It doesn't react the way it's supposed to. What do you mean? He leans in a little closer to me, his eyes on my mouth. I felt your lips moving with mine. I felt your tongue. A sliver of excitement courses through me at the thought. But again, I push it away. I've read books and seen plenty of television and movies. I know what's supposed to happen during sex. It just doesn't happen with me. What do you mean? God, I'm such a freak. I feel my cheeks heat, but I force myself to keep talking to him. I enjoyed it, but then I close my eyes. And I usually do it first, but then I freak out. My whole body just wants to flee. He doesn't pull away from me. When I open my eyes, I see he's watching me. So, you need more time. That's okay. I place my hand over his, feeling the warmth. I felt you, Finn. My eyes lower to his crotch to get my point across, and I think about his erection against my hip when we kissed. You were hard. I'm sorry? It comes out as a half question and half laugh. I was turned on, Charity. There's no denying I want you, but I'll wait. I've never had any guy say that to me, and I suspect Finn has never had to wait in his life. I shake my head, placing a hand on top of my head, trying to figure out how to explain the train wreck that's charity to him. Your body reacts in the right way, mine doesn't. I loved feeling your lips on mine until I didn't, and then all I felt was crippling fear. Now he looks horrified and removes his hand from my knee, jarring me. Why didn't you stop me sooner? I blink in confusion. I stopped you as soon as I started to freak out, and you did stop. Of course I did, Charity. I want to look away, run away and hide from intense embarrassment, but I stay put. Any decent man would. I want to scream that he must be the first decent man I've ever met then, but I don't. It's not fair to you. I'm a freak, Finn. No, you aren't. I cock my head to the side and take a deep breath before releasing it slowly. I am. 
I'm messed up and you really are a great guy, I smile. Maybe I didn't think you were at first, but you are. You don't deserve this. So I'm telling you, don't get mixed up in all of this. It's bad enough you're stuck being my bodyguard and chauffeur, but we don't have to make it worse. You really think kissing you is a bad thing? I nod immediately. I do, when I can't do anything more, when I don't get wet for you or come because I'm too afraid, when I flinch away from your touch or push you away, yeah, I think it's a terrible thing. I can't stand the bewildered look on his face. I stand from the couch, trying to get some space. I should get ready for work. He's still lost in thought, but finally stands, keeping his distance but facing me. What if that creep comes back, thinking he can get more this time? He will. Charity. His tone has a warning edge to it, but I wave him off. I clarify. He will come back for more. It's fine. I had a moment of weakness and the money was tempting. But I'll have enough to pay in a few days. It'll be okay. How much more do you need? I can't tell him. I know he'll offer to pay the rest. I can see it. Not much. I'll make it in time. Without having to offer up extras. I nod my head and force a smile, the one I use every night at work. Yes, it'll all be fine, Finn. Lies. I know. He knows it too. But we don't say it. Chapter 23 Charity My hands are shaking as I ride in the elevator to Pete's office in the casino. The elevator is glass and I can see the casino below, which only adds to my anxiety. I had to plead with Finn to stay down there and allow me to go by myself. I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up if I don't come back down quickly enough. But I needed to do this myself. If I could have afforded it, I would have snuck out and taken a bus here. But I needed him to drive me. When I stand outside the black door of Pete's office, I take a deep breath and then knock softly. I have no idea how he even heard it. But moments later, one of his goons opens the door for me. Cameras. It clicks in my mind that they have cameras everywhere as I walk through the door. One of the men I recognize from the night I ran away from the hotel closes the door behind me. I'm sure they knew the moment I arrived and have known every move I've made since. Today, instead of a skimpy dress, I opted for shorts and a t-shirt borrowed from Quinn. I didn't want to look inviting or pretty. I didn't want to be noticeable at all. Charity. Pete watches me every step of the way, as I walk to stand before him. He's on one side of his desk, and I'm on the other. Pete? You have my money? I nod, holding out the envelope in a shaky hand. Yes, well, most of it. His right eyebrow arches high. Oh? I'm only a thousand short. The real reason I wouldn't let Finn come with me. I couldn't let him hear this part. A thousand. I tried, Pete. That's not bad for three weeks. I try to hold my chin up, but the sinking feeling is always lingering and tugging at my soul. Not bad. Do you think someone like me would ever settle for not bad? I swallow and feel my chin tilting down, ever so slightly. I'm sorry. I tried. And I'll pay it next month. Next month? He stays perfectly poised dressed in his expensive suit and sitting at his desk, giving no hint of what he's thinking. Yes? And if you're two thousand short then, what do you think will happen to you? I shudder when I feel his hired man behind me. He's not close enough to touch me, but I can feel his hot breath on my neck. 
Nothing good? You're right. He glares at me, his hatred and desire for me palpable. You could make this so much easier on yourself. And yet, you still deny me. It isn't a question. He knows my mind hasn't changed. It never will. I'll have the money. He opens his drawer, pulls something out, and then slides what looks like a business card across the desk. The man you stood up. He doubled his offer. I don't let my jaw drop, but I know my eyes widened. What? He chuckles, shaking his head. Mmm, it's true. He's offered a lot of money to have that pretty little body for one night. I feel sick. My dinner threatening to come back up, but I remain still. No. Take the card. I shake my head. I won't tell you again. Take it. And don't even think about coming back here even one cent short ever again. I stare at the white card and shiver, and then stumble forward when meaty hands shove me forward toward the desk. I catch myself and glare at Pete's amused smirk. Take it. I reluctantly grab the card and stand up straight as he stands, walking around the desk, stopping only inches from me. Mmm. You have whore blood running through your veins. His finger drags over my neck, and his hand cups my chin, forcing my eyes to his. You really should give in. Whether you're my whore or his, you will be someone someday. I cringe, but don't pull away from him. I know nothing good can come of that. I'll never be yours, he laughs cold and callous as he squeezes my chin, making me whimper. We'll see. I think I have you right where I want you. I pull away. And he looks bored as he waves at his men to escort me. I don't waste any time nearly sprinting to the elevator and back down to the lobby. Finn's there, and I don't speak as I rush out of the casino with him on my heels. Charity. Don't, Finn. We reach his car and he opens my door, but neither of us move. Please. I beg him not to ask me any questions. I heard he lied to him about having enough money to pay them off today. I don't want to lie to him anymore. He nods, moving out of the way so I can climb in and closes the door behind me. As he drives back to St. Louis, I can feel his worry for me but he doesn't ask what happened. I stare out the window but decide I should break the silence. So, you have sisters? We've been slowly getting to know each other over the last three weeks, and he's mentioned his sisters in passing a couple of times. Three. Any brothers? He smiles. His long arm is stretched out in front of him as he sits almost too far away from the steering wheel. My guess is it's because his legs are long. I've spent entirely too long studying Finn's body, even if I've barely touched him. Nope. And where do you fall in order with the three girls? He turns slightly to study me, looking confused and amused, before turning his attention back to the road. I'm the oldest. I think about all the information I've gathered about him. He's the oldest of four, and his mom was a junkie. You took care of them, didn't you? It isn't really a question because I already know. I watch his throat as he swallows, and his eyes turn a little sad. I tried my best, but I'm not sure I did that great of a job. Why do you say that? Normally, I wouldn't dig so deeply, but I can't stop myself when it comes to Finn. I want to know everything. His frown turns into a small smile. My mom was pretty much useless. So yeah, I tried my best to take care of them.
I couldn't legally work until I was fifteen, but I took as many odd jobs as I could. Still, it wasn't much. I could barely keep the lights on. My eyes slowly flutter shut, thinking about all the times Christian and I came home from school to a cold, quiet house, and realizing the electric bill hadn't been paid. At least you did that. Yeah, well, I made friends with the electric company worker. They usually gave me a couple of extra days if I needed it. I smile, sinking back into the leather seat. What about your dad? I notice his shoulders tense and he keeps his eyes on the road. I don't know. I never knew him. And neither did Lucy. Lucy? I smile. He nods. She's only two years younger. We have different dads, though. We all do. Four different men? He nods. We probably have more siblings out there knowing my mom. But who knows? He goes on. Paisley's dad is actually pretty cool. She's the one a year and a half younger than Lucy. He tried like hell to make shit work with my mom, but she wouldn't have it. Cheated on him with every guy in town. My stomach clenches thinking about a man wanting to stick around and being pushed away. Not something I've ever witnessed. He still tries to help Paisley, but she's... He seems pained. Troubled. Troubled? My question is quiet and hesitant, because I can tell it's not something he likes to talk about. She's like my mom. I don't know how many times I've been called to bail her ass out of jail. I reach for his hand, almost a subconscious movement, but he takes it. My fingers slide through his as he drives with one hand and our enclosed hands rest on his thigh. I'm sorry. He shakes his head. I used to tell myself she couldn't help it, that it was in her blood. But now I'm not so sure. I understand exactly what he means. It's hard to decide where that line ends. Yeah, it really is. I know she didn't have it good growing up, but God damn it. She saw what we all went through with her mom. Why would she want to be like her? I don't know, I whisper, and find myself staring at his handsome profile, his square jaw covered in just the right amount of facial hair. He's almost too beautiful to look at for very long. What about the youngest? He smiles now. Remy. She's a fucking hellion, but smart as hell. His smile and words cause my own grin to emerge. You're protective of them all, huh? He nods his head definitively. Of course. You remind me of Maya. He grins at me now before focusing back on the road. I felt a kinship to her almost immediately. Makes sense? Trey was her entire world, and she protected him fiercely. She's going to be such an amazing mother. She's a mother now. We got news and pictures of their brand new baby girl, Molly. Finn laughs now, and I look at him confused. Seeing Jace be a dad to a girl is going to be fucking hilarious. I can't wait until she starts dating. I shake my head smiling. He's a little protective too, I take it? He laughs again. Oh, yeah. We laugh together and continue our talk about mundane, regular things. And I start to feel almost normal in those moments. For the time in the car, I forget that I owe a ton of money to bad men and that I was a thousand dollars short on my very first payment. And for the time being, everything feels like it might actually be okay. Chapter 24 Finn I tuck my hand behind my head as I lie on my bed, looking up at the ceiling. Nice. That's how Charity described the kiss that sent my whole life into a tailspin. A kiss that made me question fucking everything. Every kiss before it. Every single hookup. I can't get it out of my head. The way her small body felt and her soft lips pressed against mine. Something inside me changed. 
but then she told me how afraid she was. How she panicked and how she wasn't excited by it. Fuck. I wanted to scream, but I stay quiet, lying on my back and hearing her words over and over again. I know something bad happened to her. Something she isn't ready, hell, may never be ready to talk about. Afraid of sex. She said it. And I'm not sure she even realized all the things she told me in that single conversation. But it made me homicidal. It made me want to hunt down every person who'd ever hurt this girl. I told her I'd wait, and I meant it. I don't know who the fuck this guy is that I've turned into the last few weeks, but I don't care. I'll gladly wait for her. I'd give anything for the briefest touch. Even a glimmer of hope that maybe she wants me too. I cover my eyes with my other arm and almost groan, trying to figure out yet again who the hell I am. Because this is so not me. She wants me to run away from her. She acted like kissing her was dangerous for me. When I can't do anything more. When I don't get wet for you or come because I'm too afraid. When I flinch away from your touch or push you away. Yeah, I think it's a terrible thing. Her words echo in my head repeatedly. She can't come because she's too afraid. She wasn't wet from our kiss, but she's never flinched when I've touched her. She doesn't push me away, not really. I can be patient with her. What are you doing? I lift my arm off my face and see Charity standing in my doorway, looking almost amused at my position. I just got off work and am waiting to take you to the club. She moves a little closer to me, not yet dressed for work. Instead, she's wearing cotton shorts and a tank top with no makeup. I like her better this way. It's like she's not hiding from me. Are you okay? I nod my head and inch away from the edge, leaving room for her to lie down with me and motioning for her to do just that. I don't think she will, but she surprises me by joining me, even snuggling up to my side. I'm fine. Are you? She's lying on her side while I'm on my back and I can feel her eyes roaming over my face. What are we doing, Fen? I don't touch her. Not after hearing how traumatized she is from a past she won't talk about. But I do roll to my side to face her. Lying here? She smiles, and it's so fucking beautiful I couldn't look away if I wanted to. You know what I mean. What are we to each other? I swallow the tight lump in my throat and take a deep breath, tucking a wild strand of hair behind her ear and then pull back quickly, having already broke my no-touching rule. I don't know. I've never been big on labels. She nods her head cautiously, her big blue eyes looking uncertain. Okay. Do you want a label? Because not long ago, she told me to run away from her. No. I watch her gnaw on her bottom lip for a moment before she speaks again. But I can't deny the way you make me feel. My heart gallops in my chest with hope. And how is that? A small smile plays on her pink lips, and God, I want to taste them again. But I don't move. I don't know how to describe it. Her eyes are locked on mine because even if she thinks she's weak, this girl is incredibly strong. I'm afraid of you. I wince, not expecting that at all. I'll never hurt you. She shakes her head slightly and then places her small hand over my heart. No, not like that. I know you won't ever hurt me on purpose, and that's terrifying on its own. I've never known a man like you. I'm afraid of you not hurting me. What? I want to touch her. My hands are itching for contact to comfort her, but I stay frozen. I know that sounds crazy, I just mean... She groans and pulls her hand back, making my chest ache and feel cold from the loss. I mean, you make me feel safe. I've never felt that way. I don't want you to get mixed up in my mess. It's not your mess. 
I interrupt, but she's quick to argue. It is. Everywhere I go, there's a mess, Finn. It's just the way my life works. And I don't want that for you. Eventually, you'll get sick of this, and knowing how safe you make me feel. She's looking past me now, like this is too painful to admit. It's nearly too painful for me to hear it. I'm afraid of that loss. I'm not going anywhere. It's not that I'm a commitment phobe, but I've never had a girlfriend. But it wasn't because I didn't want that eventually, or was afraid of committing to one person. I just hadn't found anyone who held my interest. Until charity. This girl occupies every free moment of my thoughts. And I don't hate it. Not even close. In fact, I fucking love it. She doesn't believe me. I can see it, and I reach out, unable to take it anymore, and cup her cheek in my hand. I'm not going anywhere. Finn. Her eyes lift, and I see the worry in them. I'm a lot. I have no idea what that means. It means I come with an insane amount of baggage. And I meant what I said. You deserve someone who loves sex. I can't deny how badly I want her. But I don't say that out loud either. I don't want to scare her. I can and will wait. My thumb absently brushes over her bottom lip. And when you're ready, I'll show you just how good sex can be. She winces, and I start to pull away, but she covers my hand with hers keeping it there. I? Not now, Charity. I won't rush you. I've had plenty of sex in my life. This is something different. I don't think I'll ever be ready, Finn. I hope she can't see my worry and disappointment. It's not only that I crave to be inside her, to touch and kiss her freely, but it's also that I want to erase every bad thing that happened to her. So, no labels. We'll just take it slow. How long can you deal with that, though? Honestly. Her eyes bore into me as we lie on our sides, looking directly at each other as I contemplate the answer. In this moment, I can't picture ever growing tired of having her being part of my life. But she confuses the fuck out of me. There's no denying it. Luckily, my phone rings from the small table next to my bed. I reach over her and see Reese's name on the screen. That's weird. She looks at the screen. Why? Don't you work with him? I nod my head. Yeah, but in all the time we've worked together... I don't think he's ever called me. I hit answer and put the phone up to my ear. Reese, what's up? His deep, quiet voice comes over the phone. Christian was jumped after work tonight. They did a real number on him. What? I sit up, my body rigid and fully on alert now. Who would do that? Now Charity looks freaked out as she sits up next to me her eyes asking so many questions as I listen to Reese. We don't know. He didn't recognize them. Logan said you might know. Is he okay? Charity is really frightened now, but I focus only on Reese for the moment. I think so. They beat him up pretty badly, but he won't go to the hospital. Where is he? My house. Motherfucker is stubborn. I look at Charity. Can't imagine that. I nod my head, already climbing off the bed. I'll be there in a minute. He gives a curt goodbye, and we hang up. Charity is standing now. What happened? My eyes focus on our cast, thinking she needs to get that checked soon. But then, I'm drawn back to her face that's filled with dread. Christian was jumped. What? Her eyes only widen further. Where? Is he okay? I nod, pulling my sneakers on. Yeah, I think so. He's at Reese and Blair's house. Take me there. You sure? I ask, because she hasn't wanted him to know she's here. She nods, already heading for the front of the house. Yes. I catch up to her as she's slipping into sandals. He's hurt because of me. You don't know that. I do. Her watery blues meet mine. 
I lied to you, Finn. My heart sinks into my stomach. What? She looks away from me, shame swimming on her features. I didn't have enough money. I was a thousand short, and this was their message. I stand there, stunned. She lied to me. Chapter 25 Finn The ride to Reese and Blair's house is quiet. I can't believe she lied to me about something so huge. I asked her if she had enough, and she said she did. How the hell could she lie to me? I'm tense by the time we pull into the driveway and climb out of the car. It's dark out now, but the large white house is lit up inside and out. Charity stands and stares for a moment. This is where Reese lives? I nod as I start toward the door. Yeah, Blair is loaded. She doesn't move to walk with me, and I turn to face her, seeing the distressed look on her face. He's married to a rich girl? Reese, Logan, Quinn, Maya, Christian, and Charity were all street kids from the city. They didn't grow up with anything, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out they don't trust people who have money. I get it, having grown up with next to nothing. She's cool, Charity, I promise. She still looks horrified, staring up at the large house. Come on, I turn around again, heading for the front door. This time, I hear her following behind me. I ring the doorbell, and moments later, Bree answers the door. The kid is cute with her wild hair, untrusting glare, and ripped jeans. She's like a young girl version of Reese. Hey kid, where are your parents? She lets us in and points up the stairs. In the guest room at the top of the stairs? I nod and can't resist ruffling her hair as we pass by. She shoves me and then flips me off, but I don't miss the small smile on her face. I lead Charity toward the stairs as Bree closes the door and walks toward the living room. I've only been here a handful of times, mostly holidays, but I'm sure I can find the guest room. That's their kid? I nod. Yeah, I smile. They adopted her out of foster care, with Bree and the guys being at the shop all the time. I've grown fond of all three. She's tough, but she's a good kid. Charity seems to soak in this information in a daze until we reach the doorway of the guest room. Then she rushes past me and inside the room. Oh my god, Christian! He doesn't look good, and is lying on the bed with cuts and bruises all over his face and arms. His nose is definitely broken, and both eyes are black and blue. What the fuck are you doing here? He glares at his sister, and it's immediately clear this isn't a happy sibling reunion. I'm so sorry. Charity moves closer to the bed where Reese is standing perched with his big-ass arms folded over his chest. What happened? She looks like she wants to embrace him, to hold him to her and never let go. But she doesn't move any closer. Christian continues to glare at her, so Reese answers. He left work, and four guys jumped him right as he got to his car. He looks at me. Why would Logan think you'd know anything about this? Charity's eyes close briefly. Her voice is barely a squeak when she answers. Because this is all my fault. Christian narrows his eyes only at her. The rest of us might as well not be here. Why? Why the fuck are you here? What are you doing with Finn? And why do you think this is your fault? She lifts her chin and meets his eyes, but I can tell she's afraid to answer. I'm here because it's my fault that you're hurt. Finn drove me. And I think it's my fault because it is. No, it's not. I step closer to her. She doesn't bother looking back at me. Yes, it is. Christian, I owe a lot of money. You don't. I try to stop her from taking all the blame and she looks at me over her shoulder with a warning. Finn, don't. You don't. This isn't your fault. Then I think briefly about how she lied about being a thousand short, but push that thought away. It is. Her focus is back on her brother. 
I'm so sorry. He snorts and his tone is cold. <laughs> Am I supposed to be shocked? She looks hurt but doesn't falter. No. Who do you owe? Reese asks and she turns to him, her head tilted down slightly, looking ashamed. It doesn't matter. I just do. His eyes meet mine now. Finn? Pete something is all I could get from her. He owns a casino or several casinos in KC. Finn! She hisses, but I don't care. The secret is out, and she needs help. Christian sits up a little, wincing and holding his ribs as he does. Gambling? Nice, Char. I thought it would be drugs. Again, I watch her eyes flutter closed and then open. It's something she does when the pain is too intense. It's not her fucking debt. I can't take this shit any longer. His eyes meet mine, cold eyes, with no flicker of the fun kid I thought I knew. He smirks, but again, it's with a wicked edge. And why did you drive her here, Finn? How the hell do you even know my big sister? I can feel Reese's eyes on me now and feel slightly guilty for keeping this secret. But they can get over it. I did what I thought was right at the time. Charity answers before I can. He picked me up at the hospital a few weeks ago. Christian doesn't seem to have any sympathy for his sister as he eyes her. Oh, they got you too, huh? Wonder if it was the same four. What the hell is up with this kid? I take a step forward, but Charity shakes her head at me, cautioning me not to intervene. Probably. I'm sorry. With a scornful look, he addresses her like he hates her. Yeah? So how much do you owe? Her shoulders sag, and I see how defeated she looks. It doesn't matter. I'm taking care of it. He gestures toward his busted face. Clearly. Look, this isn't her fault. It's not her debt. It's your mother's. I take a step further and notice the realization form on Reese's face just as it did mine when I found out. We all come from shitty parents. It makes sense to us. Christian doesn't seem to feel remorseful at all, though. Ah, of course it is. And where is dear old mom? I don't know. Charity sits on the edge of the bed, seemingly desperate to be closer to him. She ran? I'm handling it. I'm so sorry. I messed up and was a thousand short. Christian runs a hand through his hair, and I notice dried blood and split knuckles. The kid fought back for damn sure. So, how are you planning to pay this debt, huh? Following in Mom's footsteps? Charity shudders noticeably, and I don't fucking like it. Watch it, I growl, hating him implying she's a whore. He just grins smugly at me. Aw, oh, how cute. You've known her three weeks and she already has you wrapped around her little pinky. Charity shrinks further, but he doesn't let up. Let me enlighten you, because I'm sure she didn't mention this. Our mom is a damn good whore. If she could just stop snorting her profits up her nose, she would probably have made a nice living spreading her legs and sucking dick. Reese shakes his head but doesn't say anything. My jaw clenches tight, but I don't intervene yet. I don't know what kind of history these two have, but Christian is clearly still pissed off about something. His cold eyes focus back on her. So, is that what you're doing now? My fists clench at my side as Charity shakes her head slowly. No, but close. I'm stripping. He doesn't look surprised and sneers. <laughs> yep. It won't be long. Watch it, kid. I step closer to him again, and Reese takes a step closer to me in warning. Christian just laughs, unaffected, and then turns to Charity. <laughs> so, what's my half? You don't owe anything, Christian. I'll take care of it. No fucking way do I trust you to do that. And a little warning would have been nice. She looks sick, clutching her stomach. Another nervous habit. I'm sorry. I didn't want you to get involved. I didn't want you hurt. I made Finn promise not to tell you. Her eyes plead with Reese. 
any of you. I threatened to leave if he did. I don't want her taking any more of the blame. She was trying to protect you. Christian laughs mockingly, which makes me want to add another abrasion to his pretty face. <laughs> yeah, good plan. They're dangerous, Christian. She implores him to listen to her. Yeah? No shit, Charity. How much do I owe? She shakes her head again because she is insanely stubborn. I'll handle it. I can make more. I don't know. You're getting older. The younger, the better in the hooking game. All right, shut the fuck up. We all turn to Reese, who's dropped his arms to his side and moves closer. That's your sister you're talking about, and she isn't going to be a fucking hooker. He looks at Charity, his expression softening. You can work at the shop. We could use a receptionist. Charity stands from the bed, turning to face Reese. Thank you. I'll take it, but only to supplement my current income. That way I won't be short next time. Reese's expression darkens. You don't have to strip. We can find other things if receptionist isn't enough. She shakes her head. You can only pay me what the job allows. No special treatment. And I know I can make more stripping. I don't say anything, even though I'm dying to. She was taught her only value is in her body. And I hate that. She turns to me, looking meek and worn. I'm going to go wait in the car. She turns to Christian. I'm so sorry, Christian. Really. He just glares at her, shaking his head. Her shoulders droop as she walks toward the door, turning to look at Reese briefly. It's good to see you again. He doesn't smile big. Reese doesn't do that. But he does offer a small one to her. I'll see you Monday morning at the shop. She nods and then leaves with her head down. I turn to Reese. Can I have a minute with him? Reese looks over at Christian and then back at me. Yeah. Don't hit him, though. Wait till he heals. I grin and he leaves. I wait for a minute and then say to Christian, So, this is the real you, huh? All pissed off at the world and your sister. Not the guy I've seen laughing it up at the shop and pretending not to have a care in the world. He laughs humorlessly. <laughs> it runs in the family. We're all really good at putting on a show. Is that so? Absolutely. I thought you were smarter, but clearly not. He shifts slightly on the bed, masking his pain just like his sister. You think you have it all figured out, but trust me, you don't. It's all an act. Charity's own words haunt me from when she told me the very same thing. No, it's not. I know I'm right about her. I know what I see is clear. He shakes his head. You poor bastard. Trust me, I grew up with her and my mother, the queen of manipulation. And she taught Charity well. You're wrong. Oh, come on. He tilts his head to the side, looking at me with pity. She flashes those big blue eyes at you and bats her eyelashes, and you fucking fall for it. He looks disgusted. Let me guess, she wants to take it slow? My eyes narrow. She's your sister. She is, so I know her better than most. Trust me, man, she'll make you look like a chump. She'll use you for everything she can get and then toss you away without a thought. The pretty princess always gets what she wants. You're wrong about her. She isn't some spoiled brat. He laughs again, leaning his head back against the headboard. <laughs> she really has her claws in you, man. You're blinded with need of getting a piece and doing whatever you can to get it. You're wrong, my growl. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm wrong. Because you've known her almost a whole month. I cringe. I know it hasn't been long, but I feel like I saw through her that very first night. I'm not easily shaken. She's capable of so many horrible things. She'll have you paying the debt in full before you know it. Our mom was pretty good at getting rent money back in the day by just batting her eyelashes and pushing up her tits. Too bad it always ended up her nose or in her veins. A sick feeling courses through me, 
thinking about my own mother doing the very same thing. Charity knows how to act like an innocent little thing. She knows what men like, because our mom made damn sure she'd be her little tool someday. I wouldn't be surprised if they're working together on this. Jesus, he really does have a deep hatred for his mother and his sister. And hey, as a guy with his own mother issues, I get it. But Charity isn't like that. I have no idea how I know it, but I do. Chapter 26 Charity I can't believe I got him hurt again. My stomach aches, and my soul begs me to flee. But I promised myself I'd never do that again. Christian hates me, and he should. He should despise me, and it's pretty clear he does. I haven't seen him in so many years. When I walked into that room and saw the boy I left behind, beat and covered in bruises because of me, I wanted to die. I know he'd much rather I stayed away, and at this point, I wish I could have. He was probably doing well before I bombarded his life with my bullshit. And now he's hurt, and probably afraid, even if he can't admit it. I know he wants me away from him but I have to make this right. I'm grateful to Reese for offering me a job, and even if I know it was out of pity, I'll be there Monday. I have to make as much money as I can, because I don't want Christian sacrificing for anything ever again. I'll make damn sure I have enough to pay next time. I'll never be short on my payment again. Finn walks out of the front door and out to the car. We both climb in and ride in complete silence. I'm grateful for that. But I'm also horrified of what could be going on inside his head, and the things Christian could have, and probably did, tell him. The truth? And how mad he is at me for lying to him? Before that phone call we were cuddling. I mean, honest to God, cuddling. I don't think I've ever done that with anyone and talking about what we mean to each other because I'm a stupid, weak girl and I couldn't help myself. I had to know. When I told him to run, I meant it. But when I asked him what we were to each other, I hoped it could be... something. I have to be at work in twenty minutes. He nods his head solemnly, heading toward the interstate, but still not saying anything to me. I hate that I've already screwed this up, whatever this is. He parks at the strip club, and when I reach for the door handle, his large hand on my thigh stops me, pulling my focus to his handsome face in the darkness of the car. The neon lights of the club allow me to see the disappointment and sadness on his face. Why did you lie to me? I force my eyes to stay open and look directly at him because I owe him an explanation. I'm sorry. That's not an answer. He pulls his hand away from my thigh, and instead of being relieved like I would normally, I feel the loss. I knew you'd offer to pay the rest. And that would have been a bad thing? I nod my head definitively. Yes, it would. Why? His hand digs through his thick hair, and I see how frustrated he is. After everything, why would you rather risk them hurting you again? I can take pain. I look away, my heart aching as I look at the club and take a deep breath, forcing myself to focus on him. I can't take becoming her. Your mother. The question is a low growl, and I nod. Yes. She used every man she ever came in contact with. She'd tell me how stupid men were when it came to women. I always knew she was full of it. But then, I sighed deeply. I'd see her tossing her hair and licking her lips, purring into their ears and getting cash from them. Some of them fell in love with her, and she used them for everything she could. 
He drops his hand to his lap with a huff. My mother was that way too. But those dopes weren't innocent. They had brains but didn't use them. And they took from her too. My eyes involuntarily flutter closed now, as I clutch at my throat feeling sick. I don't want to take from anyone. And I don't want anyone to take from me. I've had plenty taken. I open my eyes when I feel his hand cover my cheek. No one will ever take from you ever again. I want to believe him. I want to lean into his touch and get lost. To feel safe for a moment. I'm sorry I lied. I know. I know you aren't like her. I want to help you, but you can't lie to me anymore. I cover his hand with mine and gently take it away from my face. I'm late. I push the door open and turn back to look at him. And I won't. He smiles and opens his own door, climbing out and following me to the front door. I want to know what happened with you and Christian. I cringe as I grab the door handle, but don't pull it open. Instead, I hang my head in shame. He hates me. He's kind of an asshole. I let go of the handle and turn to look at Finn. He has every right to be. No, he doesn't. The things he said to you. I stop him with my hand on his chest, feeling the thump, thump, thump of his strong heart, and say, We're valid. Extremely valid. You don't know me that well, Finn. His fingers glide through my hair as his eyes beg for my undivided attention. Stop saying that. I do know you. And he does. I can feel it. Still, he doesn't know everything about my past. Not even close. I'm late for work. I feel the need for some VIP time already. His lips rise with a devilish impossible grin. You have to stop spending money on me. No. It's a simple, infuriating, and endearing answer, as he drops his hand from my hair and opens the door for me to walk through. We walk in, and before I go back to the dressing room, I look back at Finn, this impossible man who wants to rescue me, and my stupid heart does a cartwheel in my chest. I'll tell you everything but not here. I'm going to hold you to it. I give him a quick nod before ducking to the back to get ready, knowing without a doubt that after my shift, we're going to have a talk. One I'm not ready for. One I'll never be ready for. But one I'll have. For him. Chapter 27 Finn As soon as we walk through the front door of my house, it takes everything I have not to grab Charity, kiss the fuck out of her, and never let her go. But I don't. I want answers. I want so many answers. Her shift at the club was torture. But now we're here. It's just us. Finn. She turns on her high heels and looks up at me, her lips pink and pouty. Way too kissable. God, I love kissing her. I'm tired. Yeah, I know. My hand cups the back of her head, pulling her closer to me, breathing her in. But I want you to tell me everything. She's gnawing on her bottom lip as she looks up at me. In bed? I think I just gulped. Audibly. Embarrassingly. But I don't think anything sexual is going to happen. Shocking as it is, I'm not going to let her use sex to get out of this. I want her to talk to me. You fucking win, universe. I'd rather talk than fuck. At least for now. I lead her to my room. We kick our shoes off and I pull her small body to mine on the bed. Both of us on our sides facing each other. Tell me everything, Charity. Let me in. It's dark in my room but the moonlight provides a little glimpse of her beautiful face. I'm sure you can guess most of it. Probably things you dealt with, having the mother you do. I use my hand to barely graze the skin of her arm. I still want to hear it from you. 
Her eyes are glued to where I'm touching her, but she doesn't pull away. We were constantly in foster care. I mean, I have no idea why they even bothered sending us back to her as often as they did. It just caused them more work in the end because we would end up back in the system. Her gaze turns more vacant. When I was 14 and Christian was 11, the social worker brought us to this big-ass house in the burbs. She pauses, her expression haunted before her eyes meet mine again. We were both shocked and I was convinced they'd made a mistake. But she walked us right inside and introduced us to the Bradfords. Her eyes flutter closed, and I rest my hand on her hip. It seemed way too good to be true. They seemed so nice. They had two children of their own, a huge house, unlimited income, and it seemed like they were more than willing to share it with us. There's a sinking feeling in my gut. Knowing by her tone and the look on her face that this all ended badly. Reese was there. Reese? Quinn had mentioned they were in the same terrible house. She nods. Not for long, and he didn't really talk to us. He was pretty out of it by then. I didn't think much of it, to be honest, because I was lost in what I thought was heaven. I don't want her to keep talking. I don't want to know. But I need to know. What happened? She swallows, catching herself from sobbing and tilts her chin down. Everything seemed good. They bought us clothes and we had full stomachs. It was a huge change from what we were used to. Her voice cracks and she scoots a little closer to me. But then... A lump forms in my throat and all I want is to take away her misery. I noticed Christian was moodier than normal. I chalked it up to going through puberty. And he started getting skinnier and getting into fights at school. He was always banged up. But I thought it was from the fights. I nod, encouraging her to go on. But still, we had things we never had. I thought we were being taken care of. And it was long-term care as long as we didn't mess it up. Mr. Bradford really spoiled me. He bought me gifts all the time, jewelry and clothes. I felt like a princess. She bites her bottom lip, and I don't think she's going to continue, but she pushes through. After a year, though, things started to change. He started... She stops and sits up, and I join her, wrapping an arm around her and keeping her close. You can tell me. Even if my heart rate is erratic. Even if I'm seeing red. Even if I ever run into this Mr. Bradford, I'm going to prison. He started touching me. All. The time. It started out as little grazes here and there. And then I'd wake up, and he'd be in my bed. Fuck. I don't say a word, though. I let her go on. When I was sixteen, that's when he took everything. Jesus. I breathe. She flinches, but just nods her head sadly. But Christian, he seemed okay. I mean, moody. But I swear to you, I thought he was being taken care of. I thought... She puts her face in her hands. And her words are muffled, but not so much that I can't make them out. I thought maybe it was the price to pay for a roof over our heads, and to finally be taken care of. My head whirls with the images of charity. A scared, vulnerable teenager, thinking the only way she could protect herself and her brother was to pay with her body. Anger courses through me, but I try like hell not to let the scream rip through my lungs. I don't want to scare her. She lifts her head, her eyes full of tears as she looks at me, despair in those blue orbs. I let him. I didn't fight him. I didn't even really say no after that first time. It doesn't matter. You were a kid in his care. She doesn't look convinced. Afterward? She looks sick and then takes a deep breath. He would always buy me a gift. He paid for me to have expensive private dance lessons. He was never cruel. He made it feel like it was supposed to happen. I can see the anguish on her face. She never wanted it. But I know she believes she asked for it. 
You didn't know him anything, Charity. He's a sick fuck. I just closed my eyes and went to my safe space. I went to my field of wildflowers and let myself float away from what was happening to my body, refusing to give him my mind. My fingers gently caress her tattoo. I'm sorry you had to. I was fine, Finn. I was. I told myself I could do that for Christian. But then he started to really change. How? He was angry. Really angry. And I still thought maybe it was hormones. Because I got really good at living in denial. Until one night when he was 13. I got up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water. A tear slides down her cheek and I wipe it away with my thumb and then hold her closer to me. I saw them with him. Them? Mr. and Mrs. Bradford? I swallow thickly. Jesus, fuck. She nods her head slowly. Mr. Bradford was just watching at first. She was on the bed with my brother. She looks sick again, and I feel the same. I stood there for a moment, frozen. I didn't think they'd hurt him. It never crossed my mind. And then, when Mr. Bradford started toward the bed, I, I lost it, Finn. Her eyes meet mine, filled with the memory. I ran and pushed him away. Then I just started wailing on him, scratching his face and pummeling him. But it was like nothing hurt him at all. He was a monster. I remember hearing Christian's voice as he pleaded with me to stop, but I couldn't. I let him down. I shake my head unwillingly. Charity. Mr. Bradford, he just let me wear myself out. And then he slapped me. Hard. So hard it split my lip. He'd never hit me before. He was always gentle, considering. I can still hear Christian scream when I hit the floor. And then he hit me, over and over again. And when Christian rammed into him with his much smaller body to stop him, he beat him too. Her eyes darken, and I see her shudder. And when he was done beating us, he dragged Christian to the bed. She's staring past me now, gone to a dark, horrible place. He made me watch. He said if I didn't, he'd kill him. And I believed him. She cries. And then... He made me watch while Mrs. Bradford stroked Christian's hair like they were lovers and said she was going to make it all better. But I could see how disgusted by her he was. Fuck, Charity. I'm so, so sorry. I turn my body and hold her face in my hands. That was not your fault. Tears run down her cheeks and onto my hands. That wasn't. But what I did after was. I hold on to her not wanting to let her go, desperate to be able to take this away from her. I tried to talk to Christian the next day, but he wouldn't. He just begged me never to bother with it again. He told me he could handle it. I asked him how long it had been going on, but he wouldn't tell me. He wouldn't tell me anything. After that, we barely spoke. I still don't understand how she could have done anything bad, but I let her take her time. After that night, Mr. Bradford was nothing but cruel. Six months later, I turned 18. Her eyes met mine. And then I left. I packed a bag and I left that house. And my brother. My eyes close, and the air escapes from my lungs because I get it now. At least as much as I can. She left him behind. Chapter 28 Charity I'm sure he thinks I'm disgusting. Hell, I feel disgusting. Dirty. All. The. Time. I hate it. But I told him I'd tell him everything, so I did. We both sink down onto the bed, my head on his shoulder as we lay on our backs, and I wait for him to say something, anything. What I did was reprehensible. It was beyond wrong, but I swear I did it for what I thought was a good reason. Did you tell him you were leaving? No. I couldn't bear to look at him. 
Mr. Bradford would have at least let me stay until I finished high school. He scoffs, running his fingers through his hair. Of course you would have. I flinch from his harsh tone, knowing it's directed at Mr. Bradford, but also sure he thinks I'm repulsive. I thought I could go out and get a job, find a safe place to live. His hand drops from his hair to my cheek, the touch gentle as he turns to his side to look at me. I thought I could save up and maybe fight for custody of him, get him out of the system for good. He nods his head slowly, taking in every word. What happened? My head involuntarily lowers, hating the memories. Turns out, the streets aren't really any better than living under the roof of a predator. I just found more of them. I hate reliving my story. I hate that it's depressing. and it almost seems made up with tragedies strung together, but sadly, it's all true. There was always a price for everything. And it was usually my body. I can't look at him. I slept on the street. When I was hungry or cold enough, I'd beg for money or a place to stay. The penance was always the same. A tear slides down my cheek, but I don't wipe it away. Christian wasn't wrong. I'm a lot like our mother. No. His hand sweeps into my hair, and he tilts my head back to look into his eyes. You were a young girl who was taken advantage of, over and over again. I just needed help, I sob. And he pulls me closer to him. Why couldn't they have just helped me? I feel the fury coming off him as he holds me close, his voice husky with anger. I would have. Fuck, I wish I'd been there. I smile at that. I know. He would have. I didn't know good people existed until I met him. Then I got a job at a really bad strip club. I mean, bad. They didn't have bouncers and they took most of my money. It was barely enough to live by myself in squalor, let alone help Christian. He just holds me, doesn't force me to continue, which is probably why I do. I know Christian hates me. I hate me. I messed everything up. And then I started working at the last club and I was able to start saving. I take a deep breath, feeling the pain all over again. I found that apartment. He was already 18, but I thought I could at least give him a nice place to live or, or, or give him money, anything. I had 3000 saved when I found out what my mother did, but I was an idiot, Finn. He pulls back to look into my eyes. What do you mean? I didn't have a checking account, and I was walking home from the club. Two kids around Christian's age jumped me and took it all. All $3,000. Jesus. He breathes and pulls me closer. You've never had a break, have you? I look up at him. A stupid grin crosses my lips because I hadn't. Not until some cocky jackass walked into the hospital. He grins now and sweeps my hair out of my eyes. That's why you only had a hundred to your name when we met. I nod. Yes. Every time I start to rise, even the slightest bit, it all comes crashing down. None of that was your fault. None of it. He can't hate you for trying. I left him, Finn. In that house that I knew was hell. Worse than hell. You were trying to get him out. I know he feels for me. But nothing can relieve the crushing guilt I feel for walking out and leaving my brother there. No matter what my intentions were, he lived there for three more years without me. I let him down. Over and over, he should hate me. He shakes his head and then presses the sweetest kiss to my forehead. How could anyone hate you? My eyes close and I take in his earnest question. I'm dirty, Finn. So damn dirty. You deserve a girl who hasn't been used and tossed away. A girl who wants you to touch her all the time, any time.
who the world isn't too much for. The world is a lot for all of us. And you aren't dirty. They are. They're fucking vile. You're not. One hand slips under the other side of my head as he rolls to his side completely and grasps both sides of my face. You're strong. I scoff. I survived. But I'm fractured. I hold up my wrist, still in a cast. Broken in every way possible, Finn. How many girls have you had in your bed who didn't jump you immediately? None of them matter. None. I smile because I know right now he means that. But soon he'll be bored with this. I can't offer you anything. I have no idea if I'll be able to do more than kiss without panicking. I can't even guarantee I won't freak out when you kiss me. I got in trouble a lot in school. I quirk one eyebrow. Uncertain of where he's going with this, but I wait. I couldn't sit still. Like, ever. I was always bouncing to the next thing. Nothing could hold my attention. They even wanted to put me on medication for it, but I knew my mom would just steal it. We really do have the same type of mom. Anyway, I never really grew out of that. When a tornado in Nashville destroyed our shop, I jumped at the chance to move here because I was ready to move on to the next thing. I moved from woman to woman because nothing holds my attention. This isn't making me feel any better, Finn. He smiles and his lips brush lightly over mine, but he doesn't kiss me. Until you. You've been a constant thought since the moment Jace called me to pick you up. I haven't thought about anyone else. How long can that really last? He presses a soft kiss to my lips, short and sweet. But I feel it deep inside me. I want to want more. But I don't know if I'll ever get there. As far as I'm concerned. His eyes meet mine. Forever. A small gasp escapes my lips, not expecting that answer. We barely. His finger moves over my lips, hushing me. We do. We know each other. I care about you. And that's not going to stop. I want to see you safe. I need to see you happy. I'll spend every minute of my life figuring out how to do that. I'm a lot of work, Finn. And I'm a hard worker, Charity. He grins. When it's something important to me. And you are. I shake my head, one hand resting on his chest, feeling his heart over strong pecs. I'm tainted. There's no way around it. We've all been tainted by pain. It doesn't make you any less attractive to me. It makes you more appealing because you're a badass. I laugh. You're insane. He shakes his head and pulls me closer, not attempting to touch me or go any further. Someday, I'll make sure you know that. He seems to be content only holding me. But how long can that really last? Chapter 29 Charity Okay, I can do this. It's going to be okay. I stand at the front door of the tattoo shop, looking through the glass and seeing my brother sitting next to a guy who looks like Logan. But it's been a long time since I've seen him. He's married to Quinn, and I know he works here. It has to be him, although he's grown up a lot. I rub my wrists, now free from the cast, thanks to Finn dragging me to the doctor. I'm frozen until I feel Finn's reassuring hand on my lower back and I feel his mouth against my ear. It's okay. I won't let anything happen to you. I smile to myself because I know that's true. I've never had anyone in my life who wanted to protect me, but he does. I know he does. I take a deep breath and pull open the door. 
gaining the attention of Logan and Christian, who both look over to us. Finn strides in with confidence, but I stay meekly tucked behind him. Logan stands and walks to us, looking at me cowering behind Finn's large body. Charity? I nod, tucking my hair behind my ear. Hi. He offers a big smile that's familiar from all those years ago. Wow, I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again. Yeah, he grins. Well, welcome. Hopefully you can get this place in shape. I raise my eyebrows as I look around at the clean shop. It looks good to me. He chuckles and walks back to Christian. Yeah, well, the appointments are a mess. None of us can seem to put them in the computer. Finn laughs and walks over to what I'm assuming will be where I'll be stationed behind the front desk. Yeah, we're a bunch of heathens. He winks at me and pats the stool behind the desk. I have no doubt you'll do a hundred times better than we can. Quinn was running things until her bar opened. She has a bar? He nods. Yeah, next door. Lyrics and ink, too. That's amazing. I walk to Finn and take a seat on the stool. I try my best not to breathe him in when he reaches across me, starting the computer. But I get lost in the moment, letting his familiar scent comfort me. It is. He gives me the basics before heading over to his station, and clients start filling in. I haven't seen Reese yet. I'm assuming he works later in the day. I know Finn works earlier so he can take me to work and stay there my entire shift. It's intoxicating watching him work. He isn't really a serious guy, but when he's tattooing someone, I see how passionate he is about his job. I see the art flowing from his mind onto skin. It's beautiful. By lunchtime, Christian is shadowing Finn, while Logan works alone and two customers wait patiently. But I think I have the hang of it. The bell on the door dings, and the woman I recognize as Blair, Reese's wife, breezes through the door. She's flawless in a pink dress and heels with her long blonde hair beautifully styled, and designer sunglasses on her head. She's carrying several pink gift bags and places them on the counter. Finn looks over. Badass Barbie. You know your husband isn't here, right? She rolls her pretty eyes at him and then looks at me. He thinks that bothers me. A guy who looks like a Ken doll who just came out of rehab, grew a beard, and got tattoos. To appear tough, thinks calling me a Barbie will hurt. As if. I laugh at the description, and so does Finn. She smiles at me. You must be Charity. I nod my head stupidly. I've been to her house, but we didn't meet. Yes, Blair? She nods. Yep, that's me. It's good to finally meet you. How is she nice? She should be vapid. I mean, by looks alone, she screams rich bitch. You too. You bring me presents? Logan asks. She shakes her head, her smile vibrant. No, these are for Princess Molly. I'm mailing them today. My chest squeezes tight, hearing her say my best friend's baby's name. Maya sent pictures to Finn's phone, but I haven't called Maya yet. They're for Molly? I ask. Blair looks back to me. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. I know zero about babies except that they make fucking adorable clothes for them. I smile. I really need to get them a gift. You want to go shopping? Because you can blow these guys off. No problem. I laugh and feel Finn's eyes encouraging me to do just that. I'm sure he thinks a day being a normal woman would be good for me. But I shake my head and politely decline. Oh, thank you, but I need to work. And I can't afford a cent. Well, I'm sleeping with one of the owners, so trust me, you can definitely skip out for a bit if I say so. I laugh and study her again. Is she for real? Before I can turn her down again, the door busts open with two people I don't recognize right away, but who seem to know Blair. 
The young girl with unruly curly hair walks straight to Blair. Blair, we need to talk. The guy looks a bit older than her and can barely stand up straight, clearly high out of his mind. Blair turns to look at him, hand on one hip. God damn it, Spencer, really? What the hell are you doing high and with my teenage daughter? Oh, that's right. That's Bree, Reese and Blair's adopted daughter. Blair, don't be too hard on him. Bree looks at her mother, pleading. Why are you with him and not in school? Bree glances at Spencer, who leans against the counter. Finn, Logan, and Christian are all poised and ready to come over, but stay put for now. He showed up at school high out of his mind. He needs help. He needs rehab. Blair glares over at Spencer. You went to her school? Are you fucking crazy? He just shakes his head in a daze. I don't know what I was thinking. How did you guys get here? She doesn't have a license. She looks at Bree. If you let him drive you like this, you're grounded for life. She shakes her head, giving her mother all the attitude right back, but somehow in a respectful way. Of course I didn't. I called Fletch. He dropped us off. Blair seems to accept her answer, and her eyes move to Spencer. Let's get you to your sponsor. He just nods, looking guilty and sick, something I'm used to feeling daily. He's a good-looking guy, but pale and tired-looking as his head droops, and he walks out the front door. Blair turns to me and huffs. Uh, you and I should catch up sometime soon. I nod my head, not expecting that to ever really happen. Of course, it was good to meet you. She smiles and waves a quick goodbye before gathering her bags and directing her daughter out. Finn finishes with his customer and walks him over to me to pay. When the customer is gone, I take the opportunity to ask him quietly. It was that. His expression is troubled. Spencer. He followed us from Nashville, too. Jace used to sponsor him. Jace is an addict? He shakes his head instantly. It's a long story, but not in the traditional sense. Still, he sponsors a lot of addicts. It keeps him sane somehow. A sense of dread fills me, thinking of Maya with an addict. But Finn and she seem to trust him wholeheartedly. So who's his sponsor now? Reese. He smiles when my eyes widen. It's hard to imagine Reese in charge of anyone else's sobriety. Wow. He nods like he gets it. He's a damn good sponsor. I'll get him fixed up. I saw the vacant look in the guy's eyes. I'm not so sure about that, but I don't say it. Of course, Reese might just kill him if he keeps sniffing around Bree. Yeah, what was that about? His large shoulders shrug. They're friends. He's twenty, she's fifteen. I don't think he'd cross that line. An involuntary shudder races through me. Thinking about that small girl being taken advantage of. No matter how tough she seems on the outside, I know it can happen. He must see the fear in my eyes because he leans in. Charity. Reese won't let anyone hurt her. I nod my head, trying to tell my brain she's safe. I'm sure. And Spence is a good guy. He wouldn't hurt her. My eyes meet his and I can't stop the tears. People thought that about Mr. Bradford. I watch his throat as he swallows tightly and breathes deeply. It's different, I promise. I know the kid and have for a long time. I nod and force a smile. Okay. One of the clients who's been waiting, a busty redhead with her hair pulled up, and fierce makeup stands up walking to the counter. She doesn't address me, though. Her pouty red lips poke out in Finn's direction. Finn, she whines. Are you gonna do me soon or what? Pretty sure that wording was intentional. And I have to fight away a growl. I want to rip her hair out. Which is beyond ridiculous. Finn just smiles, but it's different from the one he gives me, 
which leaves me feeling oddly content. Yeah, go sit. He gestures toward his station and she flounces off toward the chair. He turns to me. Repeat customer. I nod, not wanting to let on how jealous I feel, and that I'm wondering if she's been in his bed. That's nice. He leans down, his breath tickling my ear as he speaks. Boring. So fucking boring. You'll be the one on my mind the whole time. I suck in air, letting it fill my lungs. My body reacts to his words in close proximity. Although someday, I hope you'll let me mark you. I pull back and look into his eyes. You want to give me a tattoo? His eyes flash with desire as they scan my body slowly, and then he meets my eyes again. Yes. His tone is husky and full of want, making me almost forget how to breathe. I've never felt like this before, and I bite my bottom lip, giving him the slightest nod. I'd like that. He winks at me, standing to his full height. I'll hold you to it. I watch as he walks away, all confidence and grace as he does his job, looking bored with her and intrigued by me when he catches me watching. Finn is, no doubt, trouble. But for the first time in my life, it's the kind of trouble I badly want. Chapter 30 Charity. I hate the way I feel after a shift at the club. Dirty, vulnerable, vile. But Finn doesn't appear to see me that way. In fact, as soon as we get through the front door of his house, his arms wrap around my waist and he pulls me in. I've wanted to kiss you all damn day. I look up at him swallowing hard and trying to control my breathing. I feel safe in his arms. I want him to kiss me, but I'm afraid I'll freak out. Kiss me? It comes out weaker than I want, but he smiles confidently. Removing one hand from my hip, he brushes my hair to the side, sweeping his fingers through my hair. He leans in, his lips pressing hesitantly against mine. He waits. He doesn't coerce me into moving any further. I take a deep breath and bring my hand to the back of his head, pulling him to me and kissing him back. Slowly, he lets me take control. His lips move with mine, but he takes cues from me. I love how soft his hair feels, and that his lips are full yet masculine. I like that he tastes like salt from the pretzels at the club. I love everything about kissing Finn. And then, my heart starts to speed up, and I think about the businessman who slid his finger under my G-string under the guise of putting a 20 inside, but let his finger linger for far too long, and the man who licked my neck when I was giving him a lap dance of palms all over my bare ass. I, I gasp and my hands move to his chest, pressing him back. His eyes study me, and I see he looks concerned, not angry. Charity, it's me, it's okay. I close my eyes and take in a deep breath. But when I open my eyes, I back away, starting down the hall. How can he touch me? How can none of this bother him? He's just being nice. I make it to the bathroom, but he's right on my heels. Charity, talk to me. I shake my head and walk into the bathroom, stripping my tank top and bra off and tossing them to the floor. Charity, he sounds horrified. But words won't come to me to comfort him. I undo my jeans and push them down along with my panties and walk over to turn on the shower. I know I need to say something. My throat hurts when I swallow the words burning. I, I, I need a shower before you touch me. I have to wash them all away, Finn. 
his eyes flash with recognition. So many men have touched me, I'm dirty. He moves closer to me, and one hand moves to my hip. I don't pull away, even if I want to recoil from shame. His other hand cups the back of my head, tilting it to look into his beautiful eyes. You're not dirty. You're beautiful. And I wouldn't be able to keep my hands off you if you haven't bathed in days and after running a fucking marathon in the summer if you wanted me to. My nose scrunches up. That's disgusting. He chuckles and lands a soft kiss on my nose. Disgusting, but true. You aren't dirty. You're certainly not dirtier than me. He releases me, lifting his shirt off and over his head, and then going for the button on his jeans. Fen. He just smiles, and my eyes drag over his muscled, tattooed torso, rendering me silent. I can be very dirty. I swallow when he pushes his jeans and boxer briefs down, kicking them away. What are you doing? Not that I don't like the sight of him naked because, good lord, I can't even look further down than his stomach, and still my nerves have their hold on me. He pulls open the shower door, washing everything off me. I've had a lot of women touch me. He climbs in and is waiting for me to join him. I'm nervous. I'm not ready to try having sex, but I'm confident if I say stop, he will. I climb inside, relishing the warm shower spray. He grabs my pink washcloth, drizzling my pomegranate body wash over it and making it bubbly. He hands it to me. Wash it away. I smile and take it from him, but I don't attempt to wash. I don't think that's how it works. He eyes me carefully and then takes it from my hand, sliding the sudsy cloth over his carved pecs. There goes the time I found my mom's boyfriend sitting way too close to my then eleven-year-old sister, and then getting the hell beat out of me when I told him to fuck off. My eyes flutter closed, thinking of all the times my mother let me down. I open my eyes, and with a shaking hand, I take the cloth and wash my right arm from my bicep down to my wrist. What did you just wash away? I swallow a choked sob. The time Mom left me alone with Christian when I was four and he was one. She was gone for days. It was cold, but we huddled together. He nods slowly and holds out his hand. I hand him the washcloth, and he cleans his stomach, dangerously close to his nether region I still can't look at. That's when my chemistry teacher kissed me when I was in the eighth grade. I liked her. She was pretty but nearly thirty. And I just wanted someone who would act like an actual fucking mother for once. My eyes widen. She kissed you? She wanted more. I didn't. I stare at him appalled. He smiles, standing closer to me, dragging the cloth over my other arm. I'm sorry. I washed it away. His voice is husky. But he's only looking at my bare arm as he drags the bubbles over my flesh, cleansing me in so many ways. Now you. Tell me what we're washing away now. Another sob catches in my throat, but I don't cry. I look at his hand, dragging the cloth slowly over my arm. The first time he touched me. That very first touch that squashed any trace of innocence I had left. He nods his head, and I watch his chest inflate with air before he releases it. We stay like that for a moment. And then, he washes the back of his neck, his eyes never leaving me. The time Jace got into a terrible wreck and I was so pissed off at him because he was under the influence 
I abandoned him. I called him a junkie because of my hatred for my mother. But he wasn't? No. He was nothing like our mother's. He had a rough time and fucked up, but he wasn't an addict, and he needed me. He hands me the cloth and, with a pounding heart, I drag it over my breasts, pulling a quiet groan from him, one full of desire. But it doesn't cause me to flinch. His desire for me is beautiful, pure. The first night I was on my own, my voice shakes. But his hand moving to my hip adds comfort as he holds me upright. The man who offered me food and a place to stay in exchange for a blowjob. He looks pale as I move the cloth down my stomach and meet his gaze. I told him to fuck off. A smile tugs at his lips. Good. I wash lower and his eyes dip down. But three nights later, I was cold and hungry and desperate. His hand grasps my wrist, stopping my descent. That's their filth, not yours. They're the ones that should feel dirty. I agreed to it, Finn. His hand moves from my hip to my lower back as he pulls me closer, but not so close our fronts touch. They took advantage. They're the trash. You needed help. I move forward, tucking my arms between our bodies and lean my head against his wet, firm chest. I did. I really did. I know. I feel his hardness press against my stomach. But the embrace isn't sexual. It isn't threatening or scary. He just wraps his arms around me and holds me to him. You aren't dirty. You're beautiful. He repeats the words against my ear. I tilt my head to look at him and softly nip at his bottom lip with mine, needing to feel him. He smiles and kisses me deeply as the water pours over us, washing it all away. Chapter 31 Finn Morning Charity's big blue eyes peer up at me from her position, tucked into my side. I really like having her in my bed, even if we don't go further than kissing. I'm more than okay with that. She lets me kiss her often, and even initiates it now. She's starting to trust me more and more, and it's worth even the worst case of blue balls. Good morning, Finn. I have a dopey grin on my face, but again, I don't care. Let's talk money. Her eyebrow lifts in question. Money? Do I owe you for last night? My smile widens. Hmm. Eight hours of cuddling? Pretty steep. She laughs. <laughs> Put it on my tab. I hold her closer. I don't know, Charity. I'm pretty sure I owe you. The dreams you inspired last night. She slaps my bare chest playfully, and I just hold her tighter. Shut up. I nuzzle into her neck and breathe her in, not tiring of the fruity scent of her body wash. How are you on money? Really? She tenses and pulls back to look at me. I'm okay. I've made over two grand in a little over a week. I'm on track. I hate that she won't let me help her more. No lies. If you need help, you tell me. If you're going to be even a penny short, you tell me. She nods her head as her fingers slowly trace my side where ink swirls over every inch. I watch her as her eyes stay glued there. I like the way she looks at me. She doesn't seem afraid of me. And I see the desire there. Which is a relief because I'm definitely attracted to her. I won't lie to you again. Good. I lean forward and capture her mouth with mine, letting her take the lead after the initial connection, which is so not me. But all bets are off with her. She swings her leg over mine, straddling my waist 
and I try not to groan when I feel her pressed against my already awakened cock. She looks down into my eyes as I gaze up at her, letting her be in control. You're beautiful. Her eyes slide over my face and down to my chest and stomach. I grin. I think you mean handsome. She smiles but shakes her head, one hand sliding over the ink over my left back. No, I mean beautiful, in every way. My heart thunders under her hand, and I've never wanted anyone more. My body is hot, my breathing rapid, and my erection is raging below her. But I don't want to frighten her. I don't want to fuck this up. I reach one hand up letting it slide through her hair as I look into her eyes. So are you. I hate what I do for a living. I'm ashamed. Her hand slides down my middle, and I suck in a harsh breath the closer she gets to the hem of the sweats I wear to bed for. I hate you seeing that, but I love looking out into the crowd and locking eyes with you. That brings a smile to my face as she leans down, her full lips brushing over my collarbone. I'm a fucking stalker. My eyes never leave you. I feel her smiling as she drags her mouth over the skin of my right pack. I know. I like it. My hand is still in her hair, but I don't direct her movements. She does that all on her own, moving over to right above my heart and placing a slow kiss there. I've never felt safe in my life. The closest I've come is when I went to my field of wildflowers. She tilts her head to look at me. Until you. You make me feel safe. You're safe with me. It's a promise, and it's met with a kiss to my lips. One of her hands rests on my shoulder while the other one finds my free hand, locking our fingers together as we kiss. Her tongue sweeps into my mouth, and I groan at the contact, deepening the kiss. Her body presses against mine as she lies on top of me and I move the hand from her hair down to her waist, holding her small body to mine. My body's on fire, but I don't push for anything, not even when she grinds her core against me. I let her have free reign over my body, letting her explore and figure out what she likes, like she should have had with her prior sexual experiences but was robbed of. You're so perfect, Finn, she breathes in between kisses. I laugh. <laughs> Hardly. How can you be so patient? She pulls back enough to let me know this is a real question she wants an answer to. I know you well enough to know that you don't have to go without sex for this long. I let my hand smooth over her back. I don't know, Charity. I don't really think about it. That's half true. I think a lot about what it would be like to be inside her. But it's not just sex, in general. I want. It's her. I want every part of her. And it's worth the wait. She sits back, her ass resting on my thighs as her eyes drag lower and lower until they land on my crotch in the tint of my shorts. But you... your... Heart? I finish for her. Aroused? But yeah, I mean... She bites her bottom lip. This has to be killing you. Showering with me? Kissing me? Sleeping with me and not getting anything? I laugh, but not at her. It sounds like I've gotten to shower with you, kiss you, and sleep with you. She shakes her head, a small grin on her pretty face. You know what I mean. We'll work up to it. What if I can't? It's a quiet whisper, full of uncertainty. I pull her back to me, pressing a soft kiss to her lips. You can. It just takes time. She nods, her nose brushing mine. But then, she drags her lips over the hair along my jaw, down my neck into my chest. But this time, she doesn't stop. Her body moves further down mine as her lips drag over my flesh. She places a kiss on my hip and looks up at me while her fingers find the waistband of my shorts. What are you doing? Her teeth bite her bottom lip as she pulls, urging me to lift my hips, which I swear my body does automatically. 
She pulls my shorts all the way down and throws them away, leaving me in boxer briefs that hide very little. She slowly closes her eyes and then opens them, meeting my questioning gaze. You're beautiful, Fen. I can't let this all be one-sided. You don't owe me any favors. I watch her throat as she swallows hard, and then takes a deep breath before using trembling fingers to slide my briefs down, down, down. Her eyes stay on my underwear, though, and then quickly move back up to my face. Her fingers drag over my abs. I've never wanted to touch anyone before. I mean anyone, Fen. I nod my head stupidly, because I can't think when I'm naked under her and her hand trailing down my body. You don't have to touch me. That's not what I'm saying. Her eyes stay on mine. I'm saying, with you? Her eyes move to where her hand is touching me, trailing the light dusting of hair of my happy trail. I want to look, and I want to touch. I've never been this affected by anyone in my life. My heart speeds up as I try to control my breathing. I'm honestly afraid I might come just from her fucking looking at me. And stamina has never been my problem. I'm yours. You can do whatever you want. She bites her bottom lip again, and then her eyes move right to my dick, which is standing proud and fucking ready for her. She smiles as her hand moves hesitantly to my cock, wrapping around it, pulling an eager moan from my lips. The case of blue balls is going to suck this time, but I don't care. Her thumb sweeps the bead of pre-cum from the tip of my dick in the silver piercing I've had for years. You let someone put a needle through your dick? I laugh and nod. <laughs> I did. It hurt like a motherfucker. Then why did you do it? I shrug. I don't mind a little pain, especially when it adds to the pleasure. She's studying the piercing and must have decided she likes it, because she grins, moving her finger over it again, eliciting a hiss from me. She looks alarmed. Does that hurt? I shake my head. No, it feels good. Everything you do feels good. Her eyes shine with pride and she smiles. The thoughts running through her mind are apparent when I look at her. She scoots down further, and before I can say another word, she leans forward and places a kiss on the tip of my cock. Fuck. I wasn't expecting that, but she doesn't stop. Her tongue slides over the tip, exploring my piercing and causing my head to lean back into the pillow. I need to tell her she can stop, that we can go slower. But then she takes the head in her mouth, teasing, tasting, and driving my body crazy. She uses one hand to grip my shaft, stroking me slowly as her other hand rests on my abs. Her mouth, warm and wet, feels fucking incredible as she takes me inside. Charity, I gasp. You don't have to do this. She's still gripping me as she licks along my dick and then swirls her tongue over the tip nearly making me lose it, before she removes her mouth looking up at me. That's why I want to do this. I'm a grown man. I can take care of it myself. I look down at her, my cock ready to revolt, but pushing through because she needs to know this. You don't have to do this. I'm not going anywhere. She smiles and is genuine. I want to take care of you. She doesn't give me any more time to argue, taking my cock back into her mouth and stroking me with her hand at the same time. It feels way too fucking good. My hand slides into her hair, not directing her, but relishing every lick and suck of her mouth. Oh, fuck. That feels good. I feel her smiling around my swollen dick as she takes more of me into her mouth nearly gagging when it hits the back of her throat. But she doesn't stop. She continues to work me, and I feel that familiar tingling in my spine as my body tenses. Charity, I'm going to come. I barely get the words out, but she doesn't pull away. 
She sucks harder until euphoria hits and cum spurts from my dick into her mouth. She doesn't stop, though. Licking, sucking, wringing me dry and blowing my mind. It's never been that good. Not with anyone. She pushes her hair out of her eyes and climbs up my body to lie tucked into my side, looking vulnerable and so goddamn pretty. Was it okay? My laugh, unable to help it, my body shaking hers. <laughs> it was fucking great, but I don't want you to think you owe me anything. I wanted to, Finn. It looks like she wants to say more, but she thinks better of it and kisses my shoulder. Normally, I'd return the favor, but I know she doesn't want me to touch her yet. So, I offer her the only thing I can. You're perfect. You have to know that. She sighs, her eyes closing as she rests against me. <sighs> I'm starting to believe that to you, I am. That makes me smile, because she's right. In my eyes, she is perfection. Chapter 32 Finn So, how's it going? I look over at Logan, knowing he means with charity specifically. And more than likely, he's asking because his wife wanted him to. It's good. Yeah? I'm cleaning up my station as Charity takes a payment from my customer. Yeah, I grin. What does Quinn really want to know? He chuckles easily. <laughs> that you're keeping your hands to yourself. My eyes drift to Charity, and I smile, thinking about the blowjob before work today. I am. He rolls his eyes and punches me in the arm. That was not subtle in the slightest. I grin. It wasn't supposed to be. We're adults. He nods. Yeah, I told her that. He shrugs. And to be honest, I've seen the way you look at her, man. I know you won't hurt her. Never. I meet his eyes and make that known. I register that Reese is also watching from his station as he works on a customer's bicep. Logan nods. I know. I've never seen you like this. I smile, but it fades when I see Charity walking toward the break room where I know Christian is. I think I'll take a break before I take the next client. He nods, looking up at the bench, silently agreeing to take the client waiting. I follow Charity and stop when I hear her voice. I'm sorry, Christian. Don't fucking apologize to me. I stand in the doorway a few feet behind Charity but my hackles rise when Christian climbs off the couch and walks to her. You work here, and there's nothing I can do about that, but I don't want any part of knowing you. I don't blame you. I hate how guilty she sounds, how much guilt she swims in daily, but Christian doesn't seem to give a fuck. I don't care if you do or not. I don't want you around me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear your fucking lies. None of it. Stay away from me, Charity. I watch her small shoulders slump and her head nod before she turns away from him. Her eyes pass over me quickly before she leaves the room, and I glare at Christian. He glares right back, unafraid, cold, angry. Why do you have to be so hard on her? He scoffs and shakes his head at me. <laughs> Just because you're deep in my sister's pussy night after night doesn't mean you have to fall for her bullshit. He shrugs his shoulders as my fists clench at my sides. Or maybe you do, but I don't. I know her. My jaw ticks and I take a step closer. She's a victim too. He laughs, but it's cold as he steps closer to me. I know that. I had a ringside seat to that shit. I watched him hold her down and listen to her cries. I move closer. And you still hate her? I hate the image. I hate what they've been through. And I can barely see through the red. She heard mine too. She watched too. His feet touch mine as they glare at each other. And then, she fucking left. She didn't want to leave you. She fucking did. His voice is eerily calm. But I see the betrayal he feels. She wanted him. He scoffs again. <laughs> we don't know what love is. 
because we mimic and we do it well. Charity and me, we were taught by the absolute best. And you're a fucking fool if you're falling for it. That's not true. I might take a step back, knowing I can't put a hand on it. Charity will never forgive me. It is. He's sure of himself and doesn't bother adding anything before walking out of the break room, brushing past Reese, who I'm sure about most of our obligation. I'm sorry, my friend. Knowing he doesn't want any conflict in the shop. I don't like how he treats her either. He wants to stand directly in front of me. But he's been through a lot. So is she. My girlfriend clenches teeth because my girl hasn't had anyone stick up for her in her entire goddamn life. And it's bullshit. She left. I cock my head to the side in confusion. You blame her? He shakes his head. No, I don't. I left too. But she left him there, and we can't know how he feels about that. He seems so fucking normal, Reese. Happy, even. His nod is subtle. I think the truly dangerous ones are the ones who can hide the pain so deeply. So, you're saying I need to worry about this kid? He folds his arms over his chest and shakes his head. No, he won't hurt anyone. I have my eye on him. But you can't force him to forgive Charity. I'm irritated, but I don't argue. He leaves the room, and I get myself together before going back out. Charity is at the front, doing her best to keep the smile on her face. Fuck this. I look over at Logan. I'm going to lunch. He gives me a nod as I move to Charity. Let's go. Go where? She looks up at me, uncertain. To lunch. I holler over to Logan. I'm taking charity. We'll be back in an hour. He waves me off, and I reach my hand out for her. She takes it hesitantly, but I can see the unshed tears in her eyes. She needs a break. We walk outside, and I tuck her to my side. You okay? You can't always rescue me, you know. I laugh as we walk down the sidewalk to one of my favorite delis. <laughs> Says who? She shakes her head. I don't know how I can ever make it up to him. I don't think you can, Charity. I think he just wants to stay angry. Sometimes that's easier than letting it go. She nods. I love him. I shouldn't have left. You didn't have a choice. You know that. What were you supposed to do? Stay there and let him continue raping you long after you became a legal adult? She stops walking, and I know I probably went too far. But she doesn't yell or push me away. I knew what was going to happen to him. That would have happened regardless of you being there or not. But I left him alone. To try to help him. I reach for her chin and tip it up where it belongs, not pointing down toward the ground. You'll never convince me you did a bad thing. You wanted to save him. The world let you both down. Her lip quivers, and the tears in her eyes grow larger as I pull her to me and hold her, letting her cry. Wishing I could take this all away from her. But for now, all I can do is hold her. Chapter 33 Charity Finn follows me to the bathroom, our new routine after we get back from the club. We strip and climb underneath the falling water of the shower, both of us letting our bodies become drenched. The water falls over his glorious body, each drop sliding over the dips and valleys of his sculpted muscles. I don't look away. I want to see him. All of him. Christian's words stung today, but Finn's helped to heal. I'll always feel guilty about leaving Christian behind, but Finn? He sees deeper inside me than anyone else. His arms provide a comfort I never thought I'd have. I lower my eyes, scanning over his cock that's only half erect and already impressive, and oh, so enticing. 
I never thought I'd enjoy looking at any naked man. But Finn? I could stare at him forever. I watch as he grows harder, his dick standing at attention, thick and long, pierced at the end. I smile at the memory of licking it, liking the feel of the cold metal against my tongue and absolutely loving the sounds he made. I did that. I made him lose control. I loved it. Though I'm still cautious, still guarded. And deep down, I know he deserves better than that. He deserves a girl who will drop to her knees and worship him for treating her like a queen. But the hesitance is forever in my heart, and I grab the washcloth applying the body wash. He moves closer to me, taking both my hands in his between our naked bodies. What are we washing away tonight? I look up into his gorgeous eyes and smile shaking my head. I don't think there's anything left. He quirks one eyebrow in a playful question. Nothing. I shake my head. No, I'm not ready to wash away the guilt about Christian. I think he deserves to hate me. He wants to argue, but doesn't. And nothing else seems to matter as much anymore. He smiles taking one hand and cupping the back of my neck, pulling my lips to his. I accept his kiss wholeheartedly, letting our bodies rest against each other's and sinking deep into this kiss with a man I never saw coming, but can't imagine never knowing. He doesn't push me to do anything more than kiss. He never does. But I meant what I said. He'll grow tired of it someday. It's in the back of my mind as we kiss. He must sense my hesitance because he pulls back, his eyes searching mine. You okay? I nod slowly. I am. Don't lie. He stands with his hand cupping the back of my neck. Our bodies pressed so close that I feel every inch of his hard body against mine. It's the same old thing, Finn. I'm worried you'll get bored with me. That I'm too much. How can I help with that? You can't. It's just ingrained in me. He takes the washcloth from my hand and drags it over my stomach. My eyes track the movement as he slides it over my arms and then my collarbone. Then he moves it over my heart, between my breasts. Wash it away. Don't listen to that nagging voice inside telling you you aren't good enough. He grabs my hand, placing it over his heart, both of us holding on to the washcloth. Listen to me telling you that you are everything to me. And that's just from a short time of knowing you, Charity. It only grows every single day. Our hands stay over his heart. As I rest the other one on his shoulder, leaning into him and looking up. Do you know what that inner voice is saying right now? He shakes his head slowly. No. It says, I think I'm in love with you. His eyes widen, but slowly a slow grin spreads on his handsome face. I don't add that it's also screaming that he can never love me back. I know I'm in love with you. He laughs almost to himself. I gave Jace so much shit over how fast he fell for Maya, but there's no question I love you. My heart feels like it's going to beat right out of my chest as I try to remain calm and not get too excited. I never thought anyone would say that to me, and I'd believe it. But looking into his eyes right now, I do. I believe him. Well, that's terrifying. He chuckles again and shakes his head, pressing a kiss to my lips. It doesn't have to be. It is, though, Finn. Really. He nods. We finish the shower in silence before climbing out and drying off. We get dressed. Him in sweats, me in shorts and a tank before going to bed. He tugs my body to his under the covers. Everything else will fall into place. I'm still in a lot of debt. I'm a stripper. 
I look up at him, my cheeks heating from my shame. I... you what? He brushes his hand over my cheek, his eyes patient and kind with a glimmer of the cocky asshole I first met and desired just as much. I'm afraid. His eyes darken with worry. Of? Everything? That I'll ruin it? That when we have sex, I'll freak out? He's thinking it over for what feels like forever. Have you ever had sex when you wanted it? Not in exchange for anything, but sex that you wanted just because. My heart beats faster as I think about his question. Once? He's interested in the answer. He was cute and seemed nice. But in the middle of it, I close my eyes not wanting to live any second of my past. There's really no good in doing that. I force myself to open my eyes and look at him, grounding myself. I just checked out. I went to my field of flowers and just let him finish. He doesn't look shocked, and just brushes his fingertips over my collarbone where my wildflower tattoo sits. So then, no. I shake my head. I did want him, I thought. I just, I huff. It wasn't his fault. He shakes his head in disagreement. He should have noticed you weren't there with him and fucking stopped. Who the hell wants to fuck someone who doesn't want them? I smile, unable to help it. Pretty sure most guys just want to get off. He scoffs. Nah, orgasms are great, but if you aren't making your partner scream, what the hell's the point? I stiffen and his look changes to one of concern. My cheeks flame with shame as he studies me. What? That's important to you? I hate that look on his face. The one that says he's infiltrating my mind right now. Making my partner come too? I nod stupidly. Yes, that's important? Of course it is. I only grow more tense, and of course he notices. What's wrong, Charity? I swallow tightly and take a deep breath. Finn, I told you my body doesn't work like everyone else's when it comes to sex. I am... You've been traumatized. I told you we'll go slow. I shake my head. No, I mean, I can't. I feel like an idiot as one of his eyebrows lifts. He watches me intently, waiting for me to finish. I can't come. He cocks his head to the side, brushing my wet hair behind my shoulder. Charity. His voice is a low whisper, and I know he thinks I'm crazy. I can't, Finn. I never have. Not once. He doesn't look all that surprised. Orgasm is just as much mental as physical, especially for women. He grins. Okay, probably a lot more so for women than men, but if you weren't connected and in the moment, then of course you didn't come. I look away from him, ashamed and horrified even though I trust him more than anyone. I've tried it myself a few times. Nothing happens, Finn. I hate sex. He holds my face in his palms in the calming way only he can, and looks directly at me. Were you all in your head, even then with yourself? I nod. I'll make sure that when we're together, you're right there with me. And when you're not, I'll stop. And if I don't, fucking tell me so I do. I shake my head, taking his hands with it. No. Yes. No, I can't keep taking pleasure from you. You deserve better. When we fuck, it's you and me, or it's nothing. No in-between. I want you right there with me, or I want to be wherever you are. A tear slides down my cheek, and I lean in and kiss him. How the hell did I luck into finding Finn? Chapter 34 Charity Come on, you, me, lunch. I look up at Blair. 
uncertain who the hell she's talking to, and then realize it's me. What? She laughs easily. I told you we have to have lunch sometime. Yeah. I was hoping that was something people just say. Um, now? She looks around the shop that only has Finn, Reese, and Christian working at the moment and only has two clients. Yes, come on, no time like the present. And these guys can handle things for a little bit. Finn grins at me from across the room, giving me an encouraging smile. You girls have fun. Women, asshole. We're women. Blair holds her middle finger up as I follow her toward the door. Finn just chuckles and waves at me before I follow her out. I guess we're going to lunch. We walk a little way to a cute restaurant, and after ordering our food, it seems Blair is ready to talk. So, we can totally small talk about the weather and the shop, or we can get right down to it. I stare at her, unnerved and unsure what she's talking about. Get down to... what? How are you and Finn? What? I barely breathe the question. Finn and I have said we love each other, but haven't talked about it to anyone that I know of. She rolls her eyes with a bright smile. Come on, you guys are totally a thing. Are you okay? I know you've had it rough. I feel a sinking in my stomach. Knowing she might know just how bad I had it with her being married to Reese. I'm... One of her eyebrows lifts. You can talk to me. You really can. I know Finn is a good guy. He is. But he's also a guy. Sometimes a woman needs a woman to talk to. I bite my bottom lip, studying her and wondering how she can just say things without a care. I, am. Um, how did you end up with Reese? She laughs at that, carefree again. <laughs> I uh, pretty much forced him into it. I cocked my head to the side, trying to figure this human out, and she laughs again. We hooked up at a party, but it was different than it ever had been with anyone else. I'm not sure how much she's willing to share about Reese. I'm also not sure how much I want to know. But somehow she makes me feel oddly at ease. Different? She nods, taking a sip of water and placing the glass back on the table. Yeah, he couldn't stand to be touched, which made sex fucking interesting. My mouth gapes open. How can she talk about this? Oh, good job, Charity. She offers a kind smile now. Ah, we figured it out. How? I can't believe I asked that. I'm sorry, that's, that's too personal. She brushes it off. No, it's not. I mean, Reese probably wouldn't like me going into too much detail, or he'd say he didn't want that, but to help you... I guarantee he'd be okay with this conversation. I'm at war with my own demons, as usual. I want to be able to have sex with Finn. I don't want my past holding me back, but the other part of me just wants it all buried. How did you get through his issues of not wanting to be touched? Slowly, we took our time and figured out what he could handle. It's still a battle, Charity, every day. Well, that's terrible. It is? She nods. Of course, he went through horrific things. Her eyes tell me she knows I did too. But she doesn't say it or ask about it. I love him. And I think I did from the moment I realized he was different. You must have the patience of a saint. She cackles at that and shakes her head. Oh, no. I have the least patience of anyone in the world. The smallest thing can set me off, but for Reese? God, I would do anything for that man. And he'd do the same for me. I nod, thinking it over. Finn, I clear my throat, my emotions bubbling so high to the surface. I love him, and he told me he loves me too. You don't think he does? I shrug. I don't know, I mean, I take a breath. I think he does now, but it has to get old. We haven't, I cleared my throat, and fidget in my seat. 
We, we haven't had sex. She looks slightly surprised, but not judgmental. You haven't? I shake my head. No. And how long can a guy really go without? You'd be surprised. She smiles sweetly. Do you want to have sex with him? I do, but I don't know if I can. Fuck my existence. I hate that this is even a thing. She thinks it over as the waitress brings our food over, then leaves. Do you trust him? I nod my head without a second to think because there's no one I trust more. Yes. Good. That's what you need. Trust. Love. You'll be fine. Just take it slow and do exactly what your heart wants. What about my body and my mind? Does your mind say to fuck him? I'm starting to like how direct she is. Yes, I want to. I want everything with him. She takes a bite of her salad and chews. Good. She takes a drink of water. Then do it, on your terms, the way you need it. Tell him exactly what you need and it'll be okay. Shouldn't it be for him too? She half laughs. I mean, he'll be getting laid, he'll be happy. And more than that, I've seen the way he looks at you. He'll have you and that's what he needs. That's for him. How do you do it, Blair? Don't you get tired of it? Of loving someone so damaged? Her expression is completely serious now. No, never. She takes a breath and smiles. Ah, I get tired of his socks on the floor and forgetting to put his dish in the dishwasher, but of him? Never. I love him. And that's forever. Wow. I just mean, I feel stupid but push through. I'm a lot of work, and Finn, he seems hell-bent to take me on. Good. Love should be work, and it is, no matter what. Finn loves you, and you love him, that's it. That's all that matters. And when you're together, I bet all the other shit melts away. It does. That's all you need. But you have to let him love you. Can I? Chapter 35 Fen. So how much does she owe? I'm surprised by Reese's question. And automatically look over at Christian, who's taking over for charity while she's at lunch with Blair. This why Blair took Charity to lunch? So you could grill me? He doesn't smile. The fucker just stands there with his arms folded and expression stoic. How much? I don't think she'd want me to tell you. That's not what I asked. Reese. Finn. He drops his arms and moves closer to me and the client I'm currently working on. I want to know. I don't want to betray Charity in any way, but fuck. I want to help her. It's a lot. A lot like ten grand? More. He scrubs a hand over his jaw. How much? I need to know. She won't let us pay it for her. I didn't ask that. About five times that. Fuck. I nod my head as I finish up with my client. Yep. Blair wants to pay it. Charity won't let her. I'm working on it, though. The sooner she's debt-free, the better. But with charity, I know it has to be handled delicately. So, we won't leave it up to her. Just let me handle it, Reese. His eyes are trying to bore through me, but I'm focusing on my client at the moment. I'm serious. Let me handle it. If you guys need help, you need to come to me. He looks troubled, like he doesn't want to speak anymore, but then forces himself to. Quinn mentioned you send money back to your sisters. A lot. Half my paycheck since I can remember. But I'm not comfortable with anyone knowing that. What does that have to do with anything? It means you might not have enough. And I need your word that you'll reach out if you need help. I look up at him, thinking about how adamant I was with Charity about the same thing. And how Reese seems to know that we're a we. You have my word. He grunts and walks away, grabbing the attention of the next client. I go on about my day, happy when I see Charity walk in with Blair, both with big smiles on their faces. This should be her normal. 
Her good mood carries over even to the strip club, where I watch her through the crowd of horny men with her head lifted high and her eyes on me. I smile when she makes her way over to me. Dancing and placing one hand on my knee, she speaks against my ear. You look tired, handsome. Never, I growl, and I feel her lips pull up in a smile. You know you don't have to stay. I pull back so I can look into her eyes. I'm not going anywhere. She drags one hand over the curves of her breasts, and I keep my eyes on her face, enjoying the show in my peripheral vision. I know, and I like having you here, but you working all day and then coming here? Exactly like you do, except I get to just sit and watch. She leans back in, her lips against my earlobe. I can't wait until my shift is over, Finn. And what are we going to do after our shift? I like this flirty side of charity, because it isn't the fake forced version the clients get. I definitely need a shower. I could go for a shower. Her hands rest on my shoulders now as she looks into my eyes. But I want more than just a shower. Her body trembles against mine and I see the flash of fear in her eyes. I lean into her, inhaling her sweet perfume as I place a chaste kiss over her collarbone. You're saying you want me to kiss you. I want more than a kiss. I hear the conviction in her words, but her body gives her away. She's frightened, and I fucking hate that anyone put that fear in her. We can see where you want to go when we get home. She pulls away to look in my eyes now. I know that's what I want. I don't want to make you wait anymore. You don't need to worry about me. I hate the pressure she feels. The pressure I know she feels to be normal, whatever the fuck that is. You worry about me. I smile, holding onto her hips even though it's technically not allowed. I've seen men do far worse here. I do. She takes a deep breath. So let me worry about you. Her eyes slide down to my crotch. I want every part of you, Fen. And I want to give you every part of me. Charity always starts a war within me. That internal struggle between being a good man and giving in to the caveman inside, who wants to throw her over my shoulder, drag her home and show her just how bad I can be. But I need her safe. Inside and out. I'll take whatever you can give me. When you're ready. My tug her closer. Don't force it. She looks slightly hurt, her bottom lip poking out. You don't want me? I drag my thumb over her protruding lip. I want you. Never doubt that. I want you so bad it hurts. I smile. Literally. She looks down at my lap giggling freely as she bites her bottom lip. <laughs> I can't imagine how blue your balls must be. I laugh and shake my head, placing a kiss on her lips. <laughs> You're worth it. You're worth everything. And I'll do everything I can to show you that. I want to try, Finn. The conviction in her eyes sends my heart rate soaring, and my dick twitches beneath her, thinking about the promise of later. I'm losing this battle. Chapter 36 Charity I stare into the foggy mirror in the bathroom, naked and shaking, as I hold myself up on the porcelain counter. You can do this. I told Finn I wanted more than a kiss, and I meant it. But my body has been thrumming with nerves ever since. Really, since my lunch date with Blair, when I decided I needed to try. I know he'll never hurt me. I know he loves me and I love him, that I'm safe. But my body doesn't seem to know that. We came home and took a shower together. But he was careful with me. Like he was afraid to touch me. Like I might explode into tears at any moment and he's right. He senses my hesitance and I hate that. Why can't I just... Fuck my insanely hot, sweet, perfect boyfriend. 
After our shower, he went to his room, giving me a moment. But I've been standing here for far too long. Trying to talk my dumbass mind and body into having sex with Finn. Finn. A guy any woman would want. Tall, handsome, tattooed, bearded, muscled Finn. I groan audibly and tilt my head back, looking up at the ceiling, wanting to scream. Charity. Damn it. I turn around and see Finn standing in the doorway of the bathroom. He's wearing sweatpants and a concerned look. I can't do this. I barely recognize my own voice. With everyone else, I can force myself to sound strong. But not with him. With him, my fears are in my shaking voice and I can't hide them. He walks inside, placing his hands on my shoulders and looking into my eyes, not down at my naked body. You don't have to do anything. My bottom lip quivers as it pokes out. But I want to. I wrap my hands around his waist and pull him to me, resting my face on his warm bare chest. I want to so badly, I want to feel your touch. I want to touch you. I look up at him. I hate him. I hate him for taking everything away from me. I watch his jaw tick. And I know he's trying to think of the right thing to say. Something so thin. I hate him too. His hand brushes over my wet hair. But he didn't take everything. You're still here. And you're mine now. I like the possessive and sure sound of his voice. I am. He smiles and dips down to take my mouth with his kissing me softly, asking permission that I grant by deepening the kiss and wrapping my arms around his neck, crushing my bare breasts against his flesh and moaning softly into his mouth because it feels good. I love you, Charity. We'll work it out. Trust me. I nod my head into another kiss, and then another as we move toward his bed. I love him. It's okay. I try to give myself a pep talk because I want this so desperately. I lie down on the bed, and his knees rest between my naked thighs as he leans down and ravishes my mouth. I feel his hunger for me, but I also feel his love. His mouth slides over my jaw and down my neck, sucking hard and making me writhe under him. His hard body feels so good on top of me. I don't feel trapped or scared. My mind is curious with where he's going, and I'm excited to find out. You're in control, Charity. His eyes flare with want and desire as he looks up at me. I'm under your control. You want me to stop. Say stop. I nod my head, my fingers in his thick hair. I don't want you to stop. I love the feeling of his beard on the sensitive flesh of my neck, dragging slowly over my skin as his firm, soft lips kiss and suck. I can feel how hard he is between my legs, but he doesn't thrust against me. He takes his time trailing kisses over my wildflower tattoo, then moving to my other collarbone before finding his way to my breasts. Your perfect charity. I laugh at that. Nerves beginning to get to me, but my nipples are puckered with arousal waiting for his next move. Most guys say that when they see my tits. He doesn't let my nerves mess with him, though. There's a feral growl from his throat as his tongue darts out, swirling over my hardened nub. Mine. He wraps his lips around my nipple and sucks hard, making my back arch, encouraging him. Yes. I feel him smile as he moves to my other breast, repeating the action as my hands grip his hair. You're perfect. He whispers as he teases my nipple with his teeth. Every part of you. 
I feel myself growing wet from his words and his mouth. But the nerves are still there as he trails down over my stomach, his tongue dragging over my heated skin. Finn, I'm ready. I want you to take me. His head shakes as he lowers his mouth to my hip, nipping slightly. You're not even close, Charity. If we're doing this, we're taking our time. I swallow hard, a gulp of fear escaping as he looks up at me, searching for it. I know if I seem too afraid, he'll stop. I don't want that. Okay. He kisses my left hip. I want to mark this beautiful skin soon. I smile. I'll gladly be your canvas. I feel him smile as he finds the small tattoo on my thigh, nipping. Only mine. No more of this amateur shit. That pulls a laugh from me. <laughs> Jealous? Absolutely. I smile. And don't tell him it was an amateur who did both of my tattoos. Or that it was actually Fiona. Who aspires to be a tattoo artist someday. I like Jealous Finn. Good. He chuckles against the inside of my thigh, and I try my best to breathe deep, hating that my body is starting to revolt. I feel the familiar feeling threatening to drag me away. I don't want to think about anything but Finn. Finn, I, I want you inside me, I say panicked. You'll have me. He settles between my legs, his eyes trained on the most intimate part of me but I'm going to make you come first, at least once. He nips on one of the outer lips. It's gentle and rough all at once. Maybe twice, because I'm not sure I'll ever tire of this sweet pussy. I groan from anticipation and fear. There's no way I'm going to come. My body is fucked up, but I don't want to ruin this. Then let's just have sex. His eyes darken with question, but then he shakes his head, his tongue darting out and dragging from the bottom of my pussy to my clit, a clit that should be tingling with need. But I don't feel anything, because my body is so messed up. Finn, you're what, Charity? Just stay here with me. I want to. I want to so damn badly. He swirls over my clit, his hands on my thighs as he spreads me open for him. I'm wet. I can feel my arousal mixed with the wetness from his tongue, but I'm stiff and afraid. I don't want the memories of Mr. Bradford coming back. Of him hitting me when I wouldn't come for him. Of his going down on me and trying every trick in the book to get my body to betray me. It never did. I went to another place in my mind, and he couldn't touch me there. I feel his finger enter me and clench around him, pulling a sexy groan from him. I want to be right here with him. I want my body to belong to him, but I'm terrified. F Finn? My voice trembles and he looks up at me. Stop. He looks slightly concerned now as he does exactly that. He stops licking me and pulls his finger from me, instantly making me feel empty as he moves up to look in my eyes. What's wrong? I can't do this. I, I, I can't. He nods his head, one hand resting on my cheek as the other is planted in the bed to keep his weight off me. Okay, it's okay. It's too much too fast. I shake my head and try like hell to calm myself. But my heart is racing, and my breathing is rapid. No, it's not. I just... I can't. You've been so patient with me. You're a goddamn saint. He looks troubled. No, I'm not. I'm just decent. Don't applaud people for doing the decent thing. I shake my head. No, you're so much better than decent. You're everything. His thumb sweeps over my lips. You're my everything. I'm sorry if I pressured you. You didn't. I try to look away. But it's impossible with his hand holding onto the side of my face. I just can't come. It's not going to happen. I just got started, Charity. I placed one hand over his. I have no doubt that you're extremely skilled. This isn't about my ego. He looks almost offended. 
and I lean up to kiss him softly. I know that. He sighs deeply, and I feel his hardness pressed against my thigh from under his sweatpants. I will make you come when you're ready. I smile sadly. I'm sorry. Don't ever be sorry. He grins. I had fun. I laugh. You're still hard as hell and didn't get any relief. His lips pressed against mine with a sexy smile. You taste so fucking good. I nearly came from licking you. A tingle spreads through my body and I love the way that feels. You're filthy. He laughs and then rolls onto his back and off me. You have no idea. My eyes land on the impressive tent in his sweatpants. His eyes follow mine. It'll go down. I shake my head and turn to my side to face him. I don't want it to. His head swivels to look at me with confusion. I thought you wanted to stop. Don't force yourself to do anything for me. I'm not. I reach into the waistband of his sweats and boxer briefs, grasping his hard cock and wrapping my hand around it. I want you. I watch his chest rise and fall, his lips parting as he breathes heavily while I stroke him. I need to make you come. I shake my head. It's not going to happen, but I want this inside me. He looks so damn conflicted. I... His hand wraps around my wrist and halts my movement. No, look, you wanted me to stop. You're just doing this for me. I know he wants me to be honest, and that's the only way we're going to get through this. I was afraid when you were between my legs, then we shouldn't do it. No. My thumb runs over the slick tip of his engorged cock, and he groans softly. I want to, but I'm afraid. I'm petrified. His hand cups the side of my face. Then we shouldn't. I'm always going to be afraid, Finn. But it doesn't mean I don't want to. I just, I, I can't come. I don't want you to waste time on that. I want you inside me before I totally freak out. You might like it more if you come. I feel shame burning inside me. I train my body not to. I think I broke myself, but it doesn't mean it didn't feel good. You feel so damn good, Finn. I pull my hand out of his pants and urge him to climb back onto my body, which he does, kissing me. I push his sweats and boxers down, and with his help, we toss them off the bed, leaving us both naked. I feel his hardness between my thighs, but he doesn't thrust inside me like I want. I spread my legs, letting him rest fully between them. I want you inside me, Finn. Don't stop. I don't want you to be afraid. I think I always will be. But I want this so damn badly. It felt good, Finn. Your mouth on me, your lips, your tongue. I nip on his bottom lip. It all felt good. I want it to be fucking amazing. I think I just need to do this. I know that's not fair to you, but it's going to take time. He nods his head looking down between my legs and then up at me. You have to promise you'll stay right with me. If your body says no, make sure your mouth does too. Tell me to stop. I shake my head. I don't want you to stop. Charity. It's a firm warning. I won't do this until you're right there with me. And you're honest with me the entire time. I will not cry with him naked on top of me. Okay. He starts to climb off me and I hold on to his shoulders. Don't go. He smiles. I'm just getting a condom. No. He raises an eyebrow. What? I have an IUD and I was tested six months ago. I haven't had sex since then. I just want you. Nothing between us. Please tell me you're clean. His expression is serious. I've never had sex without a condom. I'm clean. I nod. Good. I don't want to feel anything but you. 
we don't have to rush this. I nearly laugh at the thought. You're the most patient man I've ever met. I want this, but please. I take a deep breath and look in his eyes. Please, don't try to make me come. Charity. He sounds desperate. I know that goes against everything you know, but please. I can't take disappointing him. He nods and leans in to kiss me. I let him, kissing him back as I reach between us, placing his cock at my entrance, and bucking my hips up to encourage him to move before I lose my nerve. He kisses me deeper and slides into me, the head of his cock stretching me already, and we both moan. I love you. I smile into our kiss as I spread my legs further, ready to accommodate him. He presses forward more and I arch my back, loving the feeling of him inside me. I nibble on his lip and suck on his tongue, begging him to keep going. I don't want the memories to overtake me. I want to be right here with him. When he's fully seated inside me, he pulls away from my mouth and rests his forehead against mine. You feel so fucking good. So do you, I swallow, knowing he needs encouragement. I love having your big dick filling me. His eyes meet mine now, looking suspicious. Only honesty. How are you really feeling? I hate when he calls me out, but I love it too. Scared? I grab one of his firm ass cheeks with my hand, not letting him pull away. But it's a good scared. I want this. He nods and I shift slightly, still getting used to his size, stretching me. Does it hurt? I shake my head but see the question in his gaze. It's not horrible. Charity. The warning in his tone makes me smile. It hurts a little. You're not exactly small. He smiles at that. No guy hates to hear that. He pulls out, making me whimper but then flips us so I'm on top. His back is against the headboard and I'm in his lap. You take control. Take my cock as deep as you want me. Set the pace. God, he's sexy. I nod my head and settle over his dick, sliding down slowly. Both of us moan as he fills me. My head leans forward against his as he wraps his strong arms around me. Thank you. His mouth finds mine as I ride him slowly taking him deeper and deeper with each slide down. His piercing hits the perfect spot inside me each time and brings my body pleasure with each slow stroke. Fuck, this is unlike anything I've ever felt before. You feel so fucking good, Charity. I moan into his mouth, loving the feeling, hating that I won't be able to experience an orgasm with him but loving every time his cock twitches inside me. Loving every single groan and soft moan of pleasure. It feels good. So good. Are you sure you don't want me to try, Charity? I feel like I'm going to explode. I kiss him softly. Mm, come inside me, Finn. I want nothing more than that. I move my hips faster as he strokes the skin of my back. I want to feel it. God, Charity. He rasps as his mouth finds my throat licking and sucking. I moan, and it's real. I'm surprised by how good it feels. It's never felt like this. Are you close, Finn? Close to coming deep inside me? Fuck, you're driving me insane. Let go, Finn. I know he's trying to hold on for me. I feel how tense he is with the need to come. I'll wait for you. I shake my head, loving the scratchy feeling of his beard on my neck. Come, I want you to come inside me. I want to feel you lose control inside my body. I want you. His entire body stiffens and his cock jerks inside me. As I feel his release and move with him, not giving him a second of reprieve, I ride out his orgasm and feel every single ripple of his desire through my entire body. Fuck, he breathes as he kisses me. It's never been that good, ever. You feel so fucking good. I love you, Finn. It's never felt like that for me either, ever. 
He kisses my swollen lips as our sweaty bodies rest against each other, and we lie with me wrapped in his arms. That was everything I could have wanted. Chapter 37 Fen I stroke Charity's bare side and stare at her face that looks so serenely peaceful as she sleeps. She's so beautiful. I've never felt anything better than being inside her. But everything in me was screaming to stop and take it slow. Make her come. Make her feel that insane bursting feeling from the inside out. Help her fall in love with that feeling. Still, something told me that what we did last night was exactly what she needed to move forward. I want to free her from this prison. I don't even have close to fifty grand saved, but I need to find a way to get her out of that situation sooner rather than later. I don't think she'll be truly free until she no longer owes anyone. Charity, my whisper against her ear, hating to wake her, but there's something I need to do. Her eyes slowly open, taking me in before a smile spreads across her face. Finn, let's get ready. She pulls the covers up over her naked breasts, her nose scrunched in confusion. Is it time for work already? I hate to take an hour away from her already lacking sleep schedule. Not yet. I want to get there before everyone else. She cocks her head to the side curiously. Why? I push the comforter down, moving to kiss her left hip. I want to mark this beautiful canvas. I look up at her with an arched eyebrow. I was told it's mine. She smiles brightly at that and nods her head. It is. Every part of me is yours. I smile and move up to her beautiful face, pulling her into a kiss and lifting her so her thighs straddle my waist. Are you okay today? She looks down at me, her hair messy and falling around her face. I'm more than okay. Last night was wonderful. My grin, but it's only halfway. I know it couldn't have been that great for her if she didn't come. It'll get better and better. She smiles, letting her finger drag lazily over my pack and then my nipple. I think we should try again. Her grin turns devilish as she slides down, letting her pussy drag over my hardening cock. I groan, enjoying the sensation and glad I feel her arousal slick against my dick. Don't tempt me, Charity. I'm good with temptation. I smile, looking at her beautiful face, clear of makeup with a grin on her pouty lips. Yes, yes you are. I grab her hips wanting nothing more than to sink inside her. But I hate that it'll only be my pleasure. Let's shower. She looks slightly disappointed. I lean up and give her a quick kiss before lifting her off me and climbing off the bed, taking her hand. She follows reluctantly to the bathroom where I start the shower. We climb in under the hot spray of water. I watch as she faces the other way, letting it pour over her face. I move behind her, my dick still wide awake and aware of her. You're beautiful. She sighs and turns to face me. But you don't want me again this morning. There's a question in her statement. I always want you. I was giving you the go-ahead. This is going to be hard to navigate. I don't want her to do too much too fast. I wanted to take it. Her bottom lip pouts slightly. I almost tease her about that, but stop myself, knowing she needs to be reassured. Then why didn't you? Did I do something wrong? No. I grasp her hips and pull her body closer to mine. Everything you did was perfect. I've never felt anything better than being inside you. She looks so damn nervous and unsure, and all I want to do is kiss that look away. Then why didn't you want it again? I take a deep breath and kiss her softly, letting one of my hands drift to her hair. I did. I do. I just don't want to rush you. I'm not going anywhere. 
ever. I don't want you to get bored. I almost laugh again, but don't. I'll never tire of you. Never. The hand on her hip moves between her legs as I cup her. This is mine. If it were up to me, this is where I'd spend every waking moment. She smiles, rolling her eyes as I kiss her, letting one finger trail through her wet folds, wet from the shower and wet from arousal. You think your body is broken, but you're wet for me. She places her head against my chest and nods. Yes? And you'll come for me, too. I felt you around my cock last night. I felt how wet you were just for me. How your warm pussy clenched around my dick with each thrust. Soon, you'll be convulsing around it, losing yourself to orgasm after orgasm. I move to her clit. It's swollen and slick with her wetness. I want to, Fen. I know. My mouth takes hers as I kiss and play with her clit, begging her to let go for me, to get out of her head and just enjoy. I feel her body relaxing against me and hear her breathing speeding up as her hips move with my hand. Just let go. She pinches her eyes closed tight, and I think for a moment I have her here with me. But then they open and she gasps, pushing my hand away. I can't. Fuck. She places her hand over her heart and looks close to panicking. I pull her close to me, holding her in my arms and kissing the top of her head. We'll get there. If we don't, will you stay? That's still a question for her. Forever. I tilt her face up, forcing her to look at me as I repeat. Forever. She nods and I hug her again before we finish our shower, getting dressed and driving to the shop. I unlock it and flick on the lights, pointing to my station. You ready for this? She nods, looking sure, which pulls a smile from me. She sits down in the chair. Where are you going to mark me? I walk over to her, pushing her skirt up over the left side of her hip dragging my hand over her thigh. Right here. She nods her head in approval. I get my station ready and then pull out the sketch I've been working on since she told me about her safe place. I hand it to her and see tears well in her eyes as she studies the intricate array of wildflowers I want to place on her flesh to remind her how safe she is. It's beautiful. Her eyes shine with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. I lay a kiss on her lips. She smiles, dismissing my thanks because she doesn't realize how much she's done for me. I get to work on our tattoo, wanting to finish it before the shop opens but taking my time. I want it perfect for her. When I finish, she stares down at the piece and takes a deep breath. Wow, Finn. Better than that fucking amateur? I can't hide my jealousy, even though the two tattoos she has aren't bad at all. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. She leans forward, taking my face in her hands and kissing me. I love you, Finn. I love you, Charity. You're safe. She nods and smiles. I know. And in that moment, it seems like she believes it. Chapter 38 Charity I stretch my arms and smile as I finish the book I was reading, and then walk out of Finn's room. I had the day off from the shop today, which was insisted on by Reese, Logan, Quinn, Blair, and Finn, because they're all wonderfully annoying. But now Finn is at work. I still have to work at the club tonight, but I can't say I hated sleeping in and reading. I miss him, though. I go from carefree and happy to gasping in fear when I'm grabbed from behind and shoved against the wall. I know this isn't Finn even before the men come into view. Pete. And one of his goons. But it's Pete who has me pressed up against the wall in the hallway of Finn's house. Did I not set the alarm when I went out for a walk earlier? Shit. 
What do you want? I still have a week. He chuckles darkly. His eyes look black in the dim hallway. It's evening. Almost time for Finn to be home. I don't know if it would be better for him to be here for this or not. I don't want him hurt. Oh, you do. But considering your last payment was short, I thought we'd give you a little warning. No flowers this time? Shut up, Charity. His hand moves to my throat, wrapping around it and squeezing. Since you stupidly fucked us over on the last payment, I thought an in-person discussion was necessary to let you know I'm not fucking around. How did I let this happen? I was happy, feeling safe, secure, stupid. It was so fucking stupid. What if they kill Finn? The flowers were scary enough. Thankfully, I keep my mouth shut. I'll have the full amount this time. Oh, yeah? I nod my head, breathing hard and hating Pete's touch. I will. His other hand drags from the hem of my shorts under the tank top I'm wearing. He strokes over my bare stomach. I tremble, not from arousal but from sheer terror. I don't want him touching me, my entire body shaking with fear. You haven't called this number. He's losing his mind with desperation, obsessed with getting a piece of your sweet ass. Pete brushes his lips over mine, and I want to puke. Even tripled his offer. I threw the business card away. I'll never offer my body for money or security ever again. I don't need it. He should move on. He chuckles cruelly and his hand finds my bare breast, sweeping his thumb over my nipple. I struggle against him wanting to get away, but he only pins me tighter to the wall. I personally think he's crazy for the record. He eyes me coldly. I wouldn't pay more than five hundred a night with you. I lift my chin a little higher, despite him still holding on to my throat. And yet you were willing to forgive the debt for me to be your little plaything. That was to own you. He pokes his bottom lip out slightly and shrugs like he's thinking something over. But now I don't want you. I've moved on and found someone younger, who's a hell of a lot less trouble. Now, I just want my goddamn money to be done with you. I swallow, the motion restricted by his hand. So then, leave me alone. He squeezes harder. Not until I get my money. All of it. It will be paid. He releases his hold, leaving me gasping, but his large body still has me trapped. You're just like her. I freeze knowing he's talking about my mother. No, I'm not. His nose touches mine as he bares his teeth and growls. You are, and if I ever see her again, she's dead, whether you pay me back or not. I know he means it. My mother stole from him. A man like him won't let that go. And in the back of my mind, I know she isn't smart enough to stay away. I'll pay her debt, but then you'll never see me again. Have fun with your new toy. He smirks and it's hateful. Oh, believe me, I do. She's not nearly as much work as you are. No games with her. You exhaust everyone you've ever known. I try to make my face impassive, but I hate that statement. I know it's true. One week charity. Don't fuck with me this time. All of it. I nod my head slowly. I'll have it. He pushes away. If not, I'll be back. 
and your little boyfriend won't be able to do a damn thing about it. My eyes close as I struggle to breathe. He knows about Finn. Of course he does. He's in his house. They leave, and I don't bother locking the door behind them. Because what's the point? I'm never truly safe. I never have been. And now, all I've done is put everyone I care about in danger. I'm a lot of work. I try to tell Finn. I stalk slowly toward the bathroom and strip, turning on the shower and climbing in. I'm numb. So numb. I can't escape who I am at my core. A troubled girl who only attracts more trouble. Chapter 39 Finn I'm in a pretty good mood after work, even though I'd prefer Charity had been there with me. I'm happy she got the day off. The girl never stops. Seeing her curled up in my bed with a book before I left made me feel like I was finally able to give her something. Something good. I go to unlock the front door, but when there's no resistance, my hackles rise. Why the fuck is the door unlocked? I rush into the house. Charity? No answer. Fuck. I hear the shower running, though, and move quickly to the back of the house. Pushing the bathroom door open, I see her. My heart thunders in my chest as I approach and see her tucked into the corner of the shower on the floor. Her knees pulled up to her chest, and her head tucked down. I reach into the shower through the freezing water and turn it off. Charity, what's wrong? She lifts her head. Her lips are blue from the cold, and I can tell she's shaking. I grab a towel and wrap it around her before lifting her in my arms and carrying her to my room. Please talk to me. Her small body is pressed against my chest as I sit on the bed, holding her to me. How long were you in there? She doesn't answer me, just leans her head against my chest while she shakes. From fear or the cold, I'm not sure and it fills me with alarm. I just hold her to me, wanting to demand answers, but with charity, I know I need to give her time. After what feels like hours but has only been minutes, her eyes meet mine, and she finally speaks. P -p pete was here. What? I gasp, rage and fright swallowing me. When? Did he hurt you? God damn it. I knew I shouldn't leave her here alone. Why the hell did I do that? Inside, I'm screaming, but I don't want to scare her anymore and keep it contained. No, it was just another warning. That motherfucker. I'm going to kill him. I'm so sorry, Charity. Fuck. She flinches, and I rub her back slowly, trying to rein in my anger. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. She shakes her head reaching her cold hand out of the towel and brushing it over my bearded cheek. I'm an adult. You can't drag me along with you all the time. I'm here to protect you. She shakes her head sadly and drops her hand. No, you aren't. All I do is bring trouble, Finn. I told you, you should run. I'm not fucking running, I growl. And maybe it's too harsh, but she needs to know. I'm not going anywhere. You're stubborn. I snort. <laughs> Look who's talking. I take her hand, trying to warm her. It's never going to stop. And I know you have an overwhelming need to protect, to save the unsavable, which is what makes us a match made in hell. You're wrong. You aren't my hell. You fucking saved me. She laughs, which sounds almost hysterical. <laughs> saved you? Are you crazy? I think we might need to have you evaluated. I've been nothing but trouble. I like trouble. I kiss her cold nose, irritated and frustrated, but so damn relieved she's okay, and thinking she's so fucking cute. I love you. Her eyes meet mine with tears. I love you too, but I pity you for loving me. Don't ever fucking do that. I want you, Charity. If I didn't, believe me, I'd have been gone long ago. 
She cocks her head to the side, unbelieving. It's true. You think other women aren't trouble? That there aren't plenty of women who want to be rescued? That I haven't met them before? I've met plenty of women who wanted someone to take care of them, and got pissed when I didn't play their game. Not like me. I smile, because that's exactly my point. She doesn't want someone to take care of her. And I don't want a weak woman who thinks she can play helpless, flash a smile, and get what she wants. I don't want anyone like my mother. You're right. They're nothing like you. They want to play games. They were boring. And I wasn't interested. You aren't playing a game. You just want to be loved. And God damn it, you deserve that. She sobbed softly. <laughs> You're completely serious, aren't you? Of course I am. I'll take care of you as much as I can, but at the end of the day, Charity, you're the one who's done it all. You're strong, beyond strong, and it only makes me want you more. She finally smiles. I'm strong. You are. I kiss her lips, feeling how cold they are. You're the strongest woman I know, and it's hot as hell. He said he didn't want me anymore. Pete. That motherfucker. Good. I growl, and know I sound like a possessive asshole as I hug her closer to me. He can't have you. You're mine. She smiles again and kisses my lips. I'm yours. Forever. I hug her small body and scan her pretty face, looking for injuries but trying not to be obvious. Did he hurt you? She shakes her head fiercely. No. Did he touch you? She keeps her head high. He did, but I'm okay. I'm okay. She repeats it again, telling herself more than me. I kiss her again, happy she's starting to warm up. She turns so she's straddling my lap and deepens the kiss, which I'm all too happy to accept. I let my body relax, knowing she's safe and in my arms right where she belongs. Her hands find the button on my jeans, and I groan when she undoes it and unzips my zipper. We don't have to do this. You've had a pretty fucked up day. Finn? She says against my lips. Yes? Shut up. She breathes and then smiles into a kiss. I do what I'm told as her towel falls away and she lifts my shirt over my head. She pushes my jeans and briefs down quickly leaving us both naked and wanting. Let me make you come, my whisper in her ear. She stills, her breasts pressed against my chest and shakes her head. I can't, Finn. You can. She pulls back, her hands on my shoulders. I can't. I just want you. I know she thinks she physically can't orgasm. I know she's afraid of somehow disappointing me. Which is so fucked up, because nothing she does could do that. But I don't push her. Are you wet for me? She smiles, knowing I'm giving her a reprieve. She slides along the outside of my cock, letting her arousal coat my length and answering my question. God, yes. I want you. My nip on her bottom lip. Take me. She grins a feisty, sexy smile that sets my soul on fire and reaches between us to position me at her entrance. She slides over my cock, and we both groan, our foreheads touching as we look down to where we're connected. You feel so good. I love having you inside me. I grasp her hips but let her lead our movements. Good, because I would live there if I could. She smiles at the repeat of my sentiments from our shower. I think I'd let you, but I do have a debt to pay, so I have to work. Not forever. She smiles, tipping her head back and riding me, getting lost in the moment. It's beautiful to watch, even if I know her mind isn't completely free. Not yet. I plan to fix that, though. Even if she gets angry with me, she'll forgive me. Chapter 40. Finn. That should be all of it. 
Pete, the smug motherfucker, looks up from his desk, his eyes cold and calculating as he assesses me. His men didn't want to let me in, but I refused to take no for an answer. This needs to end, and right now. They were in my house. They touched my girl. And it ends today. What, did you rob a bank? Hardly. More like they robbed me. But the interest wasn't too high thanks to Reese and Blair co-signing for the loan. Might have preferred to do it on my own. But my mother wrecked my credit a long time ago. Does it matter? He raises an eyebrow. You poor motherfucker. You fell for her big eyes, huh? Or was it something else? He leans forward. I never did get a taste of that sweet cunt. My hands ball at my sides, but I'm aware of the two big-ass roided-out dickheads standing guard next to me. You never will. He just chuckles and shakes his head. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, there was a time I wanted a taste but I never wanted to pay that much for it. I heard you were willing to pay fifty grand. He laughs at that. <laughs> to me, that's nothing. His eyes scan over me as he sits in his fancy three-piece suit. He looks at my t-shirt and ripped jeans with disgust. I'm guessing to you, it's everything and more. I don't tell him she's my everything. Guys like him, you don't show all your cards to. You're even now. I even threw in a little extra for interest. Now leave her the fuck alone. He stands, placing his hands on the desk in front of him. Or, or deal with me. I step closer to the desk. I have some pretty ruthless friends of my own. He sneers. The debt's paid. That's all I care about. Good. I start toward the door and then turn around again. And leave Christian the fuck alone, too. I'm not a huge fan of the kid after the way he's treated Charity. But she loves him, and I love her. At that, he snorts and takes a seat behind his desk. <laughs> that little fucker. I should hire him. He beat the hell out of my men. When they were trying to kill him. It's not a question, because I know he's talking about when Christian was defending himself. He waves me off. Stay away from both of them. Trust me, those kids aren't worth the trouble. No warning about their mother. I have no sympathy for their mom. None. Charity and Christian aren't responsible for her debts, ever again. Deal with her however you need to, but leave them out of it. I don't wait for a response. I grab the door, pull it open, and leave. I drive back to St. Louis, my hands gripping the steering wheel tightly the whole way, because I know Charity is going to be pissed. She has pride, probably too much of it, and she won't like that I did this, but I couldn't stand it anymore. I can't have this hanging over our heads. She's at the club working as we speak with Rice, Blair, and Logan there to keep watch. Am I thrilled that Reese and Logan are seeing more of her than any of us would like? No, but it was necessary. I waited an hour before slipping out and letting them take over. By the time I reach St. Louis, her shift is over. Blair texted me, letting me know they're at my house with charity. I pull into the garage and then walk inside, and am met immediately by charity, her eyes blazing with anger and her little fists at her sides. Where were you? See you later, man. I look at Logan, who's waving goodbye with Blair and Reese and heading out the front door. I thank them quickly before they close the door and then regard Charity. Let's talk. She doesn't move, her gaze full of fire. I went to see Pete. Now she looks terrified. Why? Because we can't live like this. I can't have the threat of them hurting you anymore. I place my hands on her small trembling shoulders. I love you. I can't lose you. I could have lost you today, going there. Do you know what those men are capable of? That's only when they aren't getting paid. She gawks at me. 
You paid them? I nod. Everything. Her jaw drops and then snaps shut. Her anger is back tenfold now. Everything? How? How did you do that? I know you help out your mom and your sisters. Quinn told me. I nod. Yeah, my mom's liver failing has really fucked me over. And she used my social to fuck my credit a long time ago. Not to mention Paisley's rehab stents. I have nothing to hide from her. So how did you pay my debt? A loan. A legit loan through a bank. She throws her hands up in the air and stalks angrily into the living room with me following. She plops down on the couch and glares at me. How? If your credit is fucked. Blair. She's furious. No way around it. What? You asked Blair? I barely know her. I know. She and Reese co-signed. But it's in my name. I'm responsible for the payments. She jumps up and stalks over to me. And if I fuck you over? Huh? If I just pack up and leave tonight? Then what? A smile tugs at my lips. But I don't go through with the motion. Not yet. You won't leave. Oh, no? No. I'm trained to leave. I left Christian. Guilt swims in her eyes, and I grasp her hips with my hands, tugging her toward me. You are coming back. She glares at me with defiance. What if this is what I wanted all along, huh? She bites her bottom lip and flips her hair, batting her eyelashes at me in an over-the-top dramatic way. Maybe I played you. I think about Pete's words and, hell, even Christian's. But I still know without a doubt I'm the one that's right about her. You didn't. You're not that good of an actress. She scoffs. <laughs> Bullshit. I was trained by the best. You've seen me on stage, Finn. I'm good. You're fucking phenomenal. I lean in, my lips whispering against hers. With everyone but me. I watch her slender throat as she swallows and then huffs, shoving me away from her. Ugh, you could have talked to me. Could I? We both know she wouldn't have allowed it. I'm pissed off. As you should be. I went behind your back. She folds her arms over her waist and flinches slightly, because her ribs are still sometimes tender. Yes, you did. I did. And I do it again. You're an asshole. I chuckle and walk to her, kissing her nose and not moving away. <laughs> I am. But I'm yours. I lay a quick kiss on her mouth. Be mad as long as you need to. But then, forgive me. Because I love you. We owe the bank. Reasonable payments. Once a month for five years. And we'll pay it. She looks helpless, most certainly at war with herself. But she doesn't let me off the hook. I smile because I didn't expect her to right away. She makes me work for it. And I fucking love that about her. Chapter 41 Charity He paid my debt? How could he do that? He knew I wouldn't be okay with it. And the arrogant ass knew I'd forgive him. I'm angry because he didn't know what Pete would do to him and he went anyway. I didn't sleep in his bed last night. I slept in the guest room, which felt all wrong, empty and cold. I missed everything about sleeping next to him. And when we silently had coffee this morning in the kitchen, he knew it. It was obvious by his smug grin. The ass. He asked if I wanted to take a shower with him and received an icy glare before he laughed and walked his fine ass down the hallway, unbothered. I glare after him and then grab his cell phone off the coffee table and dial Maya for a video call. After only one ring, I see her beautiful, smiling face. Charity! I smile at her, missing my best friend so damn much. Hi. Her voice is quieter now as she aims the camera toward her chest showing off her sleeping gorgeous infant, and then brings it back to her. I guess I should be quiet. I'm sorry. 
I hope I don't wake her. She waves me off. Ah, she's milk drunk. No worries. What are you doing? Are you okay? Is Finn being an ass? I laugh, unable to repress my grin. Yes, he is. And I'm okay. I think. Worry floods her features, and I feel like the ass now. What's wrong? I owed a lot of money, Maya. She purses her lips, indicating she knows everything. Your mother did. Your worthless, selfish, horrid mother. I was paying it. You're not now? I shrug my shoulders, pouting and being ridiculous. Finn got a loan and paid it. Damn, she grins. He must actually love you. I thought he was just playing grab ass. I roll my eyes but smile. So you've all been gossiping about me. She laughs easily. Of course. You know Quinn and Blair have big mouths and I call the check-in often. Did you really think I wouldn't? I knew she would. I'm pissed. Can't you be pissed with me? The true friend she is, she writes her face into a playful, angry scowl. Oh, um, right. What an asshole. Paying off your debt and keeping you from having to sell your body to pay a debt you never should have had to pay for in the first place. I'll cut his balls off next time I see him. My eyes roll again. Thanks, I deadpan. Chuckling, she says, Charity, believe me. I know more than anyone that accepting help is hard, but damn it, he loves you. Finn, he's complicated, but he's a good man. I didn't see it at first, but he is. He's an ass, she laughs. That too, but seriously, why are you so upset? He didn't tell me, he just did it. And he could have been hurt. She nods in understanding. But he wasn't. He was trying to make sure you weren't hurt. You already knew about this, didn't you? A wicked smile tells me she did. I love you. If he didn't want to, he wouldn't have done it. It's a fucking stupid myth that women can use their wiles to make a man do anything she wants. At the end of the day, they do exactly what they want. If he did that, it's because he loves you. I love him too, I whisper and she smiles. You deserve good things, Charity. I know you don't think you do, but you do. I wipe away a tear. Thank you. Go forgive your man and fucking call me sometime. Not just when you're mad, but like any time. I'm here. I smile sadly. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. She waves it off. We all have our storms. I smile, and we hang up. I place his phone on the table and walk toward Finn's room. Seeing the bathroom is empty, I go into his room, smiling when he turns around to look at me, wearing only a white towel around his waist. You forgive me yet? I put my hands on my hips and shake my head. No. He narrows his eyes and moves closer to me. No. I shake my head from side to side trying to remain serious. You shouldn't have gone behind my back. Maybe. I lift an eyebrow, annoyed, and simultaneously turned on by his smug behavior. Maybe. His hands plant over mine on my hips. Maybe. I know you're stubborn. You wouldn't have let it happen. The loan is manageable now. You can pay it with just our salary from the shop. And nothing else? Right? I mean, the loan has to have a massive payment, and I know you have other obligations. His lips nibble on my neck, and I try damn hard not to let my head tilt to the side to grant him better access. You're not an obligation. This loan is. It's nothing. I could pay it on my own and be just fine. But you won't let me do that, so... You cover the loan by working at the shop, and I've got us on everything else. Us. God. I hate that I love that word. Finn, don't fight it. Some things, yeah. You should fight, but not me. I lose the battle and my head lulls to the side, letting him nip and kiss my neck. 
I can't let you do this. You don't have to take care of me. It's done. His mouth makes its way to my lips, but he doesn't kiss me. There's no going back, and I don't want to. You take care of me, and I'll take care of you. I can keep stripping and paid off faster. His eyes darken as his hands slide to the hem of my tank top. You can strip for me, but no one else. I glare at him but don't resist him when he pulls the shirt over my head, leaving me naked from the waist up. Caveman. He growls and it's sexy and feral, a total turn-on. That's right. His hands cover my breasts as his thumbs sweep over my nipples. Mine. Only fucking mine. So now you own me? His eyes meet mine. You certainly own me. My heart flutters, and I'm flooded with emotion because I know this is real. I know he loves me. I also knew if I wanted to strip, he wouldn't say anything, but he knows I hate it. I don't want to strip for anyone else. I shove him, and his ass hits the bed. But he only grins at me with that sexy, self-assured look I hate to love. I know, and you won't. I slowly untie the drawstring of my shorts, teasing him and eating up the way he's staring at me. Lust and desire. But there's love there, too. Admiration. I only want you, Finn. You have me. I watch his Adam's apple bob in his throat as he watches me with hungry eyes, and I shimmy out of my shorts, kicking them to the side, leaving me only in a hot pink thong. Was it my eyes? I bat my lashes at him playfully, over-the-top stripper cheesy. He nods his head. Yes. I'm surprised because I thought he'd argue. So? I nod my head and move closer to him and bring my hands up to my hair, letting my fingers slide through my blonde locks as I move my hips and stand between my parted thighs. And my hair? He nods, grinning. Your hair is pretty sexy. I lean in, pressing my bare breasts against his chest. And my tits? They always get attention. His hands cup my breasts, and he nods, his head smiling up at me. They are really fucking nice. I smile and then swat his hands away. No touching, only looking. His eyes flash. I'm going to do a hell of a lot more than touching. I shake my head at him, playfully chastising him. Nope, you can look. I step back and turn around, flashing my ass before slipping out of my thong. My ass. You definitely like my ass. I do. His breathing has increased, and I know he's turned on, and so am I. I can feel the wetness pooling between my thighs, and feel so damn relieved that I can get wet for him. I want him, and I'm glad my body is on board. I turn back around and yelp when he pulls me to him by my hip, startling me. Finn, I love all those things. His hand covers my heart with his hand. I love everything, though. I love this fucking heart. The heart that made you do everything you could to get back to your brother. I wince. I failed. He shakes his head. You're here. And now, this heart allows you to love me. To let me in. I nod. You're definitely in my heart. I narrow my eyes. You bastard. He smiles and kisses my lips softly. These fucking lips. God damn, I love these lips. When you kiss me, I know we'll be okay. I never believed in that shit before until you kissed me. I nod, my head knowing exactly what he means. Your lips make me feel safe. Every part of you does. You're safe with me, no matter what. I nod my head and wipe away a tear. This was supposed to be sexy. He flips us so I'm on my back, and he moves to the floor, jerking my body to the edge of the bed 
as he stares right between my bare thighs. Oh, it's definitely sexy. Finn. I start to wiggle away, but his big hand plasters itself over my belly and holds me in place. Stop fighting it. You're fucking stubborn. I get it. I roll my eyes, sitting up to look at him kneeling down before me. It won't work. Not if you think that. Stay right here with me. You're free, Charity. You can do whatever you fucking want to. Because my boyfriend paid off my debt like I'm a stupid damsel in distress? He nips my inner thigh, and I hiss. You're not stupid, and you're no damsel. I flip him off, resting on my elbows and watching him. It won't work, and it's going to hurt your ego. He nips the sensitive flesh of my inner thigh again. My ego is huge like the rest of me. You can't do any damage. I'm breathing heavy as he moves to my other thigh and trails his tongue along my tattoo. You're wet. You want me. And you want to come. I do. I desperately do. I can't. Stop saying that. You can do anything. He runs his tongue along my drenched slit, and I moan softly, wanting so badly to just let go and give in to him, but I'm afraid. Finn, stop. I love your wildflowers, Charity. I love it so much I spent hours sketching them to mark them on your body. But with me, you don't need them. You need to stay right here, with me. He looks up at me with determination from between my parted thighs. How does this feel? His tongue darts out and lashes my clit and I gasp. Uh, good? I feel him smile against me as he licks me again, teasing the swollen nub. Stay right here with me. I look down at him, watching him worship my clit with his tongue and feeling myself growing wetter. God, he's good at this. Finn. That's right. It's me, Finn, enjoying your soaked pussy. You taste so fucking good. I moan softly, one of my hands reaching forward and grasping his hair. It feels so good. He punishes my clit with his tongue as he slides one finger inside me. That's because it's me. Don't you fucking dare go anywhere. He looks up at me. This is you and me. I'm going to lick you until you come on my tongue. And then I'm going to fuck you until you're coming around my cock. Oh, God, yes. I gasp as his mouth meets my clit and he sucks hard. My elbow gives out and I lay back on the bed, my other hand in his hair as he laps at me with precision. I don't think I can do this but I want to stay right here with Finn. Instead of focusing on the past, I concentrate on what his tongue and finger are doing to me. He curls his finger and finds a place inside that nearly makes my ass lift completely off the bed. Finn, come for me, Charity. I want to. He slides another finger inside me, stretching me in a delicious way as he teases my clit, and I stay right with him focusing on his sweet punishment and loving every second, and then it happens. My mind is clear as my thighs quiver, and I feel a tingling sensation unlike anything I've ever felt. My thighs try to close, but he uses his free hand to push them down, leaving me spread open for him as I quake with euphoria and grasp his hair pulling. Finn? He moans against my pussy as it clenches around his finger and I get lost in my first orgasm that rips through my body. He licks and sucks at an unforgiving pace, making me scream his name again until it's too much, and I push his head away. He's grinning with pride as he removes his fingers and stands, ripping his towel away and showing me that gorgeous, hard, pierced cock that's ready for me. I love being right. You're an ass. He crawls on the bed and over my body and brushes my mouth with his. An ass you love. I nod my head and lean up, pressing a kiss to his mouth. Yes? 
He presses into me, stretching me, and I writhe with need under him. After a few deep punishing strokes and hitting my G-spot with that fucking piercing that drives me wild, he changes positions, letting me ride him. You're always in control. Always. I nod my head, riding his cock. My pussy clenches around him every time the piercing hits me deep inside, as his hand moves to my clit, rubbing in small circles that makes me feel weak. Oh, God. I told you you're going to come around my cock. Yes. I move my hips faster, pushing us both toward an intense earth-shattering orgasm. When I hold on to his shoulders, digging in with my nails and squeezing around him, he knows I'm coming and must let go because I feel him spill inside me as he lets out a sexy roar and crushes his mouth to mine. When we're both spent, I lay on his chest and he strokes my hair. My tears wet on his chest, but he doesn't say anything about them. He doesn't brag anymore. He just holds me. Because that's just Finn. Annoyingly stubborn, cocky, perfect. Finn. Chapter 42 Finn I can't get enough of her. Feeling her finally come on my tongue and then around my cock were the best fucking moments of my life. I've never felt higher. And now, I'm determined to do it again and again. I knew she'd forgive me for going behind her back to pay the debt. It needed to be done, and I don't regret it. She quit the strip club that night. She'll never have to dance for anyone again. Because she doesn't want to. As far as I'm concerned, Charity can do anything she wants. Her body rides under mine with another orgasm as we lay on the couch, and I can't get enough. I want to wring every bit of pleasure I can from her body. Her pussy squeezes around my cock, trying to pull me into an orgasm. But I'm not through with her yet. I sit up, pulling her on my lap and not entering her and holding onto her hips. She huffs and kisses my lips. You didn't come. I'm not done. I growl against her lips. You might actually kill me, Finn. I chuckle as I enter her slowly. She grabs my shoulders, leaning her head back as she rides me, setting a seductively slow pace. She knows to take what she wants now. No dying, and just stay with me, Charity. Ride my cock and find the pleasure you deserve. I'm still careful to remind her how safe she is every time. I keep her right there with me as my hands move to her full breasts, teasing her nipples and making her groan. I never knew it could be this good. I grin as she leans forward, kissing me with hunger, moving her hips faster and faster chasing another orgasm. I don't think I'm the only one who's addicted. I'm close, she gasps, and I hear the surprise that's still there. She thought that first time was a fluke. Thankfully, I've been able to prove her wrong many times since then. Oh, Finn, she breathes, and I feel my orgasm threatening as my cock jerks inside her with an impending release. I sound as desperate as I feel. Come, Charity. I want to feel your pussy strangling my cock. Yes, she moans softly as I find her clit, barely brushing over it and sending her into ecstasy as she grips me, pushing me over the edge. We're both breathing heavily when her forehead rests against mine, and then her hands flatten against my chest. We're wrapped in a silent happiness, but then she laughs with my softening cock still inside her. <laughs> I love you. And I love you. She's still laughing, lost in the moment as she presses a kiss to my lips. I didn't think this would ever happen. I didn't either. I wrapped my arms around her. But now that I found you, I'm never letting you go. Is that so? Yes. The answer is easy. Charity is it for me. Good, because I'm not going anywhere. She kisses me again, and I can't get enough of that either. We're going to be late for work, 
I shrug. They'll forgive us. She becomes serious. Do you think he'll ever forgive me? Damn it. I wanted her happy. But I know she isn't going to be completely happy until her jackass brother will talk to her. I don't know. But it's really not on you, Charity. She nods sadly, and I grasp her chin before she can lower her head in shame. I love him. I hate the guilt. Maybe you should try to talk to him again. You think so? No, I think he's a stubborn jackass. He probably won't be nice, but maybe. I just want you to be happy. She smiles her brilliant smile, and my heart fucking soars. I know you do, and I am. But this is the missing piece for me. Everything is almost perfect. I could put him in a headlock until he agrees to forgive you. She laughs and swats my chest, making us both groan with loss when she slides off my lap. <laughs> Let's shower, and leave my brother alone. Fine. I stand smiling. Off her stands. Her smile is bright, and oh so real as she takes my hand and leads me to the back of the house. I have my girl, and whether he forgives her or not, I'll make damn sure she has a happy life. Chapter 43 Charity With Finn, I'm safe and happy. Everything feels like it's fallen into place. Some insane karmic destiny. It's as if he was always there waiting for me. He was always the answer to all my wishes. It's crazy. Not even the wildflowers compare to Finn. He kisses my hand as he moves to his station, and I head to the front desk to do my job. After checking in a couple of clients, I notice Christian walking into the break room and decide this is my chance. I have to try. And Finn must know because he gives me a nod of encouragement as I walk by. My heart is pounding in my chest so hard I swear I can hear it. But when I walk into the break room, I have to force myself to speak. Christian? Jesus, fuck. He turns around to face me, irritation written on his face. It's bad enough I have to see you every day. Now you're gonna stalk me every break. I'm not stalking you. I do walk closer to him, though. What do you call this? I want to talk to you. I barely recognize him. His cold demeanor is intimidating. I don't want to talk to you. I thought I made that clear. I tuck my hair behind my ear and try not to fidget. You did, but I have to try. Why? Because you're my brother and I love you. He looks like I burned him as he scoffs. Love. You don't know love. This time I hold my head high with my shoulders back. I do. You're wrong about that. I'm in love with Finn. I'm happy. Truly happy. He studies me, and I think he's going to say something nasty. In fact, I prepare myself for the barrage of horrible things he'll say, but he shocks me yet again. Good. Confused, I cock my head to the side. What? He sounded like he genuinely meant that. He moves closer to me, and I see he's struggling, nearly in agony as he approaches. I'm glad you're happy. I want you happy. I keep waiting for the catch, for him to say something awful. You do? He nods. Yes, you're my sister. You're my brother. I, I want you happy too. I. He holds up a hand, silencing me as I began to hope that maybe we could fix this. I just don't want to be around you. I don't want a constant fucking reminder of what happened to us. Do you know how fucking hard it is for me to look at you? Do you know what I see when I do? My body trembles as I look into his eyes, so full of sorrow and horror. And I know my face mirrors his as I nod, closing my eyes. Yes. So why? Why are you here? I open my eyes and stare into his. 
I miss you. He shakes his head slowly, still looking so pained. And I know I do that to him. The me you miss is gone. Just, he takes a step back from me. You work here fine. I have to see you, but I can't know you. I can't small talk with you and listen to how happy and in love you are. I can't. It's crippling charity. Tears well in my eyes. But I know what he means. I get it. He doesn't hate me. But he can't stand to be near me. I just need you to know I was coming back. His head hangs and nods as he lets out a frustrated breath. I know. I know you were. Our lives... They don't work like that. You didn't know, but I did. I'm so... Don't. He cuts me off. If you love me, if you really care, his eyes meet mine. Just stay away from me, please. He's pleading with me. His eyes even more so than his words, and I silently nod. He walks out of the break room. I take a seat on the couch tucking one leg under me and wiping away tears that finally fall. Soon, I hear footsteps, and then Finn's strong arms hug me to him. You want that headlock now? I smile and wipe away another tear. No, but I need something else. His brow furrows. What? Anything. I nibble on my bottom lip and push out a rattled, nervous breath. I need to move away from here. What? He only looks more worried now, and I reach up, brushing a hand over his cheek. Finn, I can't stay here. He looks nearly panicked, and I smile, shaking my head at him. I'm not going anywhere without you, you silly man. I want us to move. I see the relief wash over him and smile. I can't believe he doesn't know he's stuck with me now. Where? I shrug as we lean back against the couch. Well, I hear Tennessee is nice. And maybe a little warmer? A sly smile comes over his insanely handsome face. Tennessee, huh? I nod, but doubt takes over. I know you have a life here. And a home. House. I have a house. And I'll put it on the market tomorrow. I cup his face in my hands. You don't have to rearrange your life for me. He kisses my nose in that annoyingly sweet, reassuring way he always does. I was restless before I met you, but now all I want is to settle down. Jace is my brother. I'll be glad to be back in the same town as him. My heart races with excitement, thinking about living close to Maya again and seeing her every day. I miss Maya so much it hurts. I look through the break room doorway and watch Christian as he shadows Reese. And he needs to not see me all the time. Finn's features darken as he follows my gaze. You belong here if that's where you want. He can't force you. I direct his eyes back to me. He isn't. He asked me, in his own way. And he needs this. If I can do one thing to ease his pain, Finn, I have to. You sure? I nod my head assuredly. Yes, I miss Maya. I want to see her as a mother. The town they live in is small, away from the city. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I press a kiss to his lips. As long as you're there, that's where I'll be happy. Then let's get on this. I squeal in delight, free and happy truly happy for the first time in my life. Who knew that such a pain in the ass could be my happily ever after? Chapter 44 Charity Well, this is it. I look around and wonder as Maya shows me around her beautiful home. It's simple, clean, and utterly peaceful. We walk down the hallway toward the bedrooms. Wow, this is amazing. Her wide smile is so damn comforting as she pulls me in for a hug. I'm so happy you're here. 
It only took a month for us to pack up all our belongings, give our notice, and give blessings from Logan, Quinn, Blair, and Reese before we moved down to Tennessee. I am too. I pull back and look into her beautiful eyes. Are you sure it's okay for us to stay here? Especially with a new baby? Of course, are you kidding? I was thrilled to get your call. We walked into the first room, and I look at the adorable infant asleep in her crib as we look around the nursery. I can't believe you still put up with me after all this time. Molly is sleeping so peacefully, her little lips turned up in a small smile. Girl, we're friends for life. I told you that a long time ago. She did. I smile. Lots of people say that when they're young. She smiles, brushes her hand gently over her daughter's cheek, and then motions for me to follow her. We walk down the hall, past Jace's and her bedroom, to what I assume is the guest room. This is where you and Finn can stay for as long as you want. I look around at the tastefully decorated guest room. I don't know how to thank you. She takes a seat on the queen bed and pats the spot next to her. I take the hint and sit next to her. Knowing you're safe and happy is more than enough for me. That's all I want. I nod my head, tucking my hair behind my ear nervously. I'm so sorry about Trey. She winces but doesn't shy away from the topic. Me too. I think about him all the time. I can't believe he's gone. I see the pain written on her beautiful face, and I feel like an asshole for even bringing it up. I can't either. He was everything to me. She smiles sadly. You and me, we practically raised our brothers, and I felt like I failed them. I shake my head vehemently. No, you didn't. You did everything you could to protect him. He wasn't even your kid, but you were like his mother. And you tried to protect Christian. I flinch. A sickening feeling gnawing from the inside. I didn't tell him goodbye because I knew he didn't want to talk about it anymore. I gave him the only gift I could and avoided him until we left. I failed him pretty hard. Tears threaten to fall as I look into my best friend's eyes. I'm sorry it left. She shakes her head at me, cocking it to the side. No, don't do that. I knew then, and I really know now, that you did what you had to do, and I know it wasn't easy. I should have told you. So I could have tied your ass up and not let you leave? Because that's what I would have done. I laugh. And so does she, because we both know it's true. I love you. I love you, too. And I'm so glad you're here. She stands. Want to take a walk? I nod. And she manages to place the sleeping Molly in her stroller, shielding her from the sun without waking her before we walk down the street of the small town Jace and she have made their own. This is really cute. She smiles brightly as she waves at an elderly couple walking down the sidewalk and they greet her with great big smiles. It is. It's a great town. I'm guessing it's got a low crime rate. She nods. Yes, very low. I think the biggest news in the last year was an out-of-towner starting a fight at the tavern and getting his ass kicked by several locals. I chuckle at that and smile at the pride shining from her. The whole town takes care of their own. I think I'm going to like it here. We make it to the middle of the town, which is just one long main street, and she pushes open a glass door for me to walk in. I smile when I see Finn standing with Jace in the middle of a swangy-looking tattoo shop. I've only seen Jace briefly on video calls. He wasn't there when we arrived this morning. Hey there, beautiful. Finn moves to me, wrapping his arms around my waist. Hi. My heart beats more rapidly being near him, and I smile. He kisses my nose and takes my hand, leading me over to Jace. This is Jace. I hold up my hand that's shaking, because I still have issues with new people. His warm hand envelops mine, and the kindness is apparent from his eyes. It's good to finally meet you. You too. 
He nods to another man who's walking from the back of the shop. This is James. I nod to the handsome man and smile. Hi, James. It's nice to meet you. It's good to meet you, too. I hear you'll be working with my husband. Maya kindly gave me a job at their bar, and I nod. Yes, I believe so. We're heading over to meet him now. Get this girl acquainted with the town as soon as possible, Maya says. I'll go with you, Finn says, waving a goodbye to James and Jace as we follow Maya. He starts working with them at Jace's tattoo shop tomorrow. Now, Tommy is the one you have to watch out for. Real asshole, that one. Maya snorts. Right, he's the asshole. Finn laughs and wraps his arm around Maya. You know you love me. I laugh because they act like siblings. <laughs> You're okay. He scoffs and acts hurt, and then releases her to open the door to the tavern that's two buildings down from the tattoo shop. It's a really cute little place, and I smile, looking around at the small town atmosphere. There's one couple eating at one of the booths and a friendly-looking, extremely gorgeous man behind the bar. Tommy? Maya nods as we walk inside. Yes, Charity, this is Tommy. Tommy, this is Charity, and you get to train her. No problem. She can't be any worse than you. He winks at me, and I giggle. I take a seat on one of the bar stools, and Finn takes the seat next to me. I lean my head on his shoulder as Maya and Tommy discuss the schedule and menu for the night. I think I'm really going to like it here. He kisses my temple. I think so, too. But I know you don't want to work here forever. I look up at him and then look around the bar. That's not bad. What is it you really want to do? I shrug, not really letting myself think about it too much. I don't know. Yeah, you do. He grins, and I think he knew the answer before I did. I didn't see a dance studio. His grin only grows larger. I didn't either, but I know there are plenty of people who would love to learn. He cups my chin and pulls me in for a quick kiss. You love to dance. That's what you should do. No more have-tos anymore. Only living for what you want to do. I smile against his lips. I like that. Good. He kisses me again. And we go and explore our new town. This is as close to bliss as I could have ever imagined. Chapter 45 Three Months Later Fen Oh my god, Fen. I grin up at Charity as her hips buck up begging for more of my tongue between her legs. Are you going to come on my tongue, Charity? Her fingers thread through my hair as she pushes me into her, and I chuckle, licking her clit and pushing two fingers inside her tight heat. Please don't stop. She isn't afraid anymore. My girl is loud and vocal about what she likes and wants. I circle her clit with my tongue and curl my fingers inside her hitting that sweet spot that makes her shriek my name and clench around them. Fuck, yes, don't stop. She covers her mouth with her hand, muffling her moans. I reach up, pulling it away and reveling in every single sweet sound escaping her as she comes apart. Jesus. She gasps as I lap at her until she pulls me up to her, my aching cock at attention between her legs. I'm so fucking loud. I like it. I smile smugly and kiss her lips. I press inside her, and we both groan from the sensation. What if they hear us? I laugh. <laughs> so what if they do? We've heard them. I slide to the hilt inside her, and her back arches, pushing her breasts against my bare chest. It's their house. I really don't want to talk about Jason Maya right now. I nibble on her ear as I pull back, almost sliding out of her and then thrusting into her again. I want to hear about how you love my big cock inside you. Yes, she gasps as I slide into her over and over. Her hands grab my ass, pulling me into her. We're both already worked up from foreplay, and I know this won't last long. 
I love it. I love everything about you. I kiss her. An all-consuming, soul-stealing kiss, because that's what every kiss with charity is. It doesn't take long before she's coming again. Her pussy a strangling vice around my cock, forcing my orgasm and my cum deep inside her. We're both smiling and breathing heavily when I roll off. Let's get dressed. I want to show you something. She rolls to her side, not hiding her naked body from me. She never hides from me, and I fucking love it. What? I stand up, and when she sits up on her knees, I smack her ass playfully. It's a surprise. Come on. She grumbles but gets out of bed, covering that beautiful body with clothes. We head outside and start walking down the road in the opposite direction from the tattoo shop and the tavern, but still only a few blocks away. This is a really small town, and almost everything is within walking distance. We stop at a white farmhouse that definitely needs some work, but is fucking beautiful to me. She looks at me suspiciously. What's going on? What do you think? She's cautious. I think it's a house. I nod my head and walk up to the front door, pulling out the key I got from the realtor and unlocking it. Small town. Finn. She looks nervous as I push the door open, and we walk inside. Are we committing a crime? I laugh. Nah. I'm too pretty for prison. The realtor lent me the key to show you around today. I got the tour yesterday. She looks around the open floor plan, and I'm nervous as hell as I wait for her to tell me what she thinks. I love it. It's available? I let out the breath I was holding and walk toward her. It is. It's been up for sale for a while, so they're pretty motivated. Already moved on. We could move in fast. Her wide eyes look up at me with uncertainty, and I know that look. It's the look that says she's afraid to want anything. It could be ours if you want it. The house in St. Louis sold last week. It's done. This house looks bigger than that one. Her voice is meek and I don't like it. I move to her, placing my hands on her hips and turning her to look into her beautiful eyes. A small house in a big city costs twice as much as a big house out in the country. We can afford it, and I want to buy it. But I didn't want to pull the trigger until you told me what you wanted. I won't make decisions for us ever again without consulting you. She smiles, and I have to add with a shrug and a grin. Unless you end up with a debt to a casino boss again. She rolls her eyes and walks into the empty living room looking down at the hardwood floor that's original, but could use some TLC. I can picture us sitting here after work. She walks to the fireplace. With a lit fire and telling each other about our days. My grin. I can see that too. She turns around to face me, tears shining in her eyes. I love it. I cup her face in my hands and kiss her. It's ours then. But I haven't even shown you the best part. Her eyebrow hitches up. The bedroom? I make a feral growling sound because fuck if she doesn't turn me on. Okay, the second best part. Because I can't wait to make you scream when you don't think you have to hold back. Her cheeks turn pink and I grab her hand, leading her outside to our backyard. Her eyes gape at the sight. Oh my god, Finn. I grin, looking around at the vibrant wildflowers along the edge of our yard. I'd planned to plant flowers at our new home, but was surprised by this. She covers her mouth and laughs happily. Oh my god, I have a field of wildflowers. I wrap my arms around her waist with her back to my front, holding her as she looks out over the flowers. You're always safe with me. But this can't hurt either. I love you, Fen. And I love you. I reach in my pocket and take a deep breath, moving my mouth to her ear and say softly, You know what else I see out here? What? She breathes. 
I pull out the ring I've had for a few months and take her left hand in mine as we both look out at the flowers. A wedding. A simple one. Surrounded by a few friends and all these flowers. I slip the ring on her finger and she turns around, wrapping her arms around my neck. That sounds perfect. So, you'll marry me then? She nods. Took you long enough? I chuckle and kiss her. <laughs> so fucking impatient. She kisses me back and pulls me closer. And I know without a doubt that nothing else matters. Not her past. Not mine. Just this. My girl. Safety. Wildflowers. And our home that was made for us. This has been Salvation. Written by Nicole Dykes. Narrated by Wynne Ross and Kai Kennecott. Copyright 2021 by Nicole Dykes. Production copyright 2021 by Nicole Dykes. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.